This week, here I am with Raro, a fabulous small group tour, 10 days through the beautiful Umbria region of Italy. Like here we are in Assisi. Follow along as I take you through all of the cute little villages and show you all there is to do with Raro. has begun. New salon trying today because my wonderful Ati couldn't get me in. So I am at Jorge Eduardo's salon. This is Jorge. <laughs> Don't forget to follow along tomorrow. I leave first thing in the morning. Mm. All set for Umbria. Step one, hair is done. Step two is lashes. Step two. Lashes. Good morning from Austin Bergstrom International Airport. It is crazy busy. It's almost 6 a.m. and Clear has a line. I've never seen this before. The new Chase Sapphire Terrace Priority Pass Lounge. This is my gate, gate 10, going to New York, but I'm going to check out the lounge and it's all the way at gate 1, all the way at the end. Looks like it's with Delta Sky Club, which is one level up. There is an elevator. There's this terrace that's outside. I'm a little confused. So they don't open until 10 a.m. And uh, it doesn't look like there's much to the inside area. And then there's a terrace. So I'll go back to my gate. My dress uh, put off the security alarm. So beware if you wear sparkles. Sparkles puts off the alarms and I had to have a full pat down. It was crazy. They're offering us free coffee today. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you, Delta. We make um, our own coffee here at Delta. We try to have um, stuff for the passengers just so while they wait, they have their little tea, their little coffee. It's completely our own little thing. Um, I don't think they're doing it in other stations, but we get a lot of compliments, so we just try to have a fresh cup of coffee for everyone. Nice! I love coffee! <laughs> Alright, it's a full flight. <laughs> there's London, there's power, but it is full. I need to check my bag. Bugs out. <laughs> Steve Moore service to New York City. Kennedy, today, latest weather up there clears. So we were sitting there forever, people uh, possibly missing their connections. To that, the decline. Now I have to go from Terminal 1 to Terminal 8. You take the train, easy and easy. I still have Vietnamese dong. <laughs> I'm going to get some euros. All right, so my dong I got for $36, and there is a fee, but and then there's another fee to exchange it back for euros, but I want single euros, and I don't have time later, so this is good. <laughs> All right, I got euros. Now we have the air train to So we're in Terminal 8 now. So because I used two different airlines and uh, two round trips, I had to go outside to the outside of the terminal and get my bag, first from baggage claim, and now I am in Terminal 8 and I have to go through security again to get through. So I'm really hoping my dress doesn't set off the security again because <laughs> I really don't want another pat down. But if it happens, it happens. 
So they have the normal security check area and then the TSA pre to the right, which is what I am. The Big Apple. This is really huge in here. Um, that's Bobby Van's Grill. I think that's where my Priority Pass gets me. Okay, so Priority Pass does get you, um, it gets you a credit at Bobby Van's Steakhouse. So that's what I'm doing. Plus, right under the departures. <laughs> You get $28 to spend however you would like here. $28 doesn't get you a whole lot here. <laughs> so I'm getting a Caesar salad with shrimp and that is just $28 exactly. But I also got an iced tea so I went over. <laughs> I can handle a few dollars though. <laughs> Okay, that's my beautiful Priority Pass lunch I get at JFK. Okay, next leg to Rome on American JFK to Rome. It is only an 8 hour and 17 minute flight. Alright, it's almost time. Super easy layover here at JFK. It was not easy to get from one gate to the other though. Uh, changing terminals, it took a really long time. So make sure you have at least a couple of hours layover if you go through JFK for a domestic to an international flight. All exciting. <laughs> I can't wait to go to Umbria with Raro Travel. Please follow along. So they are using biometrics today to get on board. So they take a picture, you have to have three feet between you and the passenger in front and behind you. And you have to have your passport in hand. Here are the, um, the pods that you can get for business class. They're actually really nice. I wish I was up there. So the next level, they don't have lay downs in that level. And then this is starting in 17 row. So then you've got this bathroom area and the um, fabulous exit row seats, which is what I have right here. So I have all sorts of space. So I had to put my, um, all my bags and coats up. Oh, sorry. Um, because there's no space underneath these seats. But look at the leg room that you get on these exit rows. So what I usually do is bring down my roller bag during the flight and have it next to me. So let's see what American gives for goodies. It looks like not much. <laughs> They're giving you a pillow and a blanket only, no little goodie bag. Is this where we're sitting? We've got power underneath and the tray tables get pulled up. But this is, you can't pull it up, so I won't be able to lie down. I thought if nobody's next to me, I can lie down. And there's no window. <laughs> Perfect. And no one next to me, which is my favorite thing. <laughs> See you in Rome. At dinner time, they did a vegetarian pasta or a chicken with couscous. I did the pasta. I'm kind of missing my guitar ear and my uh, Turkish ear meals. These are the alcohols you can get, as well as wine. I'm doing my usual Baileys and my coffee. Hopefully it'll put me to sleep. So in a long haul flight, you just go back to the back and you can get some snacks and ask for a drink. I'm gonna get another coffee with Baileys. <laughs> So the nice thing too about being up here is you could have lots of space to put your bag together while you're waiting to leave. So it is mid-April, so this is springtime, and the weather here is 50s and 60s. So it is a little bit chilly. It is not hot, warm weather here. So when you're coming, don't think it's beach weather in April. These are the premium economy seats right here. And then this is the business class. It's all a mess at the moment. <laughs> 
so chilly here. <laughs> you follow the signs to Is Isquita exit. I don't know how to say it. <laughs> you have to take a train to passport control. <laughs> so crowded. Oops, this way. Oh my god, it's the mad rush to the escalators now. Connections are that way. Exit is this way. American. So you're supposed to have your passport out. <laughs> okay, then we go to this passport check. And then the exit. That was crazy. It wouldn't let me through the first the first doors. <laughs> they had to help me a couple times. But it all worked out fine and then stamp passport, all good. You get your baggage claim here. You can uh, exchange money here. If you use an ATM here, you get euros when you ask for your money. And so that's what I do instead of exchanging money. Okay, I stopped in the bathroom, brushed my teeth, got myself all set for the day. Now I'm ready for my day in Rome. <laughs> so you can use an ATM and just get euros that way. All right, this is the way to the exit. Yeah, more baggage claim over here. I'm not sure what the difference is. And exit is this way. This is the exit. I'm assuming my ride is going to be out here somewhere. So that's the official taxi pickup point. The train is that way. And it looks like transfers and limo service is this way, which is me. <laughs> Everybody's got signs, so you look for the sign for your specific tour. I see them! <laughs> there is Raro waiting for me. <laughs> Hello! <laughs> Hi! I'm with Raro! <laughs> Hi! Welcome! This is Pino, he's our host! <laughs> Hello! <laughs> There we go. <laughs> it is a long trek to get to your cars. Remember, you have to walk a lot here. <laughs> so this is a beautiful Mercedes van for the transfer. <laughs> okay. Nice. Is it just us? Yes. Or we're not waiting. Oh, okay. Yes, just you. me. Private yes. transfer. <laughs> yes. 45 minutes an hour. Oh. Because you know it's a rush hour. Oh, okay. Yes. That's a lot longer than I expected. <laughs> So, and what hotel are we staying at tonight? Uh, Leon's place. Uh... Oh, that's right. So you have to walk from the airport over to where they're allowed to park, which you can see all these Mercedes out here. <laughs> so with another company come from uh, Lubbock. You know Lubbock? Uh, Lubbock is very far from me. <laughs> very far, yeah. It's at least eight hours drive. So the morning is rush hour traffic here in Rome. Um, so if you come in in the morning, which most of the flights do, just be aware that there's going to be traffic going into the city. We know we're in Rome. <laughs> yeah. Campidoglio, the capital hill. Ah, uh, yeah. This is a national monument to the white, a huge monument called the Vittoriano. See on the middle of the, the monument, the, the tomb of a non soldier. Uh, the in distance, you can see the Colosseum in a moment. Oh, right. You see yes. over there? Yes, this is, I've been right here many times. <laughs> Quirinale Palace, Quirinale Hill. Rooms, just for him and the wife, Iga. <laughs> There's more gate, I can stop quickly. Okay. And you can see, right here, on the left. Oh. Okay. Look, look on the left. <laughs> see? Nice. President resident. Grand Hotel San Regis. Oh, okay. Grand Hotel San Regis. The, the old town of Roma, the city center of Roma. And this is my hotel. Yes. Leon's place. Thank you. you. Ah, beautiful hotel. Hi. Hi. <laughs> so this is gorgeous.
I love the look of this hotel. This is the bar. Hmm. Tonight might be interesting. First room is downstairs. Oh, okay. But this so is the is restaurant. The oh, that's the courtyard for the for the restaurant. So cute. <laughs> I just love the look of this yeah, hotel. Yeah, yeah. I wanted to show you this elevator. It's awesome too. Oh, okay. So this is the breakfast area. You can book this for an hour for yourself, for the sauna. Oh my goodness. Oh, okay. I think I'm gonna book this. <laughs> that looks awesome. Okay, that's a sauna and steam. Mm. <laughs> So this is my first hotel on um, my 10 days in Umbria. We have a couple of nights here in Rome. <laughs> you can see it's very Roman. <laughs> I'm in room 201. Okay, room 201. They give you this card and entering the room is tricky. You have to put the chip in and beep and then you have to time it just right. I think I've got it. <laughs> okay, then when you come inside, you put your key inside there. You actually have to keep your key in here for electric and there's a chip on it. So it knows it's uh, the card, not a business card. It turns all the lights on. <laughs> this is the bathroom, the bidet. Handheld. the water while using me. Shampoo and body wash. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of mirrors. Let's see. Oh. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so the name of this hotel is Leon's Place. <laughs> it is a very cute little boutique hotel. So I'm not sure what size bed this is, a double, I think. <laughs> they do have some electric on the side of the bed. <laughs> and then the window, lovely. <laughs> Overlooks room. I have a little coffee maker. And they gave me a robe and slippers. <laughs> they know how much I love robes and slippers. I need to put the heater on, it's cold. <laughs> and I need to get in this bed. I finally woke up. <laughs> I slept all day and now it's dinner time. So um, we're gonna go with the group, um, Raro, and go get some dinner. <laughs> it's rainy and gloomy yeah. today. Well, some of us are already at the restaurant. The rest of us are going to be walking over as a group. So we all stick together. And we're taking care of it. It's a small group, only about 16 of us. There is an ice cream place right across from the hotel. Hey. Mm, thank you. Oh, it's a great <laughs> this is the Raro table. <laughs> I think they just gave us our Italy trip. This is our itinerary for the next 10 days. Luggage tag, nice. And guess who I get to sit across from for dinner? Andrew Kim, CEO. <laughs> so it's awesome. It's very laid back on the small group tour. You can um, do your own thing, or join when you want to join. But today is different. I'm just telling you what are the specialties. This one is the first. 
uh, night, evening, that we are going to have together, and it's going to be the beginning of the vacation. Thanks to Joey Brado, and uh, we put on the table the a little uh, suggestion menu because it's uh, what the Rado does, it does a, a typical Rado. How do you say it? Uncommon? Uncommon. 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 Word. Yeah, and what do we do? We choose and we do things that the, the Italian does. We are not a uh, we are tourists, yes, but we are not. We try to do what the people, where we go. There are so many other things on the menu. And there is the, 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 the schedule. We can call schedule itinerary. What we are going to do in uh, these 10 nights of the trip. It's going to be amazing. And I hope you guys enjoy it. Raro, uh, one of the best things that Raro does, I think, he puts a um, uh, host and a helper. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, a coordinator. Okay. So it's every kind of problem you can have, you just don't think about it. Talk to me or talk to the coordinator. It can be the, uh, the, uh, the weather the hotel, the food, suggestions, what we can drink or eat here. Because everywhere we go is a different location, right. different kind of wines, different kind of food. That means we are here to help you to enjoy where are we going. If they're in okay. right now, yeah. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. 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 <laughs> Carciofi alla Romana, it's a seasonal, it's prepared the Roman style. So that looks absolutely amazing. <laughs> Okay, this looks so amazing. Oh, it's like so tender. I had my suitcase and we didn't let me have it. Get out. Mm. Well, camera thing that he had. Delicious. It represents that. Fresh mozzarella. Mm. This is why you go to Italy. <laughs> One of my favorite things too, prosciutto. Look at that. Yum. I would say just be ready by now. I've never done that. I've never done Yum. I'm going to fill up on all the appetizers. That's Parmesan cheese. Look at that cheese. Delicious. <laughs> we say, we type there, we put in there what we are going to do. But since last time somebody, I don't say nine names, but it was Jeff, <laughs> said it was lovely trip, but we did too much. What? I remember that. We didn't do much. I remember, and, and for that, on the trip now, there are two, two half days. <laughs> There are two half days um, relaxing, but in any case, you are you, you are free to pass on whatever we are scheduled. And if you want to sleep in the morning and uh, join us in the afternoon, just tell us, and we are going to find a way to bring you back where we are. The only thing sure. I would suggest not. Skipping is leaving this city to another city. <laughs> I, mean, I would suggest you make that one. <laughs> Beautiful. So this is the first course. Tonarelli, which is homemade pasta with artichoke cream and guanciale, which is pork and cheek. Mm. Yum. Delicious. Yes. 
definitely going to get a lot of art stroke on this trip for the end of the season. I want to show you this pasta. I realize I have hardly any good food video, so I'm going to take a lot. Mmm, <laughs> look at this pasta. Homemade. Look at that. Oh, you guys are going to be so happy that you came with me to Umbria. <laughs> We're in Rome today. Yum. So good. It's because they use a lot of stuff in Roman culture it's called offal, right? Offal. So that pork that's on the top of this pasta is the most amazing taste. It's like a crispy outside, so delicious and tender. This is delicious food. Pasta number two tonight. <laughs> it's so difficult. Look at this. More of that amazing pork. So, this is a matriciana. It's from a, a mountain place close to Rome called Amatrice. And it's also with guanciale and the tomato sauce and pecorino cheese. Ah, yummy. So, it has that same pork on top that was amazing. The pasta is like al dente perfection. Mm. That tastes totally different from the first one. So good, like a tangy kind of uh, red sauce. Delicious meat, really crispy pork, but tender. So good. <laughs> so far, this is the most amazing dinner ever. Italian dinners are fabulous. <laughs> Two pasta courses so far. Lots of wine. <laughs> Cheers! Cheers. <laughs> More food. They gave us la tripa. What is tripa? I hate to ask. <laughs> it's so much. It's, it's, it's a beautiful geometric pattern. It's delicious. <laughs> <laughs> so tasty, so tasty. <laughs> I've never eaten this before. And I'm being an adventurous eater for you guys. <laughs> I know you depend on me. <laughs> Uh-oh. I'm gonna I'm just gonna do a little piece. So we call this tripe, not tripa, but it's okay. <laughs> I loved the pork and the way they, they cooked it in the pork dish. This is kind of, it's like a tender, kind of, um, it's not chewy. How do I say? <laughs> this is what I meant. It's okay, but not my favorite. <laughs> not biscotti, contachini. Goodness, this dessert, mousse, chocolate mousse with wild strawberries. These wild strawberries look amazing. Café. Café. Look at this. Of course he does. He doesn't like to talk to the boys. He only talks to the women and he always touches our shoulder. We like that every time. I love him so much. Oh my god. So good. You remember Giorgione? What's happening? Cheese. So what's fabulous about Raro, if you can't tell, like we just met each other. You're like family, enjoying each other's company immediately. It's like traveling with friends. Very different than your usual bus tour. It's not like that at all. You're just traveling together, experiencing the amazing global culture and communities together. It's, um, it's a very different kind of experience. I call it luxury, even though you're not in a suite. This is a luxury experience to me, experiencing the world. My goodness. <laughs> Thank you. You get whatever you want here. Hello, <laughs> too. <laughs>
Limoncello and wild strawberries. <laughs> that was sexy. <laughs> you have to try it. I can't sit. That's pretty good. It breaks off like a super sweet. With the chocolate. It's good with the chocolate too. That's <laughs> Owner, right? Owner, uh, how do you say owner? Proprietario. <laughs> Proprietario. Yeah. <laughs> Giacomo, the proprietario. The name of the restaurant. The proprietario del ristorante La Lampada. Come visit in Roma. He does love ladies. So when you get like these little shots of espresso, it's a little bitter, but I love it. <laughs> we gotta go to bed because you guys are... Uh, out of control. Yeah, out of control. <laughs> no, because you arrived this morning and you're so... You didn't sleep and whatever you're tired, but maybe it's better if you go to bed. And tomorrow we're going to leave or oh, meet downstairs at 9 o'clock at the lobby. lobby. Thank you. Uh, my my uh, uh, translator? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 9 o'clock. Uh, 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 if we can uh, walk or we can use our car. And after that, we we'll see what we are going to do. The point is, we are going to see the um, domosaurio and the best thing, the best scenario. Scenario? 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 We are going to walk from domosaurio to domosaurio. A nice walk and go to lunch. And after lunch, everybody will do whatever they want. Stay in the afternoon, go back to the hotel, or, uh, or we can go for a walk down the town. The point is, do you want to go with me? Nice guy. Go with the professor. <laughs> Anyway, in any case, one of the others is going to be a beautiful day. The, the, the point is tomorrow morning, we're going to And who needs uh, umbrella? Everybody. Umbrella? No. Everybody? Umbrella. I don't. No, no umbrella. No, no umbrella. All right. Good afternoon, Sit down. Since I have a favorite job, my job is to be a hand Last call. Last call. Oh, yeah. And after that, I'm going to bed. Thanks, Grandma. Last call. Great people. Great people. This is my bodyguard. But are we too loud? I don't even know. 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 Everyone in this restaurant wants to be with us. <laughs> so we have, we have brought 
the light to the restaurant. <laughs> what is happening over here? <laughs> Tables for causing mayhem in this restaurant. <laughs> that mm, we we miss this. Drink, drink. <laughs> I'm not German for nothing. Come on. Everybody wants an after party. <laughs> We're back at the hotel. Home sweet home. The hotel actually does have a bar, and we are bringing life to it. <laughs> we are going to have a uh, last uh, nightclub. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Last night cup is on us. After that, <laughs> after that the bar is closed. They close in ten minutes. Uh, so you should. <laughs> Chris was a uh, professional football player. For which team? Uh, well, a couple in America. Um, Montreal Impact, Indy 11, which was the uh, longest time I stayed for, and then uh, Minnesota United. Wow. So it's soccer, not football. Yeah, but he soccer. calls it football. Yeah, well, everybody <laughs> calls it football. Well, Except apart us. from a couple of other people. <laughs> <laughs> but he's not staying with us the whole trip. No, I'm only here for the weekend, unfortunately. Yeah. Somebody has to work. So this is the bar. He's gonna make me something special. <laughs> uh oh. It has a little shamrock in the middle. Oh, it doesn't look very Italian. Oh, it's Irish coffee. Oh my gosh. Keep drinking. It's so good and it's it's cold. It's not like a hot coffee. It's so delicious. Just a lot of wine. That is really good. elevator is teeny but it's very cute all ready for Jamas aria today <laughs> i've never been there so i'm really curious about it uh, this way <laughs> I think i'm gonna try to grab a cup of coffee <laughs> and here's breakfast hi So I saw some locks, but I don't see bagels. This is the way that you get your coffee. Just want to show you the weather. It's pouring. Yuck. And it's cold. So we're going in, I think, a strange way. They're letting us because it's pouring. <laughs> this is Marina. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Crazy rain. But we all made it. Uh, they have to check your bags for. Um, inside your bags for security. So to get a reservation here, you need to call 30 days before the day that you're going to go at the exact time you want the tour. And that's why it's very difficult to come here to Domas Aria. So um, this is why you come with a group like Raro who takes care of you. Ooh. So that was really cool. They weren't, they did not allow any videos inside. So I'm gonna show you a slideshow of all of the amazing architecture. This is Nero's Summer Palace. Um, and they have excavated it from underground. It used to be on ground level, but um, it's hard to explain. <laughs> <laughs> but now it's underground and it was freezing inside for me. <laughs> I am not good with cold weather. 
So it's rainy and kind of chilly and cold. And it is cold underneath inside um, this big palace. <laughs> but it's very cool. It's kind of like Pompeii, uh, like a lot of the ruins that you see around Rome. But it was cool. I've never been there before. It's right next to the Colosseum, right across, and I never have seen it. I didn't even know it existed. Now you know we're in Rome. So the, uh, it was actually not called Colosseum. This name came just after. It was an amphitheater. An amphitheater is like two theaters put together, like a stadium. And it was used for yeah, public games, gladiators, uh, but also animal fights, sometimes boat fires. They would float it with water and have ships in there fighting against each other. Just imagine this has been standing here for almost 2,000 years. So everybody's gathering here to see inside. We're having a little break for warming up. <laughs> so cute. Okay, so this is how they serve their tea here. Cute. I love it. You're going back to those. Okay. Hotel. It's lunchtime. The Stereo de Memo. What is that? <laughs> I guess that's what our lunch is today. No. Is that artichokes? No. Oh, this is fascinating. No. It's broccoli. They're just bringing us all this food all at once. That's how they do it. Mozzarella. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, and there's the artichoke. No, what? Go ahead. I'm not. Olives. <laughs> oh, balls. Uh, oh, beans. Uza. Uza. Also, Uko, oh my god. <laughs> Look at this. Oh my that's, god. That's really. Uh, <laughs> there you go, Marty. That's oh, just the Uko. Wow. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> carbonara. <laughs> Jet lag has totally wiped me out this trip. Um, I had to go back and sleep again. I couldn't eat lunch. And so now everyone is at a rooftop terrace having a happy hour and appetizers, and I am on my way to find them. So it's about a 15 minute walk from the hotel, um, and I'm enjoying Rome. It finally stopped raining. <laughs> it's a pretty scenic walk. It's about a 15 minute walk <laughs> to this. Um, I'm not sure exactly where I'm going. Find out soon. Barberini. Right. I've arrived. Hotel Barberini. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Gotta get the view first. Yeah. <laughs> this, this is the bus going over there. Oh. Right oh, wow. Okay. So we're overlooking the Vatican, the beautiful city of Rome at sunset. Well, that's what it's all about. Now I need to go get some wine. <laughs> but 
tree is amazing. Warm weather, people can come out here and enjoy the view. Now if I can figure out how to get back in. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> Thank you. Look at how beautiful that is. Isn't it pretty? Mm. Yeah. Is that what you got? Mm. It's elderberry. Um, I love the berry too. <laughs> Berries. It's very sweet but delicious. Oh. Yeah. So our professional football player is Christian Nicht. If you'd like to look him up, he's German, so it's N I C H T. Cool. <laughs> it's gonna get to you. <laughs> this is a cool hotel. Nope. Grab <laughs> dinner. Ah, grazie. <laughs> I love my body. And I realized that the, 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 drinking, the drinking is not really bothers me, but I'm eating too much. I, but in other words, free. do whatever you want. Yeah. But yes. yeah, do what yeah. you want to do. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, I, I don't. No, <laughs> yeah. no, I don't. I don't want to. Not, I don't yeah. want to. If we, I, I don't want to. If yeah. we put the, the the appetizer, you feel obligated to yes. finish your eat. Yes. That's what. Uh, okay. Tomorrow there is there is going to be um, clean teas food coming to pick it up us. The blue eyes. Everybody loves him. <laughs> oh, no. the he tells me that specifically. And, um, <laughs> and if we are going uh, to uh, the make Alessia to work. She's going to be, she's going to be the our uh, personal guide to the catacombs. Uh. Catacombs de Santa Domitilla. After that, in the morning, we go one one hour and forty five. Drive, we go to Civita di Bagnoreggio. <laughs> on the bus, yes. <laughs> Where there is going to be the Red Cross helping, um, what's the name? Your guest. My guest <laughs> down there to, to go in this bridge on the, this beautiful village. And we are going to have our lunch there. Then we go uh, for a little walk in the village after lunch and we go to Orvieto where we are going to stay there for two nights. Mm -hmm. That is the plan for tomorrow. Stay Las here. Angeles stay here. Nice. Mm -hmm. Some white tonight. Yeah. Very good. You want to do Okay. Please. I thought it was okay because it's for your body. Yeah. Okay. Yes, I don't speak very well. Okay, that's okay. Oh, no. Okay. 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 <laughs> we make friends all over the world. What is that? Beato picante, veggies and bread and cheese. Oh. It is amazing. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> Germs. Whee, look at that. Yeah. Ooh. Look at the bone marrow. I know. I got it. Oh my goodness. I don't know if this is working. 
So also we've got beautiful kind of deal, the phone arrow. Although the lasagna is fabulous. Oh my god, that is so good. Zara is covering all the meals, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And it's fabulous food, amazing wine. Delicious. Comes with bone marrow, so you can scoop out the marrow and have it with the meat. I know what you got. Oh, that looks good too. Look what else we got. You guys can meet on this too. Hold on, we have a toast. Oh, a toast. For dessert, we have three cream caramel, two panna cotta, three tiramisu, five, six, uh, seven portion of torta di ricotta, one portion of torta di mele and mille foglie. And that's, all, and that's all for Pino? <laughs> 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 It's a bit, yes. uh, no, 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 yes. Only one coffee? No. Uh, no. Coffee. Espresso. <laughs> Espresso. <laughs> Only one limoncello? Yes. <laughs> no, do it. I'm telling you, I'm going to make Robert thing. Let's see an hour sharing to <laughs> Luckily, my children aren't here to eat all of it before I get to it. <laughs> hey, you're quick on that, aren't you? Oh my gosh. So good. <laughs> Grazie. Just take it from Corey? <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? Give it back to Corey. <laughs> he just downed the whole one. Did you 
try it? Not yet. Hey, are you carrying the back? Hey, big. I got my best man. <laughs> oh, it's hot. It looks like absinthe. Did you what Pino just brought? This 120 proof stuff? I have no no. I, I have more hair on my chest than anybody at this table. Thanks. <laughs> Here, <laughs> I need some validation here. Your new, your new friends are oh. I need more. I didn't order. I and I said, so he's got double fisted. I would have said nobody would Why is my girlfriend screaming? <laughs> she had some. <laughs> I have no idea what that says. <laughs> what is this? Is this the grappa? Oh, oh, right, right. <laughs> oh. This grappa. It was, it was an extra grappa. What is this? You're not. You don't drink it. You need to be functional. No, no, no. I'm not. I'm not. No, no. Can I take this? Can I take this? Marina. Jason. Did you try this? Oh, so I can make my own. Oh, this. Try this. this is more like Black Death. That's like Black Death and Iceland. Yeah. And you can use it. Meals are so fun with this group. <laughs> <laughs> Back to the hotel for the night. Tomorrow morning we leave for the next hotel. Okay, back at the bar for a nightcap. Right. <laughs> oh. Yeah, um, uh, but it's actually very simple in terms of the structure. Like nobody will speak English like where I was. Yes. Oh, hi, Chef. 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 I just wanted to remind you before you go to the own day. Tomorrow we leave Cassidy. Um, if you have any wine tomorrow morning, check out. Grazie. And I just want to remind you that. So, so we're we're. Totally prepared at Raro with Tide Sticks. Tide Pens. Tide Pens. Tide Pens. No matter what. Band your son. <laughs> okay, so it's midnight and we are going into the wellness area for our spa appointment at midnight. Ooh. <laughs> I didn't bring my drink. <laughs> exactly what I need. <laughs> oh! Do we need to have the button? Oh, the button's over here. I need to hold my glass. Is it in case? Oh, wait a second, what's this? Oh. Oh. Okay. Oh, I like the bed. It's pretty. So they, they sell bathing suits here for $10 if you forgot one. <laughs> Neither of us have a $10 bathing suit. <laughs> so, somebody said so they want to see the videos of the, of the $10 bathing suit. No. <laughs> they had a little injury in the 
hot tub, I fell, I slipped outside, and I had a little, I don't know what I did to my toe. I hope I can walk around today. Travel. I carry with me anything that I could possibly need for medicines, and especially band-aids for when you have problems with your feet, so important. It's our last day at Lynn's place in Rome, so I'm gonna go grab some breakfast before we hit the catacombs today. <laughs> hey, last breakfast. Hi. How Good, how are you, Krista? <laughs> I might actually eat today. Yeah. Oh, they have pizza this morning. Yeah. Pizza beyond you can smell something. Love it when they give you fresh honey like that. I don't know if I'm hungry enough to eat. They feed you so much breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Gluten free brownies? I can try this. <laughs> It doesn't look like pizza. I think it's bread. Deep. 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 I'm so glad I can finally eat today. I'm really hoping I'm feeling better. This chocolate croissant looks fabulous. Mmm. Mmm. Everything today tastes really good. So hopefully we'll have a good day and I can eat every meal. So we are off to Orvieto today after we do the catacombs tour here in Rome. Um, it's been such a nice visit in Rome. I've been here like four or five times, but um, it's really different to stay in a central hotel uh, and be able to walk around to restaurants and act like a local. Um, that's what's great about Raro. The, this tour company is, is really just, it feels so much more casual and like you're part of the community. Um, it's a great way to experience a culture and uh, totally different from other kinds of bus tours and, and guided tour groups. I am really enjoying it. I think most of my clients will love a tour like this. <laughs> so please let me book you on uh, one of the amazing Raro tours. They're going to um, Sardinia, Greece, and the Philippines. The rest are 2023 and 2024. Um, I believe those are the ones that have been announced. So let me know. They, they max out at 20 guests, so um, it's not so easy to get availability. So let me know. All right, so this is our transportation for the day. And our fabulous driver. Are you our driver? <laughs> <laughs> and they gave us these Raro tags to use. <laughs> look at such organization. <laughs> Let's take a look at the ride. <laughs> nice. Okay. They have USB ports here. Nice. So we'll have power. Channel. New channel. The best bus driver. Oh, oh, the worst. Oh, 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 <laughs> nice to meet you. Welcome to Italy. And then uh, we will go to yes, Umbria sir. region. A short drive to the catacombs, passing by the center of the city, and we will have a couple of sites on the way. And uh, on the right, this is Palazzo Venezia. This is the balcony where Mussolini used to hold his speech from. Like the crowd would be down here and. I'm not sure if this is the catacombs I took you to the last time I was here. I don't recognize it yet, so it might be a different one. All right, tickets. Yeah. <laughs> Catacomb Santa Domingo. Domitia? Domitila. Domitila. <laughs> so I feel like this is weird. I guess there was a school group here. <laughs> so it's 
it's not that the solar level grew, we built this basilica at this level down the ground. Kind of barriers and tunnels and the symbol of the early Christianity just right after Constantine. That was the symbol that Constantine meant to see in, uh, in his dream. And it's like basically the Greek, first Greek's letter, Greek letter of Christos. So uh, he and Rho. Uh, and you have Alpha and Omega, like the beginning and the end of everything. And the round is the circle, meaning, you know, the circle of life, crystal, Christ is Christ is the end and the, uh, the beginning and the end of everything. But you will see also other uh, Christian symbols like um, the fish. There was an acronym of Ichtos, was like Jesus Christ, Son of God. And you will see the dove, like meaning uh, peace, resting in peace. Um, yeah, or the good shepherd with a lamp on, on his uh, shoulder, symbolizing Jesus Christ. Um, <coughs> uh, it's a, the most famous <coughs> painting in the area that we can visit. It's the Arcosolium of the Twelve <laughs> Apostles. <laughs> To see the twelve apostles, you have to bend down and look up, oh. and then you will see them. Yeah. <clears throat> That's the twelve apostles. Jesus Christ is in the middle, sitting on a chair, teaching. teaching. That's a typical uh, subject of early Christianity. So. So the normal tours, <laughs> we got our special tour here with the best guide. <laughs> so you could be on a big tour bus or in this nice little small one with only 20 people or less. So now we have about a two hour drive to get to our first stop today. <laughs> I have no idea how to spell that. So I'm gonna look it up and then put it on a capsule. We're gonna walk around a little bit. Oh, hey puppy. <laughs> so there's a staircase here. Uh, that's so cute. Hmm. Um, this is a pedestrian walkway. If you have accessibility issues, they will get you a cart so you can get a ride. Um, it's really cute. Play for lunch. <laughs> smells really good here. <laughs> like you can smell fresh food cooking everywhere. <laughs> it's really cute. Kind of reminds me of um, medieval villages um, that I gone to in the south of France. Okay, this is this is what I'm smelling partially. Mm. Mm. Art pieces. Yeah. Huh. Cute. Okay. <laughs> it's really cute. 
cute. <laughs> Motorcycles are allowed up here. They like candy here. Well. <laughs> oh, that's the bridge, I guess. <laughs> I think that's where we're going. That seems like a really long walk. <laughs> So you can get these little carts to take you up and down if you need, which is a good idea for a lot of people, I think. I know. Okay. I, I've been coached. Yes, all right. Civita di Bagnoregio. Yeah, and it's the city who's dying. That's what it's oh. called. Because the city, there's just uh, 12 people living in it. There is more oh. cats living there than people. Oh. It has been evacuated some years ago because it's like kind of getting destroyed. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So, so it's not, is it a medieval city with like a fort wall? Oh, it's even much older than that. It's mm. an Etruscan city actually, 2,500 oh, years old at the beginning. Uh -huh. And then of course, uh, yeah, uh, flourished during Middle Age and it stayed up there. In, in, in 16th century, 17th century, it started to, this uh, process, this erosion process, oh. and parts of the city have been falling apart oh, since then. Terrible. So now there is just the middle part remaining and uh, other the rest of the city has been moved in the back where we passed so, uh, <laughs> so it's not as windy as people said it was going to be going over <laughs> like, yeah. well we are gonna be on the pedestrian oh. bridge i'm pretty sure it's gonna be windy over there <laughs> all right so you can stop for a gelada on your way up <laughs> this poor little doggy looks wet Kitties. A truck. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I explained for accessibility. Oh, they they go on the pedestrian bridge with that? Yeah, there's the uh, only way. To oh, walk. <laughs> okay. That's the only way to the village. <laughs> okay, this is pretty cool. It it is not an easy walk though for people. To have any kind of accessibility it's just to be sure to ask for the cart if you need it If that doggy can make it, we can. <laughs> I can barely breathe. This is really hard coming up here. <sighs> there goes the cart. You really have to be in good shape <laughs> to make this. I think I made it to the top. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
Wow! <laughs> You're so happy once you get up here. Right? You gotta really enjoy it. <laughs> so they have tiramisu a la fragola, which means it's with strawberries, a variation that we have to try, I think. I don't know what that's made from. Hemp or something. <laughs> Wine. Yeah, just a little. <laughs> Oh, this is good. I like this one. <gasps> Thank you. Oh, I just wanted a video of it. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> I'm going to help you. Grazie. I got it. Thanks. <gasps> Whoops. <laughs> that wasn't me. <laughs> so it looks like prosciutto, salami, the beans, uh, some cheese, bread, and some bruschetta. Am I supposed to eat that? I don't think so. Oh, I didn't even see that. It's, I think it's just like a spice. Rosemary, maybe? Yeah. Oh, that smells good. These beans are so delicious. It's like, um, I was going to say pork flavor, but they gave it to Marty and he doesn't eat pork, so. <laughs> so good. Pasta order. We have four choices you can take off. We have gnocchi um, with zucchini. We have peachy. Peachy is a special kind of uh, pasta from here. It's lunga. Ah, for farina. Okay, it's kind of long homemade spaghetti and with a matriciano, so the uh, pork that we had before uh, with uh, tomato good. sauce. We have uh, um, aiolini. <laughs> With catoffee, so with artichoke um, sauce and uh, fettuccine al cinghiale. Papardelle. Papardelle. Papardelle is a wider pasta, like wider than fettuccine with uh, wild boar sauce, which was delicious. I remember. But of course, everything is delicious. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. For the Look at those pussy willows. What did I get? This is the pork with. <laughs> so these noodles are amazing, al dente, delicious, homemade tasting. I love the pork that we got the other night that was like crispy, and this one's not quite the same. It's so good. <laughs> so they, they gave us another course, vegetables. See? No more food. No. I'm cold. I, I know. Just I wanted to ask if no. anyone wants a dessert. No. Or 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 no. Strawberry, yummy. <laughs> and if we're talking about diabetes. <laughs> I'll ask, ask Cass about key lime pie in the Key West. Oh, I'm on the travel channel. Oh my gosh. It's nothing like normal tiramisu. It's very strawberry and it's really good. I'll have a cookie. Cookie. Good enough for me. I'll have the coffee. <laughs> We're going to have another 45 minutes to enjoy the um, the little village. Okay. Get lost in the little streets and whatever. 
there is a museum if you want to go to the museum <laughs> you just come with me and we go together if you know we meet at the uh, uh, fort Rudy. at the entrance just no just at the square on the square oh, fort the Rudy. Uh, on the square <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're at the museum. Yes, uh, a they mammoth. Usually live here. Oh, cool. All right, let's go see the real thing. It's really quick. Oh, it's just so cool. Oh, so this is just a an exhibit that's here temporarily. Like art, ceramics. Cool. Hand painted. And all that food. I feel like maybe you <laughs> take any kind of Italian or something. You can have a cafe oh you can have it with grappa or with sambuca or with bacon. So that can I see the bottle? Yeah, the oh, thank you. <laughs> okay. <Not bad. laughs> Wow, that's weird. <laughs> it's licorice taste. Yeah. Wanna try? Uh, yes. Yeah. You don't know that? <laughs> you don't know Cafe Corretto? <laughs> you like it's weird, right? I love it. <laughs> mm, gelato. So this is a cobblestone uneven ground and it's it's steep so it's still kind of difficult to walk around for some people. That for sure. <laughs> What does that mean? Oh. <laughs> oh, I see. So many photo opportunities. <laughs> oh, yeah. I wanted to see. So that stairway goes down to a cellar, and there's rosemary. God, it smells really good. Why? <laughs> because you can do like this. You can do like this. Oh. <laughs> so this is for Titanic uh, photo opportunities. <laughs> All right. I think I will skip that one. <laughs> <laughs> Very nary little stairway here. No, no. <laughs> 
<laughs> the easy way down. <laughs> We're gonna go to the caves now. Is it one? Yes, they expect 2300 before Christ. Mm. So you have to think about it as a lot of years ago. They also. Uh, oh, this is where the old Pinocchio movie was made. Yeah. Okay. <sighs> Steps everywhere. I know. A donkey. Oh, here, right. Going around and pressing the olives. Oil oh, <laughs> would go down in that case. Mm. The dog's coming to visit. <laughs> Bedroom. The thing in the middle is a warming Bed warmer, pen. Yeah. yeah. I have seen those before. Yes. <laughs> well. Oil to be stored and clarified. Preserved, and he had the wine cellar. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's all there is. So, this was an old Etruscan grave. Alrighty. Alrighty. Oh, this is the church in the main square. You can get some paninis here. Souvenirs right at the square. <laughs> so they said there's a bunch of cats here, but I didn't see any. Harry Styles has a house here. <laughs> Looks like soap and perfume here. Mm, smells good. <laughs> Buenos dias. Buenos dias. Showing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, if you want to try something. No, thank you. I don't think it would be good for my allergies. <laughs> uh, but you can come and try all of this when you're here. <laughs> thank you. Oh, this is where we started. Chiviti de Bor Bor Bagnoragio. Bagnoragio. Oh my gosh. <sighs> now to head the other way. That is just awesome. I mean, this is like not to be missed, but it's hard, you know, to get up there. <laughs> just, just be aware, yeah. it's gonna be a trek, but it's worth it. <laughs> the kitties have no trouble walking up. Oh, this is awesome. Indeed. I mean, look at the view. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> I can barely breathe. This is where you need the Titanic pose. <laughs> it's since it's an old village, the, the, the van cannot go up. Right? But we arrange, since you guys are work, uh, traveling with the Raro, we arrange for the bags. You don't have to care, the, carry the bags. And uh, we do a little walk for 300 meters or something. And uh, tonight we are going to meet at the lobby for Seven Trudy and we walk to the restaurant. So tomorrow we have a free morning. Uh, so you, can, you can sleep. Yes. <laughs> if you are, didn't have food enough, you can have breakfast. <laughs> and, uh, and then um, our first point on the schedule will be 
at, at one o'clock. We are going to Orvieto and uh, it, to me it's another beautiful city, completely different from uh, Civita di Bagnoreggio and um, I like it because it's much, uh, not too much, I would like to say bigger than Civita di Bagnoreggio and you can go everywhere in the little street and uh, tunnels, uh, wherever, get lost and, um, and I love it. In uh, Orvieto there are so many uh, stores, it's a very nice village, it's a very nice village and I love it and I, I'm so happy that you come in here. I, I, I don't want to say Toscan is better but it is better because the, the hills are more uh, harmonious more, and uh, it's beautiful. But to me, the people in Tuscany, they, they know what they have and they feel a little bit more... <laughs> I don't talk to you because I'm from Tuscany. In Umbria, the people are more easy and look, it's beautiful. It's beautiful and uh, the people have much, much sense of the hospitality and the food is still very good and they have so many diversity of bar, 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 variety. Yeah. Yes, thank you. What's your name? <laughs> variety of uh, wine that is. I love them. Really. I think she <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> that's that's me because I love to eat, I love to drink, I love to enjoy the good uh, the good uh, scenery and stuff. They switched the uh, bags over to a smaller van that gets to drive up to the village, um, but we couldn't go that way, so we are going to walk uh, the rest of the way to Hotel Duomo. It's a real easy walk after walking uh, the last village. Lots of hotels. It's cute. Right. Oh, <laughs> Duomo. That not our luggage. <laughs> so it's called Hotel Duomo because we're right next to the Duomo. <laughs> Grazie. So this is more of a standard European hotel. Uh, so they want your identification, um, my passports and my luggage that's not here yet, so I gave my driver's license and that was okay. okay I'm in 212. <laughs> So it's a key like this. So the key, open the door, and then this goes in for the lights right there. Oh, you've got the thermostat, lights. <laughs> hmm, looks like I've got a nice big bed and I've got a desk, yay. I didn't have a desk in the last one. Some electric. I have a phone next to the bed. Um, maybe an outlet on the other side. Nope, I don't have an outlet over here for my CPAP. I'll have to ask them what to do about that. I have the Duomo at the window, a little French balcony. Closet, two drawers, <laughs> hmm, that, oh, I was going to say that's the toilet, ah! <laughs> but I have a toilet, yay, 
And then this is the shower. Oh, there's no conditioner. Oh, I guess shampoo and conditioner is here. Or what is this? Bath foam and shampoo, so no conditioner. So you have to step up into the shower here. So this is a pretty standard hotel room for Europe. Um, this is what you would expect even for a four-star hotel. Okay, so behind the bedside table is a little plug for my soupap. So we're meeting for dinner at 7.30. I'm gonna run over to the Duomo and take some videos before that. All right, I'm taking a little walk. <laughs> so this is just up the stairs from our hotel. You're right on the square. Sunset here. Wow, this is pretty amazing. so exhausted and nobody is hungry at all but this is a cool restaurant and so we're gonna go take a look you are the boss <laughs> Jesus. we went to venice and i stayed So you're in like a cave here. <laughs> Snake. Oh my god. Yeah, there's a thing about meat here in Italy. <laughs> they have a lot of big ones. Grazie. <laughs> little nooks and crannies here. Oh, let's see what you look out on. of this menu because it's really kind of an interesting menu. Interesting choices. They had that beautiful oven, so they have great pizza. Did you see, did you guys? <laughs> I thought she said no more for me. She's like, no, you misunderstood me. Pour my damn wine. <laughs> Here tonight. <laughs> Bigger than what you think is an individual size, but you can totally share one, which is fine. You can share one. Oh, I like that taste today. What was that? And they don't come cut. Thank you. That is truffles you can and the local pasta. Yeah. Mm. 
entire um, like rosemary. Oh my god. And oregano and salt pepper. So amazing. Really, really, really rich, garlicky, delicious couple taste. Rosemary, oregano, and salt pepper. They're really good. Three cheese with honey. That's polenta. Oh, thank you. That's a half portion of the suckling pig with. Ah, well, you could have got it. It's an interesting flavor. Ah, that's from Yowza. Are you going to order the dessert or whatever? I would like to thank you because every day you guys are on time. <laughs> I love it. I just love it. <laughs> right. No. <laughs> like a cupcake. Grazie. Okay, so this is the chocolate cake and it looks delicious, but it's very cupcakey. It's not exactly what I expected, <laughs> but we'll see. Mm. Dark. It's dark chocolate, a little bitter. <laughs> I think I maybe would go a different direction. Or you, maybe you guys are sharing because, because we have eaten so much this trip. Raro is feeding us way too much food. <laughs> secret spoon from the back. Super rich. Biscotti on your wine? I haven't seen oh. you on my wine. Can I help it along? Maybe Cassidy will like it more. Yeah. They describe it as a chocolate muffin. Yes, it is. It is very much like a chocolate muffin. It's a delicious chocolate muffin. Yes. Americano. Yes. Thank you. I do, as a zero one, it's fantastic. Uh, just to be sure, tomorrow is a free sleeping day. Yay. Yay. We work. Our work. The first appointment is uh, 12.45 at the New Hotel, and we go for lunch. Of course. And then we are going to have a tour, and I'm sorry for that, we're going to have a dinner. But at the meantime, Alessia, she organized a. Um, uh, I don't know. All the time, all the time. The purse and uh, accessories, plays that they can show us how they produce their products. Leather. I would write. Yeah. Um, and what, I, I would, I would just. Uh, 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 yeah, please just tell me if you want to go because if no one is interested, I will just tell them. What time is it? Though? No. It's like 11:30, I think. Oh, you can oh, leave yeah. it from the hotel. Yeah. Like yeah. 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 It's, um, it's in the There's city center. Enough. All right, we walked back, made it. <laughs> the lobby keeps your keys here, so you have to go ask for your key back. <laughs> so they actually have um, closed. At midnight, so <laughs> it's lunchtime, so you leave your key in the lobby. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> okay, it's lunchtime in Orvieto. <laughs> Super cute. So many shopping, little shops, really a lot of art, ceramics, leather. <laughs> really cute little area. Pinocchio. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
It's cute. <laughs> Little cars. I think I recognize these people. <laughs> Arieta Asteria da Mama Angelo. Wine? I'll have wine. A white. Grazie. Look at how gorgeous that is. Oh, that's the um, tartar. Oh. This is pistachio, pistachio. and this almonds is, uh, and, or, or black pepper. I don't know. I have to mm. look at the menu. I know that Americans will not like this. Oh, the anchovy with the beef and the burrata. Am I in it okay? What is it? You're doing great. I was just no, fake, seeing fake, what it looked fake. like. Fake. Mm. So, okay. Everything grows in New Jersey. I totally, I totally screwed up the video. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Okay. It's not exactly as, as fabulous as I expected. But it's good. It was good. Go ahead. I'm going to try the pistachio too. Uh, I've got you. Mm. Okay. Let me try a little bit so I can turn that off. I did some pictures in the Just a tiny, tiny, tiny. Mm. Just when I say tiny, tiny. There's a really distinct olive oil taste. Really delicious. That's not tiny. That's tiny. No, so, not. I like the thin yeah. sliced carpaccio better than tartar like this. Okay, this is just black pepper. Mm. Mm. I actually like that best. Just the plain. It's really good. Yummy. This is wild boar and pepper dough. And look at this. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> that is Cassidy's fabulous. Tortellini and broth. And broth. Cool. Here? Yeah, it's, mm. it's the traditional. It's the traditional way to cook tortellini. Oh, is that oh. the wild boar? This is the wild boar. See, didn't tell me. I don't order. I order it, like right. That. I mean, it but looks like it's ground beef. Boar, it if I just thought it was ground beef, I'd be <laughs> I love it. It's my favorite. Mm. Every time I'm there. Look at this noodle. Like, actually, like, like when I like, when <laughs> I also like a lot lighter than sauces okay. and oils. And I really love the look of this noodle when somebody ordered it the other day and I'm like, oh my gosh, I still have to try that noodle. But it's with wild boar, and I really wasn't sure about the wild boar. But see, it was built in the 7th century of a Roman temple. The main square in the Oh, I really, I really like this. This is really good. Mm. Mm. Such a great tangy taste. It's delicious. Berries or Nutella. We have panna cotta with berries or Nutella. We have panna cotta with rice and cinnamon, which I've never heard of. It's like rice pudding with panna cotta. Probably. Uh, then we have tiramisu, creme brulee, tzatziki with the wine, with the sweet wine. Yeah, apple strudel. Oh, we have gelato with salted caramel, walnuts, uh, cream, vanilla, vanilla, and uh, cinnamon and apple. And the first one was cheesecake. Uh, cheesecake. Ah, I had to do the same. But the Americana. Panna cotta with fruit. Cheesecake Nutella. Did you give it to you? I have to wait for the food. And he joined the US military. But it was supposed My brother had to sponsor all this. Oh my goodness. You got to the US military. It's crazy. But if you join the military, that expedites everything, right? Yeah, and I wouldn't get it to her when she was in the military. Yeah, that's beautiful. It's like really? 
very uh, yes, you walk through the window is that custard? Yes. Yes. Not custard, it's like mild, it's more mild. Delicious. <laughs> so it's like jello. Picture. So there's the the right texture. Try whatever you need. Oh, <laughs> the thing was Way this big. You <laughs> missed the chocolate. Are you always going to tell us? The whole thing? Whoops. You can not taste anything. Well, you pushed it on my spell. Gotcha. <laughs> 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 Alright, this is that cheesecake uh, with the uh, bombalini. <laughs> Chris is here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's not like American cheesecake. Wait, that's, how do I explain it? It's a little more crumbly. I'm not sure how to explain it. No, thank you. Um, it's a lunch, right? After lunch, we are going to meet the our guide in front of the Duomo for the tour. The tour is going to be around two hours. And everything is walking uh, um, easy. Easy walking. The only problem is going down to the San Patrizio well. There are staircases going down. I don't know how many they are, but they are a lot. But it's <laughs> interesting. Okay. It's really interesting. And after that, is uh, we are going to have a dinner at the Osteria del Lozo. I went to my community. <laughs> And tonight, <laughs> tonight, we have, tonight we have So the shops close down for siesta time during the afternoons after lunch, and they then open up again uh, afterwards. Like after a couple of hours. So before dinner, they'll open again. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Know what all these kids are doing here. <laughs> I can't really get the art.
I, I'm here now. <laughs> this is our fabulous tour guide. <laughs> Michele. What's his name? Michele. 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 So a lot, a lot of tourism. Hey kitties. Hi. Hi. Uh, sculptures. Frescoes, any kind of decoration in the church, uh, actually is made uh, for two reasons: to make the church beautiful, of course, uh, but also to teach stories to the people, because most of the people in the Middle Ages were not able to read, so they could learn uh, just reading these. Uh, these sculptures can be read uh, starting from the bottom, left to right, uh, and you can see the creation. You now God is creating uh, the universe, uh, the, the animals, and the first man. Adam. From the rib of
each single square centimeter of this church uh, is this level. So it took a long time. Maybe just to make these three leaves here, it took uh, three weeks. I don't know, but it's uh, really insane. Also here. Oh, yes, I did. I did. I saw this yesterday. Here, for example, there are, there are these different stones inlaid, and all this green, uh, pink, uh, black, uh, white. Uh, they, they had to cut and bring all this material from all over. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's uh, different. I don't even want to imagine how many people die. Well, in the four columns, uh, there is the... That's my favorite because uh, this is has his legs in the water and it's difficult to make the water because the water is transparent. So, uh, if you go further, you see Christ entering Jerusalem, uh, the kiss of Judas, uh, crucifixion, resurrection, uh, all the story. Okay, we have hell, purgatory, heaven. Final judgment, well, it's kind of common in the the churches because uh, when you travel especially in this area you have to consider that the popes uh, always had a very strong political power in this area in this area and a good way to keep the power was to keep people scared do what i say or hell hell is uh, monsters uh, snakes uh, it's very scary now for us is nothing but imagine for the person in the middle ages uh, who come out from the graves uh, because they have to know where they are going, uh, hell or heaven. They pray, they are desperate. We don't want to do that. We, we want to go to the sky <laughs> because some people think that the desperation not to go to hell is more scary than hell itself. So, huh? so these people are praying not to go to hell, but maybe it's too late for some of them. This is the, the point. This part is incredible. The level of the details of the event. Everybody's naked there. Yeah. Well, because people are naked uh, when they. <laughs> when they die. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> <it's when> <laughs> people go naked too. Because they didn't behave. The no, no they behave. didn't behave. But they have clothes no, on when they go to heaven. They yeah. It doesn't and make on sense. the bottom, yeah. we are not. When he pointed this out, you notice there's no women in the house. Yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. The women just are all guys. in the paradise. Yes. <laughs> yes. Bad boys. <laughs> It's really hard to describe this, but it's massive inside. Like the ceilings are so high. It's not like the Sistine Chapel, like everybody knows the figures. <laughs> yeah. This one and the Sistine Chapel are connected because Michelangelo studied this place before painting the Sistine Chapel. He took some inspiration here. 
um, we are in the Renaissance. We saw a lot of art of the Middle Ages outside and now we are later in the Renaissance. The Renaissance is, first of all, a change of mind of the people. In the Middle Ages, people were put religion in the center of their life and they were doing things for the afterlife. In the Renaissance, uh, the human beings started to think that the human beings are great. So they started to do something for them. And that's why all this is made for the person that's in the middle. It's all around us. Uh, and it's very easy to understand this uh, idea if you look to the fake architecture. There are the columns, uh, real, and then there is the painting, and they mix together. Uh, the idea is that we are inside and we look outside. Those are the windows of this room, uh, and we can see what's going on outside. We can observe. Uh, this chapel was painted in two different periods. Uh, from the 15th century, around 1450, Beato Angelico started with the stupa, Jesus and the prophets. Then the money finished. 50 years, uh, nobody worked uh, here. Uh, at the end of the 15th century, the works uh, were restarted by Luca Signorelli and <coughs> from Cortona. The two artists are there. These two people in black. The one with long hair is Luca Signorelli. The other one is Beato Angelico that painted him. No, Luca Signorelli painted himself and, and Beato Angelico. They are recognizable because they, they are in the painting but they are not doing anything. They are just looking. Signorelli is looking to his beautiful work. Signorelli worked in this chapel between 1499 and 1502, three years, and he was the second choice. But the first one, Pietro Vannucci, we will, I will tell you about this man in Perugia, was too expensive. So. <laughs> <laughs> so, the second choice made this beautiful work. The stories are stories of the apocalypse, the last days on earth. Uh, we can start from any part, but I like to start with this one because there is one of my favorite characters. In the middle, there is this man with uh, looks like Jesus. Look at his face, the bird. But behind, uh, there is uh, the devil that's whispering in the ear and he's moving him like a puppet. Oh. He's not Jesus, he's the Antichrist. Oh. What is he doing? He's taking people to hell. He's, te he's telling the son to all these people and these people are committing sins and they're going to hell. Oh. So it's a fake Jesus that comes and works for the devil. Uh, the, the, the arm of the antichrist of the devil uh, goes inside the dress and it's even difficult to understand if the hand uh, that comes out is the hand of the antichrist or the hand mm -hmm. of the devil. Yes. Mm -hmm. The people around are sinners uh, of any kind. Uh, I can make a lot of examples, but look at the woman uh, with the blue dress in her hair with the hand asking for money. She's a prostitute. Uh -huh. I mentioned this woman because we will see her face again. Just keep in your mind the face of this woman and never in a good position. Okay, so I will tell you later. Behind this group, there are some monks, friars, religious people who are reading the Bible and they are saving themselves from the corruption of the Antichrist. You know, the group behind, then there are lots of different scenes, wars, people dying. And in the sky, there is San Michael, the Archangel that defeat the Antichrist, kills the Antichrist. He, the good that wins against the evil there in the sky. Uh, this part around the arch is the, the end of the world. Uh, there are the prophets that are telling, look, I told you it was going to happen, something like that. And there are earthquakes, uh, there is a tsunami, there are the stars falling down, the sun that's becoming black. Uh, the world is coming to an end. The tsunami is very beautiful. There is a wave, and all that's coming, and then boats on top, which is destroying everything. You see? <laughs> it's a tsunami. The boats that are on fire, they are putting few people on fire. Some of them are trying to escape, and this is a fantastic example of perspective because the people that are coming here looks like they are coming here, but it's still a flat surface. Perspective in the Renaissance yeah. was not art, there was a science. They knew exactly how to make uh, uh, the geometrical rules of the perspective. And here is a fantastic example. The next one here with all these naked people <laughs> is the resurrection of the, of the bodies. More or less is the same story that we saw outside with the people coming out from their graves and waiting for the judgment. 
but there, there are not graves that is just a white surface. Some of them are complete, some of them are still skeleton, and they form uh, again, and they are all very beautiful, very fit. They are all 30 years old, because for Signorelli 30 was the year of the perfection of the human body, uh, men and women in this case. And here there is a renaissance, because the, the perfect anatomy of the body Study, a scientific study of the human body. Signorelli couldn't study anatomy, he was going to the cemeteries to stick corpse, he was mm. studying of dead bodies. Um. From the cemeteries, and he knew exactly where to put every bone, every muscle, every piece of uh, his heaven. Uh, the angels play music, everybody's happy, everybody's beautiful, everybody is in heaven. Uh, uh, probably to be there, or you were a good friend or a person that the artist loved. Or you could pay a lot because a good, a good way to make money for the artists of the Renaissance was to get money from rich people who wanted their place to be there forever. Uh, and invest in them. Uh, 500 years later, the bad people are going to hell. Uh, and it's uh, before hell. The story of all the before. Uh, the desperation not to go to hell is more scary than hell itself. So these people are fighting, they don't want to go there. The hell is there, the flames come out from the, from the corner. These people don't want to go there and they try to fight. Of course, the dead is a big thing, blue and green and yellow. And then it's a big fight. The woman here, the woman appears in that. One is in the sky, the flying dead. It's screaming the woman down. One in the middle, the, there is a blue there with one orb that's taking this naked woman down. At the bottom, there is another devil with this pink on the face. Always the same face, four times, always in the air, but in the signals. We don't know exactly why. I was going to say. Not why, because if it was the wife, she was the wife, we would know. But probably uh -huh. a woman that did something bad. To the <laughs> Refused. She refused this love. Mm. <laughs> or she didn't. Who knows? Uh, we don't know who this woman is, but we, we know exactly who is Jesus. The face of Jesus is given. Uh, he's the son of Signorelli who died uh, when he was working here. Ah. So he remembered his son dead and he painted his face on the face of Jesus. Mm. And Signorelli put his signature here. Uh, yes. Oh. Yes. The man that's paying the, the prostitute is giving her money. It's a Jewish. Because in that period, uh, Signorelli put the Jewish in, in the, with the singers. Mm. I see, sometimes I see something that I, I cannot find an explanation. For example, here there is a camel and uh, a monkey that's riding the camel. I don't know. <laughs> what I that means. I have no idea why. <laughs> just, just to tell you that in these churches there are so many things that uh -huh. it's even difficult to, to give an explanation because it can be just the artist that wanted to do something. <laughs> it's a pieta, like the pieta uh -huh. of, Michel of Michelangelo. We know exactly who made it and when because it's written here. Uh -huh. He left his signature. Hippolito Scalza, the name of the artist, Urbetanus, and when he made it, 1579. Look at the details mm. of the statue. Uh, I love, for example, the, the hand of Jesus, no? The hand of Jesus uh, is, goes down, so the veins are bigger here than there, because the blood, the blood flows down. Those are small details, but make you understand the quality of the, or the clothes. The clothes look very light, they fall down. But this is still a piece of marble, it's a stone, so... A relic, okay, because remember that all this was made to hold a little piece. The relic is here, and it's open in this period because we are close oh, to the east. the relic. Initially, uh, you don't see it because there is a window. Um, the relic is the tablecloth of the altar in Bolsena with uh, some spot that are supported in the blood. And it's over there. 
if you want to go into the remix, you know, it's a holy place, they don't want to, to turn into the museum, but we have to get out from the church and come back from this door. If you would like to see To see the relic, you have to go out and around. It because uh, it's open, and it's not very common to see yeah. it open. Right. I love toes. I know. <laughs> so this church was built around the relic of uh, the miracle that so um, it's a tablecloth that has the blood of Christ on it okay so this is um, this is how to get into you see the relic This is not open most of the time. So when you come here, don't be disappointed if you can't see it. Um, our guide lives in this area and it's only the second time he's ever seen it open to the public. So, um, I mean, I showed you what it looks like. That's the relic. Kids here. School trip here. This is crazy how many kids are here. Just keep coming. Look at all these children. <laughs> They're still coming. Oh. The symbol of the Papal State. Mm. That means that this portrait was built by the Popes. It's called Fortez Albornoziana. We will see another one in Assisi. Oh, wow. You can see the train. You just go straight to Rome or Florence from here. There's a 50 cent euro charge to use the bathroom. <laughs> nice. <laughs> okay. I mean, Rome is easier because you put the finger underneath and then it springs from the side. Oh my god. <laughs> He's a pro. <laughs> he knows how to do it. <laughs> this is the well. St. Patrick's well. <laughs> What's the biggest problem of this city? The water. There was an aqueduct also, but if you are under attack, uh, the first thing the enemies do is cut the, the aqueduct. In the 1500s, uh, there were lots of problems in Rome, and uh, Pope Paul III, uh, in Perugia, he is the number one public enemy, decided to do something here, because this is the city where he was coming in case of troubles in Rome. He decided to make a big well, a source of water that was enough uh, to, sur to make the city survive during a siege. And he charged one of the greatest architects of that century, Antonio da San Galli il Giovane, to make the project for this well. You will hear the name of this architect again tomorrow in Perugia, because in, in Perugia he made another thing completely different. That's why I told you that in Perugia this pope was the public enemy and here no. Um, he made this project. He made a well, about 60 meters is the depth of the well. It's very deep. He reached the water. 90 and feet. No, 60 meters. Uh, more 60 than 90 feet. 180. 180 feet, yes, a lot. Mm. Uh, then the idea was to take the water from the bottom with donkeys. So he thought about making a spiral to go down. Then he understood that if you make a spiral, the donkey that goes down gets stuck with the donkey that goes up. It's <laughs> difficult and the donkey cannot turn around. It's complicated. So this architect was smart uh, and he thought about a system of double spiral. Two spirals that cross each other, like the molecule of DNA. Oh. At the bottom of the well, uh, there is a bridge. So you go down one way. You cross the well and you go back the other way. So the donkey that goes down never gets stuck with the donkey that goes up. 
in the well, uh, you will never meet a person going in the opposite direction uh, because they will be in front of you. Okay, this is the uh, the smart idea that he had, Antonio La Sangala, that was really a great architect. And when they finished the, the well, they wrote that one that says, What nature cannot give you the human brain? Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> uh, the nature uh, uh, didn't want to give water to the city, so uh. the human brain did it. So now we go inside and we start to go down. We have reached the bottom if you want. Uh, if you don't want to reach the bottom, uh, the lady at the ticket office told me that it's possible. Let's go. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> the kids are coming. Oh, no, these are the steps. It's not too yeah. bad. Whoa! Except yeah. they're not. 498 steps. I'm just going to go slow. 498? Yes. In total, going down and up. So I knew you can see. Oh, okay. The window. Ah. And you can see where we are going. I'm. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> yeah. I'm. Yeah. Oh, Marita. Look back. Where did you go? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm not gonna go. Okay. But you can see where you're going. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. Yeah. So for those of you who um, want to go from Florence to Rome, Orieto is a fabulous stop on the way right between. You can get a driver to drive you here or take the train been really pleasant and it's a nice little village it's really crowded today I'm surprised it's Monday now I've got to go get some work done for you fabulous clients of mine being so patient always super convenient hotel this Hotel Duomo it, it's not a luxury hotel it's your classic four-star European hotel there are other options in here as well <laughs> so you have to stop at the desk and pick up your key. Oops. <laughs> and the light doesn't go on, but it is it is on. Oops. <laughs> okay, and there is a refrigerator in this room too with some goodies. What's this? <laughs> so it's dinner time again already. <laughs> More drinking and food. Raro takes total care of you the whole time. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Great food. It's it's no skimping at all on anything. A second, we know these guys. <laughs> Oh, oh this is wow, well, look what you could get here. Awesome. Oh, wow. Gorgeous. Nice. And that's like a phone case. So tell me about the place you guys went. Yeah, we went to this, uh, this vegan handmade manufacturing. And uh, yeah, they showed us how they do that. And you can customize everything. And then they did it in one day. Yeah, isn't that amazing? Oh, I haven't seen the inside. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's not just a vacation, it's a shopping spree. <laughs> Cute. Okay, so that's something I didn't get up and do this morning, um, but everybody else went to go see this vegan leather store and it's a, it's a really cute place here. They showed you how they make the leather and um, and then they customized all of those little pieces and they found out we were leaving in the morning. So they made sure that they delivered them tonight to the hotel. I mean, amazing service, just crazy. That was great. <laughs> all right, Trattoria Del Orso for dinner tonight. To the left. Thank you. Cute little place. <laughs> 
Oh, it's kind of a round table today. An oval. I like that. Beautiful. I love this round table. That way you can really talk to everybody. <laughs> Do you have white also? Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry? <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I'm not saying that. Get your glass. Oh, nah, my white. Oh, wow. But maybe they because there is a. Make a Romania, yeah. Just Italian. Oh, it's so good. Is it good? Damn it. It's like really refreshing. It's great taste. It's good? Yes. If they don't hang up, then don't worry about it. Love it. Right when I decide I'm going to sleep. The girl that is in charge for today and tomorrow and the other days, she's going to say the menu. Oh. <laughs> the girl. So you can order whatever you want out of things. We don't have a fixed menu. I will tell you the options, the main options. If there is nothing you like, you can something different. But that would be like the most uh, favorable options. So we have the tagliatelle dell'orso, which is with tomato sauce and scamorza. Is it like um, smoky cheese? Smoky mm. cheese, but it's a fresh Smet grated smoky and mozzarella. melting. But yeah. it's tagliatelle in case they don't know. Yeah, yeah tagliatelle is this homemade pasta. It's kind of fettuccine, kind of. It's a long one. And we also have tagliatelle with white summer truffle. Then we have uh, for meat um, the uh, duck breast, sous vide with mm. caramelized onions. Mm -hmm. Or we have the um, bikini guinea fowl, with truffle. Uh, we have the tagliata, which is a beef steak cut and uh, a cut. Yeah, no, no, a cut is, um, it's a dried, co salty cut. 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 So not the fresh one, but kala is like it's dry, salty. dried and it's like um, yeah. cooked. And uh, we have vegetables and mixed greens, vegetable and salad. So in Italy, they don't give you bread plates. You just put your bread on the table. I just wanted to explain. It's not rude here. That's what you do. It is. And, um, what is that? Oh, is that the cock? Yeah. That's oh. The yeah. Oh, and that's the guinea fowl that Stanley Tucci says we have to have here. It's like so we're Oh, is that the truffle? <laughs> All right, so Stanley Tucci says this is the dish to get here. You got to do what Stanley Tucci says. Right. So I'll get this Apparently, many people. I know. It looks like we have nothing left except a little. Hold on. I'll do this piece. I'm too Oh, yeah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Tucci's right. It's so good. It's delicious. <laughs> um, okay, look at this white truffles. Oh my god. It's not like this. Should I should I not stir it yet? Do you need a picture? I have the same. I already Oh, okay. Okay, look at this truffle. Yum. <laughs> Look at this pasta. This is Italian pasta. This is what. Yum. <laughs> So go back and look at my France video when I went truffle hunting, but it was not the white truffles. This is like the really special truffle. Mm. And the black truffle I had the other night was super good, delicious. White truffle. Mm. Mm. <laughs> 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 
when they come back. Mm -hmm. That's what I, oh my gosh. I love this, and I love the egg noodles. These are these are like flat fettuccine like noodles. I love that. Really yummy. So Stanley Tucci only knew to come here because of Rara, right? <laughs> Yes. And and Tucci was in the for sure no part of the say it was good to say that you cheat. Fettuccine, what? <laughs> no, that's okay. Ten dollars. That's oh my gosh. Look at that duck. It's only at the face. Amazing. Everybody had what you ordered? Did you get what you ordered? Too much, yeah. <laughs> 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 That's like the Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoy today. Yes. Tomorrow and the, the day, the days after is going to be more or less the same because we are going to have or to go in a different village, and uh, we are going to have a tour, a tour guide, and lunch and wine tasting and things like that every day, different village. Um, Tomorrow, nine o'clock, downstairs, <laughs> and somebody is going to take care of the luggages. And we go with Luciano, we go to a beautiful village of Perugia, and we're going to have a tour and uh, lunch in there. About tonight, if you want something uh, else as a dinner or as a food, if uh, there is no more than that, I would like to uh, uh, let you listen a song that I I sing I sing to my I sing to my wife when the, when, um, when when it was when we get married and, uh, and so lucky I was drunk. Uh, yes. <laughs> Me too. And there is a meaning of that. I don't know if you know the song, but uh, it's important. And you are in first class, and we, I'm, I'm the captain, and we have a passenger traveling on first class on Rado, and she wants a Baker Romagna brandy. That means, that means if you guys do not want any food anymore, we can go to a bar and I have a round of Baker Romagna because she traveling Rado first class. We are going to have a Becca Romagna brandy. Uh, All right. So, Apparently, he was saying. singing to you. <laughs> <laughs> but I hope he doesn't want to get one of you. <laughs> 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 oh, Tiramisu. Semi freddo al pistacchio. Semi freddo oh. is uh, ice cream with pistacchio. It's not ice cream, it's semi-fresh. Homemade torta di mele is uh, apple, apple pie. Apple oh. pie? It's uh, soup English. Oh, soup English. Okay. So let's explain soup English. Soup English is. Non c'entra niente con la zuppa e neanche con gli inglesi. Soup English is. It's a cream with the soup. I tried to explain. It's a red, sweet liquor. It's very good. We call it the English soup. It's not English, it's not a soup. Yes. But it's 
Yeah. It's very nice. It makes sense to Italians to call it that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's very Italian. It's very good. I would like to afford for my diabetes. But <laughs> it's in Italy we say what? Be, be, be fucking good. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Pan de España. Biscuit. Biscuit. It's a lies. Yeah, and this liquor. It's soaked in this. It's, it's uh, not a good. Liquor. I liquor. It's a no, maybe it's a little bit. It's a very good yeah. too. Very good. Isn't that what tiramisu is? You're going to get one? Uh, the semi is a parfait. If someone's going to use that, you'll have a cafe. Kind of oh, cafe. Kind of oh, cafe. Who wants tiramisu? Uh, ice cream. <laughs> 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 you raise your hand. Yeah. <laughs> oh, is that the special thing? Yeah. Oh, beautiful. Those are way better than mine. <laughs> How did you get such good colors? Go ahead. Do my first bite for me. Mm. Is it delicious? That's <laughs> okay. Just okay? I'm, I'm not going to talk. Since you allowed to be the sun, mm. try that. Wow. It's not the best. Like? Wow. It's not bad. That's like an amazing mix of taste that I have no idea how to describe to anybody. Oh, I don't really is good. Hold on. Wait, what did you have it on? Katsi. You had to have it on. <laughs> So, me too. Bye, bro. Me too. I'm going to get a million hits on this. <laughs> We're going to have some Italian brandy for a nightcap. <laughs> Your paparazzi is here. Vodka? The vodka is just normal, classic, like Skype vodka. What is that? The best del gin is very good, very good. The mare, 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 the <laughs> so, so what, what are you making? Vodka tonic. Ah, vodka tonic. Okay. Elvis. <laughs> oh. Elvis <laughs> first. It's not first. <laughs> Vecchia Romagna. Vecchia Romagna. Italia. Show him the bottle. Can you try it? Maybe I Oh, totally, totally strong. It's like a brandy. Yeah. Brandy. Brandy. Oh. Show us the bottle. Oh, that's the bottle. No. That's the bottle. Is that Marty? This is the bottle that we drank. Yes. 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 Let me do this one. Ah, uh, grazie. It's like that. It's tomorrow. Can I, I, I go with a horrible, horrible. For you? Yes. Yes. It's a Just with yes. some ice. Oh. You don't like it? Yeah. I loved it. Really? I love it. Cheers. <laughs> Long guy, like, you know? Cheers! I don't know if you're laughing about it, so it may not be a good thing. So is this the black mamba he's making? What do you make? Black mamba. It is black mamba. But it's not black, it's blue. A blue mama! You did say it's blue. Is it blue curacao? Uh, yeah. I don't know. That's vodka. With vodka? Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god. 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 Oh my god.
that's what I'm made of blue. Okay. Well, we're going to call the strings the Elvis now, so. <laughs> Nice. It's the black mamba. Oh. Honest. Honest. Oh, no. That's the licorice taste. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, no. Yeah. Is this a special Italian drink? I need to get a first a first taste. It's <laughs> good. Nice. Drinking and when I like something, uh, I don't know. Marina, what are you taking? I'll take gin tonic. You also want the same as I do? You want which, the same? Which like one? The yeah, that's fine. She did anyway. Oh! Ardo. 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 Oh, that kind of Yeah. For Ben, no? Yeah. Ah. That's how we Thank you. Grazie. I have no idea what. Hey, lady. <laughs> it's just, it's not. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> okay. Yeah. 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 No, okay, hold on. Oh, wait. I'm just thinking of the Asian. <laughs> no, ginseng is also a different one. Okay, so that's, different. that's what I thought yeah. she was getting. Was it? Yeah. Okay, now it's I, really I will, good. But that's I will, why I I will Google good. now to tell you what it is. Mm. It's so good. Yeah. Delicious, thank you. That's exactly what I'm happy yes. that I'm happy. Yes, I am. Burly. That's Burly. Uh, Where's your drink? Oh, you need a drink. Okay. 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 I wanted to show you, they have like this towel warmer here, so you can set it for hot and have your towel hot when you get out of the shower, which was really nice. So the shower was pretty good too. Um, they have, all these have the handhelds in the rain shower, but no conditioner. It's still breakfast time here. Oh, Brie. Croissant. Oh my goodness. Having a little cheese and prosciutto before we leave. Yeah. Mm. Cappuccino. 
It's been a beautiful stay here in Orvieto. It's a great stop uh, between Florence and Rome. You'll love it. And now on to even more amazing areas. We've got Five Nights in Stella. So I can't wait to show you that. That's going to be our, our like home base. And we'll do tours in a kind of a, a spoke uh, <laughs> from there. Off. Uh, we have to walk to the bus. They're going to take the luggage. And uh, so we don't have anything to carry, which is really nice. <laughs> Mmm, yummy. <laughs> tree, I'm sorry, that tree is just super cool the way the leaves kind of hang. Okay, we're there. Um, we're on our way to Perugia. Um, it's gonna be more or less one hour ride, so you can uh, uh, enjoy the views or relax, whatever. And um, we are kind of just a little late on schedule but actually just 15 minutes maybe so we are good on track and we're gonna take our tour of Perugia as planned we will just have lunch a little bit later and uh, after lunch we will have a little bit of free time to do some shopping Perugia is the city of chocolate <laughs> is the Italian capital of chocolate and um, maybe like a, cu a curiosity in Italy that's like that you can find chocolate in the stores until kind of this period in summer there is no chocolate anymore to buy because it's gonna melt on the way so they take it off the uh, shelves in uh, May or something and they you, they put it back in uh, October so we are lucky we can still buy chocolate um, might melt on your suitcase though <laughs> this is Corbara where the lake name takes the name from and the special thing this is the river the Tiber that you also see through Rome and here on the left the river disappears so it goes underground and comes out again in a couple of kilometers because of the artificial uh, lake. So, but this is the same river, this is the third river uh, of Italy and uh, goes until Rome into the Tyrrhenian Sea. There are several hotels up here, like on a square area. Palazzo della Provincia. Pasta Iolica. <laughs> and our guide is here. <laughs> We've arrived in Perugia. <laughs>
<laughs> uh, Perugia is uh, the biggest city here, 160,000 people, and it's also the most complicated city. It's really a strange place. Uh, first of all, uh, this city has 3,000 years of history. This history is in layers. First and Roman, Middle Ages, Renaissance, and it's a labyrinth. Uh, consider that from here we see just uh, one of the five medieval quarters, uh, just a small part of the historical city. Imagine how big it is. It's really huge. Uh, the walls uh, are uh, eight kilometers. We saw Orvieto, we will see Perugia. Those are the two Etruscan cities that we will see in this tour. Everything is on the other side, it's not Etruscan. We won't see the Etruscan in Spello, in uh, Gubbio, in Assisi, nowhere else. Because now we are going underground. Uh, have a look to where we are. We are not on the original level of the city. The original level of the city is there below. This is the roof of the fortress, Rocca Paulina. Okay, here you can see the walls of the fortress. Uh, it's important to understand where we are because now we are inside we, we, we are going inside uh, the fortress this fortress is the darkest page of the history of perugia yesterday i started to introduce you the this history of the popes uh, here we will see the other side the dark side of the popes okay so this is my first test of having two microphones see how this does this is laney on microphone one michaela is on microphone two Okay, so now we're going underground. Okay. Uh, this is just the city center of Perugia. Okay, now we are here, underground. The viewpoint where we started, and this is the, the quarter that we saw from the viewpoint with the Church of San Domenico and the Church of San Pietro. So there is much more than that, it's, it's really big. So the, the city was first established on top of this hill, Colle del Sole, 3,000 years ago, more or less. Uh, the first who made a real city here were the Etruscans, like Orvieto. Uh, Perugia was very important in the Etruscan period. There was a very important commercial city, uh, one of the biggest Etruscan settlements. Uh, the Etruscans, uh, uh, 300 years before Christ, uh, built a city wall of three kilometers that goes all the way around the center of the city center, 23 centuries old. And they lived inside. The Romans uh, didn't attack the city like they did in Orvieto. The Romans uh, mm, shared uh, most of the time uh, the city with the Etruscans. So Perugia became Roman slowly. Etruscans and Roman live together, mix together, and that's why in Assis, in Perugia, we don't see many Roman architecture because the Romans used the same city, so they made decorations, uh, inscription, art, but they didn't build big things. Early Middle Ages, uh, in the, uh, barbarian invasions, uh, the city remained uh, still in the same city wall because that age was not a it's called the Dark Age, so there was not a big development of uh, economy, art, science. It was like going back in time of centuries. The situation started to change after the year 1000, when Perugia became an independent city, always under the control of the papal state, but with some independence. Uh, the city was ruled by some representative of the economical powers, uh, and the economy started to grow a lot. Uh, lots of people came to Perugia, the city became bigger, and they started to build one, two, three, four, five new quarters. The Etruscan wall was not big enough, so they made another wall, eight kilometers of medieval wall. So Perugia has two walls, the old wall, 2,300 years old, and the new wall, new because it's still 700 years old, all around the city center. The golden century of Perugia is probably the 13, the 1200s. In the 1200s, they made uh, uh, some of the most important things that we will see today, the palace of the government, the cathedral, the um, fountain, the most famous monument in Perugia, the aqueduct, and also the university. The University of Perugia was established in 1270. It's very, very old. Uh, so in the Middle Ages, Perugia was in a great shape. It was flourishing, it was powerful uh, uh, economically, military. It was a very, very important city. What happened later? Uh, the power was taken 
by some rich family. We are in the 15th century. This family started to have some troubles with the papal state. The response of the papal state was to put high taxes on the city. Uh, the, the, the highest tax was on salt. Salt was used for many things. Uh, in Perugia, these rich families organized a riot, a revolt, a war. They, uh, they put an army together to fight uh, the army of the Papal State. Uh, it's called the War of Salt. The war started uh, and it finished uh, with the army of the Pope entering the city, killing a lot of people and conquering definitely the power in the city. The Pope was Paul III. It's the same Pope that, uh, that built uh, the well we saw yesterday in Orvieto, the same. The Pope decided to do something to the city to keep it under control, and he decided to build this place. This place is called Rocca Paulina. Rocca means fortress, Paulina, Paul, the name of the Pope, Paolo III, Rocca Paulina. Uh, to build this fortress, he put a part of the city underground, and he destroyed another one. If you look carefully around you, you recognize that you are, we are in a, in a house, in an old house, and we just walk through the streets of a medieval city. So this part of the city is now underground. Visible, now this is a street, this is the facade of a house, this is another street. Here there was a, a, a oven. You have to imagine a city that's now underground. This is what, what the Ro Rocca Paulina is. In the Middle Ages, uh, uh, if you were rich, uh, you wanted everybody to know that you were rich, and the best way to do it was to build uh, towers. In Perugia, there were 40 towers. Uh, it was a very rich city. There were lots of rich families and lots of towers. The family that owned all the properties here had uh, four towers, so we can still see one of them, I mean, a corner of one of them, because it was used uh, as a pillar to hold the, the roof of the fortress. The name of this family is this one, Baglioni. Baglioni is uh, more or less uh, what Medici was for Florence, uh, one of these families that promoted art, uh, science, uh, but it's also the family that organized uh, the War of Salt. It's the, fam the family that tried uh, to go against the Pope. And that's why the Pope decided to, to build uh, the fort uh, in this uh, specific area of the city, because he wanted to destroy all the properties of the family and destroy the family itself. And he did it, basically. It was uh, the military part for the army, so they were keeping weapons, uh, soldiers. Uh, the idea was to keep the city under control, so if something could start it, uh, they immediately uh, they could um, immediately go there and well, keep it under control. We have the medieval layer, that's the city. Perugia, yes, this is my city. Mm -hmm. Two pillars that were made by cisterns. Uh, here there was a well uh, to give water to the to the city. And so it was a privilege to live down here. Nobody was living here. This is a fortress, so it's a military building. Okay, so nobody. The the upper part, but the the um, the the houses of the governors were destroyed, but there were some. Uh, big uh, homes for, for the governors of the city, for the people who were working for the popes. Okay. This is a, a place, uh, well, like any fortress. Uh, they, they were keeping the army and the weapons. So we didn't go back up. No, we did not go. <laughs> blocks of travertine. In Perugia, when you see these blocks of travertine, sometimes, most of the times, we are in front of the Etruscan wall. This is the wall that the Truscans built uh, 2,300 years ago. What happened here is that the architect uh, saw this wall, he said, well, it's a beautiful wall built uh, with uh, very strong material, travertine. He used it uh, to make his wall, the wall of the fortress. This way he could save money, it was easier. So this part of the Etruscan wall now disappeared because it's inside the wall of the fortress. You see it a little bit more there. You still see the big blocks of travertine and then you don't see it anymore because it goes through the wall of the fortress. Uh, 
seven gates, five major gates and two minor gates. This is one of the most important gates, it's called the Porta Marzia, uh, it's the southern gate of the, of the walls. The architect decided to save it. Uh, it, it was uh, at the same level of the wall, but he decided to make it visible. Uh, because the arch is Etruscan, but the statues, the decorations are Roman. Uh, the period uh, of the fortress is also the period of the Renaissance, the period of the uh, rediscovering of the classical period, uh, when they thought that the Roman and Greek period was the greatest period of the human history. So having a Roman monument at the entrance of the fortress was a good way to give it power and prestige. The Arch Etruscan invention, uh, it's one of the greatest inventions of the Etruscans, uh, the technology of the Arch. They understood uh, the secret of the keystone. So we, we are in front of one of the first arches ever made by the human beings. Above uh, the Roman inscription, the Roman decorations, because the Romans used the Etruscan city, but they decorated. The inscriptions are not very visible, but it says Augusta Perusia. When the Emperor Augusto, after a war, reconquered the city of Perugia, he decided to write his name on the five gates to tell everybody, well, the city is mine. So he changed the name of the city from Perusna, the Etruscan name, to Augusta Perusia. So every, every one of the five gates has the same inscription, Augusta Perusia. In the middle, uh, still very ruined, but uh, there, are, there, is the, um, there are the keys of St. Peter's, the symbol of the Papal State, the call of arm of the family of the Pope, Farnese, and PP3, that means Pope Paul III the signature of the Pope in the middle. So here there is a lot of the story of the history of Perugia because there are the Etruscan, the Romans, the Pope, the Middle Ages uh, in this gate. What's the top inscription? The top inscription is Colonia Vibia. Vibia is a family that, uh, um, an important Roman family that controlled this area for, for a while, Colonia Vibia. Uh, and then on top there is the, the terrace where we started, the, the viewpoint. And now we are right under the viewpoint where we started. Vado, vado. But this parking is reserved for residents here, so you can't... No, residents, they cannot even enter this area. I don't oh. live here, I live uh, in, outside of the city center. And I, I'm not allowed to drive here. Ah. <laughs> See, they have these permits, so you can't drive in. <laughs> See, in fact... So there is walking in these villages and the, the ground is not super um, flat. So just be aware, bring good walking shoes. I see bubbles. Chocolates. I'm sorry. The one that made this painting is one of the most important artists uh, of the Renaissance. And he was the first choice. Remember yesterday when I told you when we were in the chapel that Signorelli was the second choice? The first choice was this man, huh? but he was too expensive. Uh, oh, it's a movie. Oh, it's, oh, they're filming a yeah, movie. Yeah, yeah. Uh, ah. Yeah, they are, they are filming a... No, I don't know. Uh, I, don't know. I know that they are filming a... It's crashing because it's dying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. It's nice to keep moving because it's cold. So we go to make a loop around the square and we will come back here. After we see the square, we go to the restaurant. But I want to show you a couple of other places. They're filming a Netflix series here. I'm not sure which series it is. I'm hoping to be able to talk to somebody on the crew and figure it out. <laughs> All right, film followers, <laughs> figure out which film this is. We're in Perugia. I don't know what date it is. April, uh, what date is today? April 18th. April 18th. Who's filming in Perugia today? the 
Watch Tower, there is a dome, there are some separate streets in the middle, there is a dome, uh, that's the church of uh, San Michele Arcangelo, that's the oldest church in Perugia, 1,500 years old. It's a circle, it's around the church with the... <laughs> but we don't come back the same way. Yeah? We make a loop and we show you a couple of other things down there. Gosh. <laughs> this is not for everyone, just to let you know. <laughs> And uh, the from the oxen where you're from. Yeah, yeah. And many times they die, like it's something. But they cannot understand how to. Looks like one of the gates. Yeah. <laughs> like the ones we saw at the fortress, uh, Rocca Paulina. That means that we are in front of the Etruscan wall, but here we don't see just uh, two meters, a small portion. Here we see the wall. And we also see the biggest uh, Etruscan arch. It's called the uh, Etruscan arch, <laughs> very simple, or Arco di Augusto. Uh, it's 20 meters high and five meters thick. Imagine how difficult it was to cut and bring uh, all these stones. Uh, the quarries of Travertine are six kilometers away from here, down in the valley of, uh, of Perugia. So they had to bring uh, all the stones up here. Oh, it is. I feel the rain. It's starting to rain. So we're walking alongside the Etruscan wall. It's the old aqueduct of Perugia. Oh. When I say the word aqueduct, everybody thinks about the Romans uh, because the Romans were the greatest aqueduct makers of the history, probably. But it's not a Roman aqueduct, it's a medieval aqueduct. It was built in the 13th century to give water to the city of Perugia. The aqueduct is six kilometers long. Uh, the water comes from a mountain called Monte Pacciano. At the end of the aqueduct is the fountain in the main square. Uh -huh. Now, how is possible that the water goes uh, uphill because the fountain is higher than this place? The aqueduct was a pipe, uh, pressure. The source of the water is 650 meters above sea level. The fountain is 450 meters above sea level. So with the pressure, the water was going down and then up to the fountain. So it goes there, and the aqueduct is here, and here there is a tunnel. Now the tunnel is all broken, it's, it fell down, that goes all the way to the main square. Uh, Perugia took most of the water from this aqueduct uh, until uh, the 19th century, 600 years. When they made the modern aqueduct, uh, they had to decide what to do with this one, and they decided to uncover a part of the aqueduct and make this pedestrian street. Uh, that's kind of useful because uh, it's the, the shortest connection between the main square and the center of the city and the universities that are down here. So it's uh, important. And it's nice because you can, you can walk on the aqueduct. And now we are going to see the end of the aqueduct because we are going to see the fountain in, uh, in the main square up there. <laughs> Uh, here you see all the windows in a row because uh, this is one of the old towers of Perugia that was uh, included in a, in a bigger building. This is one of the uh, nicest and most typical streets of Perugia, Via Mesta delle Volte. The roof is French. During the war. The Cathedral of San Lorenzo is uh, unfinished. Uh, uh, there is a, now from here we don't see it very well, but there is a window up there. Inside the window there is a crucifix. Yeah. The citizens of Perugia put uh, Jesus there outside of the cathedral because the cathedral was the symbol of the political power, but they still wanted to pray, so they preferred to go to pray in the square in front of Jesus with nobody in the middle because uh, any representative of the church was an enemy during the War of Salt. So it's a symbol of this protest against the Vatican State and, and the popes. Well, the fountain is the, the end of the aqueduct. 
they made a beautiful aqueduct, they made a beautiful fountain, and they charged two of the most famous sculptures of the Middle Ages for the decoration. Their names are Nicola and Giovanni Pisano, father and son. There was a tunnel, now again the tunnel uh. doesn't exist anymore, that goes all the way to the aqueduct that we saw before. The fountain is made with three materials, marble, and the pink stone. Uh, a lot of the pink stone come from Assisi. When you will be in Assisi, ah. you will see that the city is pink. Very beautiful. What the artist wanted to do is to put the human being, the all aspects of the human being, in one fountain. From the daily life, from the activities that the people were doing each month of the year. So we are in January here. January, there is a man in front of the fireplace with a glass, with the chicken, the woman is making bread. Uh, there is also the sign of the zodiac. And next to the glass of the man, there is the sign of Aquarius. Uh, and each you represent a month. So if you go counterclockwise, we can recognize uh, the 12 months of the year, the 12 signs of the zodiac, and the activities typical for each month. Uh, February, they're fishing. March, uh, March, they cut. Uh, the, the trees, the cut branches of the trees because they prepare them for the good season and the sign is Aries. April, the beginning of the spring, uh, two girls that are picking flowers outside with towers. Uh, May, May they go hunting, uh, or better, the woman is going hunting with a python, uh, the man is behind uh, picking flowers. Gemini. Uh, June uh, uh, harvesting, they harvest the wheat. In July, Leo lion, they prepare uh, um, they, they prefer wheat, uh, flour from the wheat. August, uh, they pick fruits from the three things uh, probably because we can recognize the needs of the pig tree. September. What can you do in September? <laughs> <laughs> the next year, Zebra, October, they put the wine in the barrels to age for the, <clears throat> for the next season. Scorpio, uh, November, uh, they blow the fields and the seeds uh, for the next season. And then December, they kill uh, the pig because uh, they prepare for the for the cold season, they bring the pig home, and there is a dog uh, that wants some, you know, the skinny dog that yes. trying to get, get some meat. Uh, the daily life of the man, in, uh, season by season, uh, it's interesting because you, you can see what people were doing for each month 800 years ago. Lion and griffin are the same symbol that are at the entrance of the government oh. palace, symbol of Peru and symbol of the World <laughs> Party. Here there are the liberal arts, so this part is about the knowledge, the culture of the human being. So we have grammar, uh, uh, geometry, music, philosophy, for example, this is maths, arithmetic, there is a girl that's learning the number, the numbers. The next one is geometry, she's making circles, the compass, the next one is music, she's playing. So we have the daily life, the knowledge culture. And the next one is uh, another big uh, aspect of human life. Religion. Stories of the Old Testament. Adam and Eve, Samson and Dalila, uh, David and Goliath. The stories of the Old Testament. So, daily life, culture, religion, and the last part uh, is about history, legends, and literature mostly about the foundation of the city of Rome, the greatest city of the history at that point. Mm. Romulus and Remus, the brothers, and the wall. I don't know if you know the story of the foundation of Rome with the two brothers that were framed by a wall. And history, legends, religion, science, culture, daily life, the human being, all the aspects of the human being in the and the palace of the government is still the palace of the government of Perugia. Um, there is a pulpit over there, the governors were, you know, were doing an announcement to the square. And there is another pulpit at the cathedral. The bishop and the governor. 
Chocolate. <laughs> chocolate. Uh, well, first of all, the tradition of chocolate of Perugia, uh, I have to be honest, I, I don't really, I think it's something, uh, it's a business, this thing, and it's all grown around this big chocolate factory that was established at, big, at the beginning of the 20th century. Okay. Uh, this big chocolate factory is Perugina, maybe you already know it because they sell this chocolate all over the world. Mm. So it's Nestlé, Nestlé bought the, the chocolate factory. We are talking about one of the biggest chocolate factory in, uh, in Europe. And everything was started by a woman. Her name was Luisa Spagnoli. Her business was making uh, clothes with uh, the wool of the rabbits. A, a side uh, business was this little chocolate workshop and she started to make this uh, bachi it's a chocolate made with what was left from the other, other uh, chocolates they were making it's made with hazelnuts pieces of hazelnuts and, and cocoa with a hazelnut on top mm. you saw some mm. of them then they started to put these love messages inside the chocolate and that was the secret of the business because <laughs> it was very nice to open a chocolate and read it <laughs> it was a very romantic present to give because there are all these love messages and the factory started to become bigger and bigger so they had to move to the new part of Perugia next to the train station and when the factory became huge they had to move it in the industrial area of Perugia you can see the factory is endless there are I think uh, almost 1,000 people working there. It's one of the biggest in towns in Peru. Uh, another smart man at this time decided to organize the chocolate festival in It's called the Euro Chocolate, like I shop over there. The chocolate festival became an incredible success. Consider that every year we expect to have uh, almost 1 million visitors in 10 days. Uh, it's uh, super crowded. There are lots of chocolate stands all over. And since the festival started, the Bermuda started to become the city of chocolate. After that, they started to open chocolate workshops because people come here for chocolate. So it's true that in Perugia there is good chocolate. It started later, so it's a consequence of the factory, not the factory consequence of a tradition. This is what I wanted to say. If you want to try the chocolate of Perugia, there are many ways to do it. There is the shop of Perugina, so the big one, the factory that's close to the square where we met, over there. Then there is this shop, your chocolate, where you find that here. They, made the, they make their own chocolate and they have the workshop up there where you see these windows above. Mm. Okay, the workshop is there. Of course, it's more expensive because it's artisanal chocolate, but it's here. What was the name of the chocolate shop that you said? This one is Turan. It's that Turan. bar with the brown. Oh, oh, I see. Okay. The shop is there. Okay. It's the shop of the same bar because they produce a sell, but it's also a bar, a coffee bar. Okay. Hey, it looks like this is lunch. <laughs> oh, wow. This is cool. Oh, it's so cute. I love it. How do you say the name of it? Salve, buongiorno, signori. Buongiorno. <laughs> buongiorno, buongiorno. Thank you. <laughs> Glasses are humongous. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Someone drinks uh, both red and wine, uh, red and white. Ask me, and I bring you extra glass. Ah, uh, okay. Okay, you and you, okay. you fine. White. Okay. Okay. So two extra glasses. Gracias. I want to try all the wine. I'm sure they're delicious. This is really delicious. I don't know 
Wife, yes. wife of mine, mm -hmm. hands off. That's delicious. Right? Yeah, we'll take those. Okay. Taste. I got water and the blue is a black one. Excuse me, blue is a black one. See, see. That's good. That's <laughs> good. Okay. Yes. No, it's red. I'm doing both like a true alcoholic. Different glasses for their red. We got a fun little special glass. Um, <laughs> That's because you use that and <laughs> Like, I don't want to be, I mean, on pause, so, but this one is the best uh, restaurant in Perugia. Mm. That's perfect for Raro. <laughs> and, uh, really, uh, the, so I, I don't know many Gambero Rosso uh, sign. And um, it's good food, but the, the difference between this place and the other place is not uh, a attractive. So, are you ready to order? May I? May I? May I? May I? May I? And um, the difference between this place and the other places, the other place, the, 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 the cuisine is more simple, it's more family uh, uh, system. Here is more complicated, uh, elaborate. Elaborate or sophisticated uh, dishes. That's the, about the, the lunch. Then we are adding at um, we meeting Italy at 415 with the old bus, the Luciano, with the, they switch the bags and stuff. And when we get at the hotel around five o'clock, we are going to have a, a oil testing. It's the chicken liver. Wow. I totally not what I expected. Uh, grazie. <laughs> So, Pecorina is a goat. Here you are. Grazie. So, it's like a soft cheese soup. Okay. Uh, so, he said to put pepper, pepper on the soup. So, following instructions. <laughs> oh, it's super soft. But it's like crunchy on the outside. Hot. Is it hot? The middle's very hot. Mm. So I get out of the picture. I got to watch out. No, I don't care. The next day, the tractor's going to show up. Very mm. middle, very like the small ones. Mm. The same thing. It's delicious, but it's super hot. But it's so good. I like the edge. Mm. So good. So the liver I got is kind of a similar to a chopped liver taste. This is the most delicious cheese souffle I think I've ever had in my life. It's just such a rich, delicious, creamy taste. And the pear, it adds something so amazing. It's just so good. Mm. Mm, delicious. So today go with onion, yoko with yellow pumpkin and nuts. Yoki with yellow pumpkin, saffron, and crispy hazelnut. Wow.
there's the bees. So I walk here. Uh, <laughs> so so the moon is here. Where was the base bee? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Was that the vinegar? Right. <laughs> what is it? it? I think I had the one with. I think oh, I had the one with sausage. I I had the one with sausage. Is that that my? Or did you have sausage too? I think this is what I had. Oh yeah, you had the eggplant. I think that's what I had. Eggplant. <laughs> oh my god. It's like spread out. Very good. If you go on this trip, you have to love food. I got lettuce. <laughs> <laughs> this is like a sausage ravioli. Looks really hot, but. Mm. I just can't eat. Oh my god. The food here is amazing. It's so good. It's got like these little um, onions uh, on top. It's so delicious. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> we are the friends in the world. He's holding plates. Embrace the person who's getting the food. <laughs> so I'm glad this isn't like a whole art joke. That's what I was afraid he was going to give me. Artichoke is in season right now. What's the artichoke grow on? I mean, we are meeting in one and a half hour at the end of the main street, right? I will put the meeting point in our group, so okay. if you have a network, you can see it on the, on the maps. But if you don't want to have coffee or dessert, just please, please feel free just to go outside and stroll around the city. You can do whatever you want, buy chocolate or have whatever you want. So we will take care of the lunch and uh, we will meet at quarter past four in the same square where we arrived to get the past wheelchair. Okay, just that you just feel free to do what you prefer. The film has changed locations. <laughs> what are you filming? We're filming a Dutch movie. Ah. It's coming on Netflix okay. in October. What's the name of it? The Dutchman. Inshallah, Bachelor. Is it Dutchman? Oh, the Dutch. Yeah, Dutch. So it's a, a movie or a series? A movie. Oh, okay. Awesome. Who's starring? <laughs> Who's that? Who are the stars? <laughs> Stay. He's sitting over there. Ah. Dutch actor. Oh, awesome. Okay, so they're filming The Dutchler, which is going to be on Netflix. It's a Dutch film. Uh, so look out for it on Netflix coming up. And this is this is the star here on the steps. <laughs> I tried to Google it, and I, you can't Google it. It keeps coming up with the Bachelor. So this is Tran, uh, the chocolate store that Michaela said that we should try but it looks like it might be closed for siesta time. Uh, this store is the one that started the chocolates with the love messages inside. Are we going in? Yeah. Okay. And with the hazelnut. Uh, this is a great place if it's, if it's cool weather, otherwise the chocolate will melt. <laughs> you can get a chocolate car. <gasps> what is that? A calculator? <laughs> yeah, it looks That's nice. crazy. <laughs> oh, 
idea what anything says. How big that chocolate is. <laughs> oh, I know. Uh, all right, so you're supposed to open this. I know I got it actually. I don't want to tear it because there's a message. Problem with the storage. What is, how to delete system data from my phone? It takes oh. 42 gigabytes. You know? How to? Hold on a second. I'm filming. <laughs> Okay, hold on. Where is the message? Is it like a fortune this cookie? This is the message. Here. Oh! See? Okay. <laughs> okay, hold on. I don't want to lose the chocolate. Okay, it's like a fortune cookie. Except you can't turn it on. Here, you help me with that. And what does it say? One look and in a kiss our feelings are released. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay, we're eating. Did you try? Did you buy Did I get the right one? I bought everything mm. for the kids, the whole thing. And I got two for them. Mmm. Mmm. It's good. <laughs> you can see the little hazel that's inside. Delicious. <laughs> okay, so now we're back at the street that we started on to get picked up. They're walking around with drinks. <laughs> you can also do a city tour. <laughs> hey, it is time to go. Luciana's here with our bus. The measure of love is to love without measure. Aww. They are very good at their messages and their chocolates. Uh, the village on the left side is Assisi. Michele oh, showed yeah. us already We're from Perugia. And Spello is on just the opposite side of the mountain so just behind the mountain is Spello where we are driving to I hope you all have names with our wonderful Raro tags on your backs so that we know where to deliver them and um, yeah uh, there is uh, an oil guy coming to the hotel and having us and having let, us letting taste a little bit of olive oil and um, we'll meet later for for dinner what i wanted to say is like the hotel has uh, a spa area with uh, a warm pool sauna and steam bus um, there's an extra charge for it for um, 90 minutes is 30 euros per person and uh, I will write you in our group chat what times we have available out of our schedule. Uh, of course, you are free to say I'm not taking part of some of our program and use the sauna also at other times. But to make it easier for you, I will write down which times you can book. They also have a massage lady. So you can also book massage and cosmetic treatments, I think. And um, if you need help with that booking, just let me know, I can be helpful about it. For a hike, but you can also just walk like 10 minutes and you will see the ruins of the Roman aqueduct uh, in Spello. And now you will see re the reason why Luciano wanted to change the bus. Yes. See the, uh, the arch in front of us? Uh, we will pass it just by five centimeters. <laughs> With a bus, big bus, we wouldn't be able to go through it. Uh, with enough speed, you could. <laughs> Those are beautiful flowers too. Now, Dreamer. It's beautiful. It's 
Bello. Get the sticker and then I will come here and make sure the right I don't remember exactly how many years, but I think this olive tree is like 800 years. <laughs> wow. Yeah, they get really, really old. <laughs> this is called Pastiglia. I'm in two, two, three, Valentina. And you have to put in the key for electric. This lovely, lovely room opens up into a closet. Oops. <laughs> and the bathroom. Europeans usually do have the little bidet next to the toilets, as we've seen in every hotel. And this is the shower. I haven't had conditioner at any hotels. I have just a shampoo that it looks like this might be the only liquid soap also. I give you some soaps here and you have a blow dryer mirror. <laughs> You have a little, you have a little desk, but um, it doesn't look like you have electric over there. And there is a fridge. Let's see. We have some shelves, a chair. This is very roomy. Hmm. And there's a couple of waters in the fridge. They do the electric up here. <laughs> they show you what the Wi-Fi is. Next to the bed, we have the same electric USB. It's lovely. And let me see <laughs> what my view is. Oh, it looks like. I have, let's see. <laughs> oh, wow. I have a little patio. <laughs> Look how cute this is. want to walk around the property. Side of the bed you have more controls and electric. So the electric that I've been using uh, here is type L. So there is a spa here. This is, oh it's a little sewing kit. Okay. <laughs> there are no elevators here so stairs only.
My souvenirs. <laughs> Okay, some wine. Thank you. <laughs> I'll get some. A video of you cutting bread. <laughs> we make a fun taste of mm. extra virgin olive oil. All right. <laughs> Così. It's okay in the middle? Yes. Sure. Okay. Morning and uh, uh, that's we are. Yeah, and uh, the guys, the Massimo and the, the partner, they, they, um, they provide for us a little present for you guys. And uh, it's here, mm -hmm. one for a couple or for the singles. And it's going to be a day or olive oil, the jam, jam? Jam. Jam that they and made the and, uh, the and there are lentils, lentils. and uh, yeah, and uh, huh? this one is a present from Raro because Raro loves the part, the, the, the customers slash friends and uh, and that's it. <laughs> Don't forget Thank that you. because if you know, get that. It's all over there. We produce, uh, it's about uh, 20, 27, 27 years old, so uh, years ago, um, formed this company uh, by Massimo. Uh, this is the, the producer. Uh, this olive oil is uh, formed from three, three varieties Moraiolo, Frantoio, and Lecino. Okay, I yeah, it's formed by. You um, okay? The process is uh, um, under. Um, Cold press? Cold, cold press, yeah. Mm, that's um, really strong. The, the low temperature. Mm. Yeah. So they, um, they uh, press the olives with a cold pressure uh, procedure. Mm. It's strong. Okay. Okay. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. What are you doing? Just keep doing it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Hello, Sapphire. It's like sunset, beautiful colors. It's dinner time. We are in Spello and we're walking through Spello for the first time to find our restaurant. Such a cute little village. It's beautiful. Who is coming? Who is So there's not a lot of room for cars in here. <laughs> know, what is wrong with me? <laughs> I don't know why people are allowed to drive in here. It doesn't seem fair. <laughs> Cars try to go down there. I'm very confused. Uh oh, it's time. <laughs> hmm. So we're going towards the square where there's going to be more shops, more life. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> these, these streets are super, super small, so be careful. Don't walk in the center. I'm getting so confused. <laughs> every every corner of the picture. <laughs> the, the color in the sky looks so pretty this time of night. It's like um, I think we left the hotel around 7:30 or 7:45, so it's like. 7.45, 8 p.m. I love this art studio. Mm. Yeah. Wow, cool. <laughs> 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 
Ciao, siamo il gruppo di 15. Carpaccio today that's no. gorgeous, exactly what I love. Cheese plate. <laughs> so excited about this carpaccio. I can taste the difference between this one and this one. This is lighter and creamier. It's so delicious. Really fresh. <laughs> I don't know oh my god. <laughs> Perfect. I love it. Um, the flavor is amazing. They had the omelet with black truffles. That looks amazing. There's potatoes. They seem to do a lot of really good potatoes here. <laughs> so I had a bite of this cheese and the honey. So floral, like a really interesting taste. It's not a normal honey. Really interesting. But I love my carpaccio. I would definitely recommend my carpaccio. So he just butchered this right here and then he put it up on top of the fire. That's the pigeon. Sorry. It's like it's cute. That's it. <laughs> Everybody's beef has looked so good here. Welcome, We did a good job. I was pigeon beef. So that's rare. <laughs> Okay. Can you tell if I see it? I see it. They can make I love that they cook it on the fire. You can like totally taste the fire grilled. It's really yummy. Get your grandpa. Get your grandpa. Get your grandpa. Woo, cheers. That's Oh, that is my chocolate souffle. That's okay, you can get it too. Chantilly cream. Look at how molten that is. Yummy. Oh my gosh. Look at it running out. This is my favorite thing in the world. So it's not a chocolate souffle, let me just say. It is a molten cake. Still delicious. I probably have chocolate all over me. Really yummy. We're home. Yeah, I know. That's my... That's at the bottom of the... Good morning. We have a late start today. 11.30, we're meeting for our first tour, so 
I am gonna go check out the hotel breakfast. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It was breakfast time. Hi. Bonjour. Ooh. Juices. <coughs> Cheese and prosciutto. Cappuccino machine. It's all milk. <laughs> Do you sleep tonight or last night? I did a little bit. <laughs> so I tried the cafe um, macchiato chocolate. Oh, that just gives me a little tiny thing. <laughs> An American is like your average black coffee. The sounds of the birds woke me up this morning. Beautiful way to wake up. <laughs> so this room, by the way, has no windows. It's just that door and it has like um, dark shutters on it. So it's uh, pretty dark in the room at night. It's a beautiful day in Spellow. <laughs> It is so picturesque here. It's just perfection and it's silent except for all of the chirping birds. God, it's so beautiful. <laughs> Love it here, Spello. <laughs> is that an electric charger? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. You don't want to get water. Oh, where are we going? <laughs> Today we are going to Brasilia mm. in a tiny little town, I mean tiny, <laughs> um, they're very well known for their legumes, uh, chiche, mm. um, which is um, like a chickpea, so we're going to go have a soup de la montagne, which is soup of the mountains, which is oh. all the beans and things. Um, there's also a beautiful little babbling brook. A lot of the area gets their water through that area. So you see like a, a wheel and the, the little brook runs directly through the city. The little bridge is very adorable. Um, after that, we're going to do a lovely wine tasting um, at Palo Bella. And then we're going to head back here for some relaxation and then explore Spello a little more. All right. That's, That's the agenda. Awesome. She's been talking nonstop about bean soup, so. It's delicious. I've been dreaming about this soup. Before, so you know, I've got the inside scoop on the soup. <laughs> Cute little bus. So, what's great about these little tours really small, cute buses, <laughs> adorable coordinators, <laughs> entrance to the villa. So you can go inside and take a walk into the gardens, it's free entrance. It's very lovely and very quiet. Yeah. What's the name of it again? Villa Fidelia. And uh, we are driving to Brasilia today. It's a really, really little village. Um, I would say it's probably even smaller than Civita di Bagnoreggio. <laughs> and, uh, but it's so picturesque. It's called Borgo delle Acque. That means 
the watery village. There is some water all around the place, a wind, um, a water mill, and little cute shops. We're gonna have lunch in the middle of the village in a restaurant. We'll probably be able to see outside because the weather is gonna be nice today and have time for a little walk around um, before we head to our wine tasting in the afternoon. Um, it's, uh, if anyone wants to go back to the hotel after lunch, that's also no problem. Just tell us and we'll organize Luciano to bring you back to the hotel if you need some more rest. Lentils. Col Fiorito is the most famous place for lentils in Italy. And they also grow um, some special red skin potatoes here, which are perfect to do gnocchi. And in these uh, rivers, they do some uh, natural um, uh, farming of trout. And they export them also in other parts of Italy. So it's kind of uh, aqua farming, but on the natural river. Okay, we're here. I couldn't. Should I go get it? <laughs> they want. They want to give me a cheese. <laughs> Grazie. Mm. Fresh cheese. Mm. Mm. <laughs> ah no 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 capisco. <laughs> I'll have one of those. <laughs> They have a hot dog. <laughs> that sausage. <laughs> Salami. today but it's still jacket weather sweater weather <laughs> we're in april so don't think april is beach weather here it is not <laughs> oh that is awesome Oh my gosh, the smell of leather in here. <laughs> designs all this leather also he's not just a beautiful guitar player <laughs> These are like, um, they keep these houses like little museums for you to look into. It looks like this was looms, textiles, 
Perhaps. <laughs> hmm. Like a fairy tale, like a storybook little village. It's a cute little village. I can't wait for lunch. <laughs> mm. So this leather, the black and red leather is what they use on Ferrari seats. It's the best leather. Yeah. Okay, yo, son Gianni. E la mia pagina Facebook e Instagram è Poi Art Calzoleria, io mi occupo di, di artigianato, faccio dalle scarpe ai bracciali, anche su disegno del cliente. E sono di qua, sono di Rasiglia. Eh, ho in ogni uno che fa il falegname, uno che fa il calzolaio e io lavoro sia in legno che in cuoio, per passione. E... E in più suono un po' la chitarra. Grazie. La mia pagina appunto è Cuoi Arte Calzoleria. E... Niente, cerco di realizzare tutto quello che si può. <laughs> Grazie. Grazie a voi. I didn't understand a word of that. <laughs> part of his family is carpenter, a part of his ah. family is shoemaker, ah. and he works leather in every kind of different... Uh, La chitarra l'ho realizzata io, l'ho costruita io. Oh, e he even built his guitar by himself. I know, it's beautiful. Tell him I think it's beautiful. Ha detto che è bellissimo. <laughs> Grazie. Yes. E ne ho realizzata anche una elettrica che suono qua. Di solito la porto su dal primo maggio, mm -hmm. eh, perché per via di un, dell'umidità. Ah, Quella è una chitarra fatta in noce nazionale e non ne esistono un granché perché in noce nazionale non hanno fatti gli strumenti. Io l'ho realizzata e... Un paio d'anni fa mi hanno offerto 5.000 euro per quella chitarra e non glielo ho dato. <laughs> he said he yeah, even built an ele electric guitar. He oh. has it in the store like in summer because in winter it's too musty. Ah. And he said it's like one of a kind. It was ah. offered a couple of years ago 5.000 euros for that and he didn't, he didn't sell it. Because ah. it's a baby. Oh, he should make another. <laughs> <laughs> Perché è, un, è parecchio unica appunto, perché la noce anche l'avevo tagliata io, è una noce del posto. The material, he cut the tree, it's a nut, walnut tree, he cut the tree and he made out of that tree his guitar. So it's like wow. really... E il suono è molto, è molto bello perché comunque è la, la costruzione via è stata rispettata secondo degli standard. So Krista, you bought this this belt? No, this no. Mine. Oh, oh, Natalie's yes. belt. Oh. I'm gonna get one very similar, I think. I like so, the so, color. So nice that you can it's gonna fit on you and put yeah. the holes wherever you need them. Yeah. We we might need uh, some couple of extra holes for if yeah. we keep on eating like uh. this. Yes. <laughs> There are some who made back here that aren't cut yet, um, like uh, holes made, but I don't ever wear belts. I want to one of these.
<laughs> this is totally custom made leather belts. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, like, whatever he says. <laughs> oh, he likes it. Okay. And we'll make some extra. <laughs> <Okay. after. laughs> So this is super cool, and he's obviously the most popular one in our group. <laughs> oh, you can get shoes. Mm. Wow, leather frau, that's what he's called. Leather frau, that's the Ferrari leather. You can get custom made whatever you want here. Oh. I could use some new sandals. <laughs> bow ties. Oh, bow ties and leather. Awesome. And rings, bracelets, hair bands. Cool. Hi, puppy. Hi. Oh. <laughs> that this place is under construction that we're having lunch today it is super cute rocks right on the brook table with the see-through bottom. <laughs> mm. <laughs> so everybody is going to get one of these plates. And then there's going to be pasta and a little wine because we're going to a winery after. I think it's uh, the liver, zucchini, uh, prosciutto, salami. I'm not quite sure of everything. All right, there's a lot of things to taste here. I'm going to start with the, the liver. It's like a chopped liver, but they do it more of a, like a mushed liver. All right, what do you do? <laughs> Just like <laughs> The polenta is more. <laughs> mm. That's really tasty. I like that one. <laughs> and then there is this like focaccia stuffed with vegetables. Basically, it's yes, uh, like a an omelette. Yeah. 
Everything's delicious. This is like an instant pasta starter before we have the pasta. Yeah. And you're already filled out. Of the lentils? Lentils, yeah. Local lentils. Is that the proprietor? This is the famous Zupa. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. The, the relation of the salary and cost. Ah, what is the salary? I think like. So how that's do you why. Live? That's why young people live at their parents' homes because you ah. cannot. You cannot pay a rent in a big city if you are by yourself. Mm. You have to share the apartment or you have to... That's I, I don't know why I thought it uh, Italy, like salaries are uh, higher than Spain. I think they are, no? Because I think that's pretty like, similar. I mean, yeah, in Spain probably the most common is around that. The, but yeah, like average officially is one. 0.5 Yeah, but it's still. Yeah, and if you are in a city. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> chef! Astilio. Astilio. Chef. Bellissimo, where is it? Bellissimo. <laughs> See. So these these coffees are called Americanos here, the black. Otherwise, they give you the little cappuccino espresso shots. So, um, Down the main street, then on the left, there is the parking lot where we when we were dropped. <laughs> <laughs> you just follow the smell of the cheese and the little yeah. the truck, and then you find our bus driver. Oh, that's right, the cheese person. I think that lunch we just had was like 25 euros a person, if I can read this correctly. And tall tree. That was a super cute little village. Great stuff. Delicious lunch. Right to the wine tasting ahead in case anyone needs a nap. <laughs> it's a good time to do it. If anyone uh, does not want to go to the wine tasting, just tell us when we arrive there and then we'll take our transportation back to the hotel.
hear of anyone who wants to go back to the hotel. So we assume we're all staying together. <laughs> I can't see. Okay. I went up to go to the restroom, but I'll take some videos on the way. <laughs> oh, is it? We're seeing an artichoke plant. That is so cool. You guarded hijerbity. Wow. dedicated to fermentation of wine in, into the stainless steel tanks. The fermentation are spontaneous, uh, are spontaneous without emissions, without any control, without temperature control. And for us, it's very important to extract from the steams, from the berries, the real uh, taste of gravy. And we want to keep uh, this uh, during the aging. Uh, in fact, every, every year our wines are different and are the expression of the season, of the vintage. Okay. And uh, the skin contact, the maturation, is very important for us and uh, it is so long. Uh, for example, skin contact for the white wines is about 20-25 30 days or more and the same for the red wines skin contact uh, during about 40 50 60 days it depends of vintage it depends of kind of, of, of grape for example uh, in this area we uh, we grow sagrantino do you know sagrantino yes, yes. sagrantino is the typical grape of montefalco and we we make two different kind of wine, dry and sweet. For the sweet, it's necessary operation. In the first floor, we have a dry room, uh, and uh, in, in, in that, uh, we dry the grapes naturally without forza. We use just the natural breeze. And uh, for the dry wine, uh, this operation is not necessary but immediately we squeeze the, ba the berries and uh, no more. After the fermentation, we press uh, the skins with this machine. This machine is a press. It's a solution of the old press by hand. No? Mm -hmm. This one is a evolution. It's modern, it's completely automatic. We press uh, the skins after the fermentation and we extract a wine very strong, very mm, dark with so much tannin and color. And finally we mix it with the original all together. And after this operation begin the uh, aging uh, of wine uh, in stainless steel or directly into the boat. And now we go in downstairs to see the barrels. Yes, it's possible to, to get a white wine from red grape. Yeah, but you cannot get this a red wine from a juice without the skins. Yes, uh, during this long road uh, into, the, into the soil, uh, different are not warming or cooling. Mm -hmm. And finally, the air enter from that space. <coughs> okay. And uh, this is a sort of natural air condition. Mm -hmm. you, for the one who is still going down the stairs, the um, son of the owner, uh, Giampiero Bea, is an architect and he planned this 
these rooms. So it's all natural materials like travertine, travertine and wood and concepted to be like a natural cave. Also this cooling and heating system with mm. the, just with the air coming from the outside and going in here. So that's all meant to be exactly like this. Barrels for aging the wine. And uh, we don't use French oak, but only Slovenian oak. What kind? Slovenian oak, yes. Because uh, it's the nickname of the whole owner <laughs> of the land. Okay. So he was a boring guy, a small boring guy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but uh, um, the nickname with different meanings. Yes. We bottle it for three, four, five days, uh, one time every year, and finally we stock the bottles in that boxes for some year, uh, two, three, <coughs> and finally you. we export this in everywhere, uh, about 70% in the United States, another 5 in Japan, and the rest in Italy, Europe, etc. No, abbiamo, abbiamo, no, no, abbiamo, rivolgiamo una vita privata. No, I was getting you doing that. <laughs> Stone. Very good to, to get a natural regulation of temperature inside. Mm. Oh. Well, <laughs> I need. Ooh, what's this? <laughs> it's like Jenga. <laughs> Finally, we open the windows 
because the windows are starting to create a number of breeze. Uh, that, uh, those, for example, are oriented in north direction and uh, those in south. And uh, if we open, you can feel a natural breeze. And this process during about three or four months uh, from October until the end of January. Yeah. And after we crashing the graves and we get the most. And it remains naturally. So it's great from last uh, no, uh, harvest or they are like four years old just for this Yes, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> It's fine. <laughs> it will not be possible to uh, taste. Uh, are four different years. Oh, okay. 2022, oh. 1, 0, 19. Oh. Oh. <laughs> and this is the sweet? Yes, get sweet to, to get the sweet second team. Mm. Sixty September Okay. <laughs> they said I could taste. Mm. 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 It's good. Mm, so sweet. I just love the design of this place. It's amazingly beautiful. Oh, I guess we're doing our tasting now. All right, so they, they gave us two wines, a little book. <laughs> I think this is, these are the ones we're getting. Oh, this is your building? Oh, yes. yes. Bellissima. Yes. Uh, this is, uh, is our, really our, our um, work, which we do any day. I combine here my passion, to be passion, work on the wine, and uh, also the design building, because I study for, uh, for design building, so I'm an architect. Underground is a totally my idea because we needed to object to some condition for the town hall, the commission, but inside is a totally my uh, any part is my my project, good or bad is mine. I uh, give you my text for Kenya. I hope you are like to testing or two, you understand, you have good experience. Sorry for my English because I know it's perfect, it's just sufficient. <laughs> But uh, I hope what you will, will, will have, we can have the possibility also to, to try to buy also in the US because we export a lot of US. Oh my gosh, it smells so good out here. Uh, this wine is very particular. It's not the normal white wine you drink for aperitif or uh, uh, I say for the people or you like it or you don't like it <laughs> because the divide the people is a white wine is possible to stop a uh, long uh, time uh, if you think uh, around one month ago we opened one bottle for vintage 2004 and is uh, fantastic <laughs> Can I see the label? Yeah, grazie. This is the wine we're tasting. Yeah.
tasting is a San Valentino. It's our yeah. basic wine. Uh, in this case, uh, this particular vintage is uh, possible to be a DOC wine, but Mr. Bear decided to don't ask for the DOC. Is a 70% of the Sangiovese, 15 Sacrantino, and 15 Montepulciano d'Abruzzo. Yes. The white wines, yeah. they are the sulfides, not the reds. The no. wines, uh, normally, the quantity of sulfides uh, maximum is uh, around 80 milligram liters. Uh, if you see in your own labels, they are mm -hmm. less than that. So you don't have to mm -hmm. add any to export to the US? Uh, no, we don't have it. Uh, we have it uh, when it's not <laughs> I have a, usually have a hard time with the different flavors, but I think it's a good thing to this one. Mm -hmm. one. <clears throat> I'm glad to see you. This is the pepperello. Yes. And this is the uh, thing. Normally, is uh, right. The Sacrantino is a wine for uh, strong pasta with a sugo, uh, fat sugo, uh, meat, uh, lamb, especially uh, in Umbria, we use a lot of uh, white burr, and uh, this wine is good for this place. But it's possible with the pagliaro to arrive to the dessert. Thank you. Sweeter wine, and for so that, we're supposed to use the cheese. Which is pairing also. That was good, I like that pairing. So, um, the clam jam inside the crostata. Very good. Mm. This is the next one. It's not good because uh, this wine is not a Pinsanto. <laughs> it's different. This one is for the cheese. <laughs> mm. I like this one. <laughs> I love sweet. Eh, a differenza di altri passetti, questo si deve sentire che è un vino. Non deve. Se parliamo di altri passiti forse più conosciuti, di pantelleria, così, sono tanto dolci. That's interesting. Uh, one thing, uh, this wine... Yeah, uh, did you eat the cheese with it? Sweet, it's good, and it's right. So, so when you eat the cheese, the parmesan is like a salty, kind of dry taste, and with the sweet wine, it works really well. Don't laugh at me. <laughs> <laughs> you think I'm just educating you on my wine tasting? <laughs> Yeah. 
because uh, we try to learn that, but especially it's not possible to dry in the, uh, on the plants uh, because the, uh, this uh, really don't resist. Uh, when it is beginning, for example, to rain, we stop to choose the grapes for the basilica. Why? Because they are full of water and they crush along the skins and they form more than... Okay, that was our fabulous day today. Now we have like an hour and a half before dinner, more food. Or just drinks. <laughs> or just drinks. <laughs> a little espresso maybe. It's so picturesque here. Well, I came back into my room today and they had this door open. So I guess you can move the shutters. So you do have a window. This is a completely different area on this side. <laughs> We're going downstairs. <laughs> oh, this is way bigger than I thought it was. <laughs> Grazie. It's an incredibly beautiful hot tub all to myself here. And So you can do a massage treatment here, a steam room, massage chairs, a shower, and of course a sauna. This side of the hotel is the pool when it's warm out. <laughs> it is not warm enough today. Uh, uh. 
beautiful that is. Ooh. Isn't that gorgeous? And Yama. Gorgeous. Oops. It's dinner time, so we are walking to dinner, which is what we do every night. Are we always going to walk to dinner? Mm. <laughs> so Pino, our fabulous host, mm. used to work at the embassy. Do you want Believe it or not. <laughs> do you want to talk about your embassy time? <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. <laughs> this little street, it's so beautiful. It's like you're in a fairy tale here. Maybe they live here. No, I remember. Now I told you that this is your favorite. It's amazing. Hi. <laughs> This is such a beautiful little village. This is Spello. I just want to make sure I remember where I am. <laughs> Spello. <laughs> uh, okay, this is dinner. La Locanda del Post Postilion. Cute little place. <laughs> oh, sorry. He already knows how to take care of me. <laughs> Thank you. Grilled vegetables as a side. That's the pork. Try to remember that is the veal. This grilled vegetable is delicious. This is the pork. The veal is really tender. She got some nice girls. Really interesting flavor. Delicious. Tiramisu. <laughs> Oh, that's not at all what I thought it was going to look like. <laughs> so that, what's it called? Millefoglie. Oh, millefoglie. No, memory. I need to do it. I think it's going to be crunchy. It is. <laughs> this is going to be hard. Yikes. <laughs> There's dog. There's a dog. Look at the dog. Watch it all the time. They go thank you for eating me right now. There's a person with that. That was tasty. Tony's pet tiger. Can I taste your tiramisu while I'm doing this? There's another dog. There's another dog. Tiramisu. Yummy. It's nightcap time. <laughs> <laughs> Marina bought some wine today. From our, is it from our wine tasting? Yes. Nice. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> okay. Or is that the wine did you bought to today? Yeah, today. Looking yeah. up to another beautiful morning in Spello. It's chilly. I've got, um, I have kind of, layering is really important here. So I've got a lighter kind of jacket and then a little fleece and underneath just um, a tank. So I am set no matter what. It's not really cold out, so I don't need my heavier jacket. Beautiful here, oh my gosh. Breakfast time. <laughs> Although I don't really have time, I don't think. Probably the same as yesterday. It 
This was actually really tasty yesterday. Really yummy bacon. Eggs. I always have cheese and antipasta too. Before, they also have cereal and bowls up here. And I guess you get your milk from the coffee machine. Here. Well, I was gonna sit out here on the patio and have my coffee, but it's a little wet from the night. I guess it, it got damp out here. <laughs> I'll do this instead. <laughs> this morning we're going to Gubbio, another really cute little village, and I uh, can't wait to show you. Follow along. Andiamo. <laughs> home sweet home. Airbus, so I have my USB. Yay. <laughs> we are going to the beautiful city of Gubbio and when I say beautiful it's going to be beautiful the weather looks like it's uh, fantastic and then we are going to have a lunch and after that we'll be back to the hotel for a free afternoon uh, in the Spello village. I would like to tell you a little story. I never met a woman that uh, she has uh, two beautiful girls, daughters, and four grandkids. Never married. Uh, never, uh, sorry, never had a baby. That one is my wife, and today is uh, her birth, um, anniversary, sorry. Today is uh, her anniversary of uh, marriage. <laughs> That's it. Her anniversary. <laughs> Tanti auguri, amo. Happy Some kind of uh, uh, shuffles, shuffles, I guess. Scaffold. And uh, I think they said that it's the biggest um, Christmas tree because those, that shuffle is with all lights, and during the Christmas time, they light them. That one on top of the mountain. <laughs> so we are here in Gubbio. And with Michaela again, a great guy. Do you know? So, quindi se ne prende un altro diventa troppo. Yes. No. Buongiorno. Sì, sì. No, i perugini in generale sì, però ogni tanto. What's the name? Martina. Uh, the restaurant? No. <laughs> uh, I'll ask. <laughs> You're Martina? Uh. <laughs> Yeah. 
Oh, ok. Se uno gli piace, certo. Beh, a Perugia parecchio, c'è cioè, un po' il posto dove stanno. Però no, a me piace. Eh, cioè, non... Mm. Can you tell them no milk in my Americana? Do they know? Okay. 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 Gubbio, Gubbio, uh, well, we saw two cities uh, uh, in the Umbrian, in the Etruscan area, two cities founded by the Etruscans, uh, Orvieto and Perugia. Now we are on the other side of the river, so we don't see the Etruscans anymore here. Here, the cities were founded by the Umbrians, a contemporary population that didn't reach the same level of technology, so we don't see very much of that period in Gubbio, in Assisi, in uh, Bevagna or wherever we go. So I will start to tell you the history of this place from the Roman period. Gubbio in the Roman period was quite important because it was along one of the most important roads called the Flaminia. Flaminia was going from Rome to the east coast, to the port of Fano, and it was going through Gubbio. So basically, if you wanted to go sailing west, east, you had to pass through Gubbio and go to the port on the other side of the country. It's like a coast to coast. And uh, Gubbio was a market, uh, a commercial city. Close to this square, uh, mm, well, on the other side of the wall, uh, uh, there is a big theater because the Romans were kind of smart people and they understood that if people have something to do and something to eat, they are happy and happy people are more controllable. A good way to keep such a big empire under control is not the only way they did it, but it's one of them. So each Roman city has a theater or an amphitheater. Uh, the Roman city was not up there, was here, because for the Romans was not a problem. Uh, they, they didn't need to go uphill because they were too powerful. Nobody attacked the Romans in this area. So the city that we will see today is the city of the Middle Ages. Okay? Here, the Romans, and over there in the Middle Ages, because in the Middle Ages they had to go there to be safe and protected. The Middle Ages, uh, Gubbio, until the 12th century was not an important city, but one moment changed the history. The victory against Perugia. Perugia organized an army to attack Gubbio. Gubbio was just a small town, Perugia was a big city. Nobody uh, was expecting Gubbio to win the war, but the army of Gubbio, led by the patron saint, the bishop of, the, of Gubbio, Santubaldo, that's now the, is the patron saint of the city, won the war. And, uh, and Gubbio started to believe in itself and they started to, to enlarge the city and to make uh, some of the most beautiful buildings that we see today. For example, the Consulis Palace over there and the big square that's one of, for me one of the most beautiful squares in Italy, the main square of Gubbio where we go later. And then it started to grow, to develop and it became uh, one of the most important settle in the Appen settlements in the Apennines. To celebrate uh, Santubaldo, the patron saint of the city, uh, here they do one of the most uh, beautiful and intense historical festivals uh, uh, in, uh, in Italy. That's the, we call it Corsa dei Ceri. They run, uh, they take, they carry three big sticks with the statues of the three patron saint of the city, Santubaldo, San Giorgio and Sant'Antonio, from the city to the church on top of the hill over there. <laughs> that, they run? They run like crazy. Consider that I, when I go there walking, uh, so a normal pace, uh, it, uh, I, uh, I need more or less 30 minutes from the consulate's palace to the, to the church. They do it in less than 10. They run like crazy. Later I will show you a picture because it's difficult to, to, to describe. Anyway, these statues are um, about 250 kilos each. They carry them in 10, 12 people together. Along the way they change, that's the most dangerous moment because they have to pass this thing to the, to the next because nobody, can, not even Olympic champions can do it alone. 
and uh, they run up there and it's not really a race because they always arrive in the same order Sant'Ubaldo, San Giorgio, Sant'Antonio. What Sant'Ubaldo can do if they arrive uh, uh, earlier, a lot earlier than the other, they can close the doors of the monastery, don't let the others in. They go there because over there there is the body of Sant'Ubaldo, the body, well, the bones of Sant'Ubaldo, and when they finish, it's the 15th of May, they leave the three cherry, this is the name, over there and they stay there until the next year. So now the cherry is there, but they are going to prepare the day. This day in Gubbio is uh, everything. Uh, they have uh, this festival in the blood. They did it every year for the last 900 years. They never missed one, not even during World War II. Gubbio is the biggest Christmas tree of the, <laughs> of the world. It's not really a Christmas tree. The, there is the shape of the Christmas tree on the, on the mountain with some colored uh, lights. The scaffolds on top of the mountains uh, is the star. Okay, so there is the star on top, there is the shape of a tree uh, along the, the hill, and then some lights. It's uh, kind of spectacular to see. It's very famous in Italy. Many, many people are coming to, to see it. What dates do they do that? They, they, they turn on the tree the, on uh, December 8th uh, until uh, January 10th, more or less, uh, depending on the, on the calendar. Oh, that's a wolf on his... It's a, it's a wolf. <laughs> uh, about St. Francis. Uh, St. Francis is the person that more than anyone else uh, changed the history here. Not only about religion, but also about art, about literature. He was really one of the most important characters of the Middle Ages. Uh, he based his philosophy in three points. Poverty. He said uh, uh, Jesus was poor, so why the popes and the bishops are full of money. Make the church something useful to help the poor people instead of something very rich. The second point is nature. Uh, churches are made by humans. The architecture of God is outside, so he was going to pray in uh, uh, forests, caves, uh, wherever he could find the nature. The third point is peace and brotherhood. In 1219 he traveled to the Middle East uh, to try to stop the Crusades. He went to meet the Muslims as a friend, not as an enemy like the Pope was doing. This is St. Francis in three points. Why Gubbio? Because St. Francis, uh, tomorrow I will tell you all the story in Assisi, but St. Francis when he was 24 years old had to leave the city of Assisi, where he was born, uh, because he was afraid to get killed uh, by his father. Uh, the first place he, he went was here, Gubbio, because here there was a family of friends that hosted him, uh, a family that he met during the war. Uh, the house uh, of this uh, family, Spadalonga, was right here. And now there is a church, because everywhere St. Francis made a step, there is a church. Mm, here in Umbres, like that. <laughs> everywhere he prayed, every, everywhere he met something, there is a church. Um, Francis and the wolf, uh, well, this is one of the most famous miracles uh, he made uh, when he came here. There was a wolf uh, that was very aggressive, uh, was uh, killing the animals of the shepherds, uh, was scary. So St. Francis uh, spoke with this wolf because there are many miracles with animals involved in St. Francis' life and convinced the wolf to be kind and good. <laughs> and the people started to feed him so this wolf became a friend of the population of course behind every miracle there is a story so many people think that this wolf actually was a, a person and he spoke with this person uh, that was probably bad and he mm. uh, he became a good person that's mm, more well, I don't know, I want to tell you, I want to describe you St. Francis more as a human being, as a person, and I want to give you an historical version of St. Francis tomorrow. Anyway, they made a church here. We can just have a look, a quick look inside. It's a nice church, it's a nice Gothic church of the 14th century. It's always worth to put a look inside. Today we are going to see only this one and the cathedral, but it's not the cathedral of Orvieto, so we will not stay an hour here. <laughs>
caschi il mondo guarda se, se, guarda se riuscite è un'esperienza un incredibile è una di quelle esperienze che non si dimenticano e si riaguri No. <laughs> because the village uh, is, uh, in my opinion, the, the best preserved medieval town in, uh, in Umbria, for sure. Uh, I love it, uh, because it's like uh, a Sisi, but less touristy. <laughs> I like it a lot, so we will go through the little streets, we will explore. <laughs> With this tongue, yeah, I can see you. Allora, oggi facciamo un bel giro. Sai che non che hanno quella porticina It smells really good in here. Mm. <laughs> Because there is the cresceria, a typical plate of Gubbio is a mm. flat bread filled with, well, anything you want. <laughs> here there is a picture of the festival just to... Uh. Gelato. <laughs> I was going to try to get in there, but I don't think I'm tall enough. upper nines so the, the weather is always cold here a little bit cooler than the other places the Roman road uh, the Flaminia was passing through Gubbio is still passing through Gubbio because we still use that road and then uh, it turns uh, it, uh, east through the upper nines there is a tunnel a small tunnel that the Romans made to pass the mountains It's called the Passo del Furlo and then it goes to the other side and reach the east coast on mm. the other side. Roman roads, so we still use them a lot. This region is the region of Saints. St. Francis, St. Clair, St. Benedict, St. Tarita, St. Valentine, all from, all from here. I don't know what inspired all these people, maybe the nature, maybe the green uh, nature of, this, of, of Umbria. St. Benedict made the difference a lot, uh, all these monasteries, all these religious settlements all over. There are lots of hotels in this area if you want to stay in Gubbio. And the roads are not flat, cobblestone, so you need good walking shoes. <laughs> to tell you, but I like the, the, the views. <laughs> Sun is coming. <laughs> Yay.
in my favorite streets, but uh, really everywhere you go also later, if you want to get lost a little bit, you won't find uh, uh, bad spots in Gubbio. Now we are in the lower part of the city. To make a city on top of the hill, uh, there was only one way, make terraces like this. So Gubbio is built on different levels, like Assisi, Assisi is the same thing. Uh, because the, the mountain uh, is very steep here. So you will see that we will go from one level to the second level until we reach the top. We will climb a little bit today. Seven, eight, nine hundred years old. All of they were not making city plans. Uh, that's why the, the medieval cities are so complicated because there is not really a way to build them. I build my house here because I like it, because my friend is living here. I, li I want to live next to you. And the result is a labyrinth. Mm. And all the cities here are more or less like this, but Gubbio more. <laughs> also, you have to consider a town like this, like a big fortress, no? like a castle. Uh, you call them Bocca di Leone. And me. So you could be here on a big bus tour. <laughs> <laughs> or you could be here with Raro with just a few people. It's so much more pleasant and be more beautiful. You're not in a crowd. <laughs> of course, I'll book you the big bus tour if, you th if you'd like that, though. <laughs> Palm trees in here. Interesting because you can see the houses on different levels uh, with the Consolis Palace on top. Of course, the most important building in Assis, in uh, Gubbio. Well, Gu Gubbio is one of the few places, probably in Italy, where the most important monument is not a church. <laughs> uh, well, you probably don't know this TV show, but probably you do. Don Matteo. I don't know if you're so yes, far. I don't. Right. You love it. <laughs> okay. It's a little no, 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 yeah, everybody likes it in Italy, uh, so... <laughs> Don Matteo, because Don Matteo, the first uh, six or seven uh, seasons were uh, filmed here in Gubbio, and the next oh. were filmed in Spoleto. Uh, anyway, I, I mentioned Don Matteo here because this is his church, so oh. uh, San Giovanni Battista. The outside is here, it's filmed here, but inside is another church. <laughs> <laughs> Miracle of uh, movies. <laughs> So the next trip will be in Sicily, no? <laughs> Cute Italian fashion. Look, look at this. Aww. This is the art. Oh, this is the, the motel that they were just speaking about that's filmed here. Zati. That looks nice. <laughs> We're going to be eating lunch here today mm -hmm. at Taver Taverna del Lupo, I think. <laughs> Ristorante Tipico Ugubino. E Ugubino <laughs> means from Gubbio. Oh, okay. If you are from Gubbio, you are an Eugubino. Ah. So this is a, a really okay. slow Venice paced like city tour, for, uh, just well, walking they make slowly them in glass so it's not hard to Venice do, but it is glass steep. Yeah. And then <laughs> in Assisi there are lots of uh, Harry Potter like things uh, because Assisi is a... Uh, now they turn uh, around uh, the center of the main square three times before starting hmm. running <laughs> so Gu there is not open pa open space that's flat here it's all steep and that's why they made uh, these four arches they made them to hold the terrace above, and the terrace above is the main square of Gubbio, that's where we're going now. 
they built it uh, like this uh, to flatten the, the mountain. That's why the arch is. Underneath, uh, there are some of the taverns uh, during the festival where they have their lunch, dinner. The reason why uh, this square is one of my favorites, uh, it's personal taste. It doesn't mean that it must be your favorite or something. But I like it a lot because it's, um, it's closed only on three sides. Uh, so you have uh, buildings, 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 and the sky. So it's different. It's a big terrace. The other squares are uh, closed. This one is open. It's very nice, very beautiful. But imagine how difficult it was to build something like this uh, with the tools of the Middle Ages uh, mm. and how much work. We are uh, around uh, the beginning of the 12th century here, 900 years ago. <laughs> there is an exhibition of the Leonardo da Vinci's oh. machineries projects. Oh, oh cool. <laughs> <laughs> so they have a Leonardo da Vinci exhibit of his um, machinery. Okay, I think we're at the top now. <laughs> It's a little bit of a check up, but it's not too bad. Beautiful. <laughs> Grand. I love it. Just love it. <laughs> Palazzo dei Consoli. Now it's a museum. Inside uh, there are uh, seven uh, uh, bronze pieces with description that help the archaeologists to understand the language of the pre-Roman civilization. Tavole Cubine. On this side uh, there is the town hall. And on top of the hill, there is the palace of Federico da Montefeltro, Duke of Urbino. For a while in the Renaissance, Gubbio was under the control of the city of Urbino and the family of Montefeltro. And from here, you can see the Church of St. Francis where we started. Over there, the big square, the market, and the lower part of Gubbio. <laughs> from one day to another. <coughs> no, uh, okay, Fr they love the people here because uh, they have this uh, strong character. They love uh, what they do and they, they are very proud of the place where they live. Okay, now we reach the top of the city. We keep walking, we keep climbing a little bit. 11.30. We reach the cathedral that's on top of the city and then we start going down, going back to the lower part. We're going all the way to the top? No, no, no. Oh. <laughs> like, what? Well, if you want, but I'm not coming with you. <laughs> no, we are going uh, to the cypress tree over there. Ah, okay. Mm. The cathedral is that one, the, the, the big bell tower ah. on the right. But you, there's a cable car, funicular, that there you can take There is a funicular up? you can take all the way. Don't, don't use the funicular if you are afraid of heights because it's a, it's a very old one mm. and it's made with buckets like, oh, like this. Like you, you have to go alone or maximum two people for each bucket oh. and it's kind of scary if you... Like a hot air balloon kind of? Yeah, like that one, but it's a cable oh. thing. Okay. Uh, well, it's something. <laughs> Giorgio. So there is a hotel up here, Hotel de Col uh, Relay. They always arrive in the same order. Santubaldo. Yes. This is the hotel. Under. Sure, that's a fabulous place to stay. <laughs> oh, hi, puppies. <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay, that's a little steep. <laughs> Posso farle entrare? Mamma mia, ma neanche me le dici. Vai tranquillo. <ride> Grazie. Buongiorno a tutti. Buongiorno. Grazie. Eh, oh, buongiorno. Buongiorno. Oh. <ride> I love this place. For you, I need you. 20,000 liters of wine. Enough for the canonici, the religious of here, yeah. who made all this wine, <laughs> always. <laughs> it was made at the end of the 15th century. It's all made in wood, so it's very complicated to bend the outside part. They did it with steam. <laughs> okay. This is a steep climb up. <laughs> it's cool. <laughs> Hmm. Good timing. Now we are on top. There. <laughs> we could go further, but we won't. <laughs> we, we could reach the Basilica of Sant'Ubaldo. This is the Cathedral of Gubbio. Uh, it's beautiful. I like it a lot. Uh, it's a strange kind of architecture. It's one nave with 12 uh, Gothic arches uh, in a row. They are called Arco Diaframma. They are made to divide the church in 10 different uh, spaces. Uh, you will see the, um, the way they light it, the church is very nice, very beautiful. Diciamo che artisticamente Varis, Bishop of Gubbio. <laughs> this is the, the garden of the palace of Federico da Montefeltro. Montefeltro was a family, a signoria, like the Medici in Florence, uh, like the Sforza in Milan, like Estensi in Ferrara. Montefeltro was the signoria of Urbino. We are in the Renaissance. Federico da Montefeltro was born uh, close to here, in a castle in the hills, uh, behind these hills. Uh, and he built uh, a temporary residence here in Gubbio. We are not far from Urbino, and Gubbio was part of the properties of uh, Urbino. So the palace is above, and those are the gardens. Not so bad, no? Uh, the, the garden of Federico beautiful. da Montefeltro. You can see the good and the bad part of Gubbio. The good part is the historical city. The bad part uh, are, for, for example, the concrete factories over mm. there, but I mean, Gubbio is a city of 40,000 people, more or less, and many people work uh, or worked in the co two big uh, concrete factories. 7% of the Italian concrete is produced here in Gubbio. Most important economical activity. That's a lot of work. <laughs> my <laughs> my watch says that we did 5,000 steps. 5,000? 
I'm not even hungry for lunch still. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I feel it. I mean, except it's so steep. <laughs> Somebody doesn't want to go up to, to this way. Um, they can just wait at a cafe or something. Uh, you mean if there's a group? And yes. So, yeah, well, the, the best place to wait if you don't want to climb is uh, Piazza Quaranta Marti. That's where you arrive with the bus because ah. there, there is something, there are some bars, some places where you can see. If you just want to walk a little bit, you can reach uh, Piazza di Concert, Piazza Grande, the mm. big terrace. That's not too far. In Umbria, flat uh, is not a word. <laughs> No. <laughs> and some people just stayed at the hotel. So with Raro, if you don't want to do one of the activities, you just stay, go on your own for the day, do a different kind of tour. <laughs> Fountain of Bargello, the fountain of the crazy. You know, I was telling you that there is this legend of the people here being crazy. There is this legend. Of for a scientific re reason, <laughs> because there are the mountains here are rich in a mineral that say that turn people crazy, ah. and for a well traditional reason, the race, uh, the race is really a crazy thing. So all around the people think that the people are the most crazy people in uh, in, in Umbria. Uh, if you want, you can be one of them. You can get the license of uh, crazy of Gubbio. You just have to turn around. Uh, very fast, you have to run and three ah. times, three times around the fountain and then take some of the water and wet your face with the water of the fountain. But you have to do it with a person from Google in front of you, looking to you, because otherwise it's not valid, it's not real. Uh, you can do it unofficially, but you will never have the license. I'm not from Google, so I cannot help you in the institution as well. Yeah, of course, if you, if you ask them, uh, they will give you a piece of paper with a license of crazy men. I don't know exactly what they write on this piece of paper, and it will make you pay. Uh, you cost money to be uh, crazy. In an unofficial way, and uh, well, just run around the yeah, pot and wipe uh, like your face uh, with the water at the pot. The water is almost clean, so... Uh, <laughs> okay, so no. this is the license. Hey, are you ready to be crazy girls? Yes. Yes. Ready? Only women, why is only women? <laughs> <laughs> of course. All right, three times. Ready? Yes. Who's, <laughs> who's counting? Me, I'm counting. One. 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 I'm not going very fast. <laughs> Flip again. <laughs> Two. Two. <laughs> Proof I'm crazy. And three. Now and we're one. done. Now we splash. Now we splash. Now we are crazy. Yeah. The crazy of Gubbio. <laughs> okay, then we have to go get our license. Buongiorno. Buongiorno. Mi volete aspettare un secondo oh. perché io sto facendo una cosa tanto bella e siccome siete dentro una bottega d'arte così avete anche l'opportunità di vedere gli, gli artigiani che sono dell'Italia dove venite? Dagli Stati Uniti. Ecco, quindi gli artigiani italiani davvero sono patrimonio, eh, patrimonio dell'Italia e io sto facendo una piccola dedica per una laurea She's doing a little, de a little um, in dedication, no, it's like an uh, incision for uh, a um, um, magister, oh. like something graduating oh. for a magister, so you get a gift. Oh, we know the date and the name. Oh, oh that's la, nice. Keepsake. Arriva la tigiana artista per i nomi. Like this. Allora, these are the finished pieces. Is that like a card? Oh, no, no, adesso ci penso tutto io. Who owns the crazy license? All right. Allora, 
allora ci servono i nomi però magari mi li scrivete perché mm. se non sono eh? okay. dicevo, questa è la cosa che mi serve pronti dopo il nome preciso pronti a i n e y ok uno poi Krista ci ha una Ok, pronto? La L, giusto questa? L, L, L. L. ok. Un gibolo basta questo qua. Basta questo. E questa è quella che già ce l'ha dall'anno scorso, pensavo. Mm, bellissimo. Grazie. <ride> Lene, sei diventata matta, onoraria da legare il 24... 20, 23 Evviva! Crazy, are you officially crazy? Officially crazy! Good luck! Good luck! Ok, uno. Grazie. Oh, ok. Scusa. Adesso si prepara. Grazie. Ok. Forse le pago tutte io. Sono due ricordi, stai. It is crazy. Yeah. That was awesome. Beautiful shop. The kids want to do it. <laughs> All right, so this is, here we go. Gypsy Bottega Arts Gubbio. <laughs> School groups, it's crazy. <laughs> so, up here to the right, Taverna del Lupo. I will also put it in our group to so make sure we oh. uh, find it in one hour. Yeah. So I mean at one, right? At yeah. one o'clock. 1.15. 1.15? Okay. Yeah. And uh, when I work free, then we are going to have a lunch. And if you guys forgot something else or whatever, we can have another hour. We'll see. Bye. Sala interna. <laughs> okay, so we're at San Martina bar, not Sala interna. <laughs> we're just gonna get a drink, like a coffee, while we're waiting for lunch. Oh, look at that beautiful cold drink I got. And what is that? What did you order? Oh, it's beautiful. Yes. So. Oh, <laughs> yeah, let's not do that on the video. <laughs> oh. oh, I love that. <laughs> this is so good, yummy. <laughs> okay. We found it. <laughs> we used Google Maps to get here. <laughs> the window and thought that was so cute. Lunch time. Let's see. There you go. Okay. I need to take my body to pull off. She's so it's beautiful in here. <laughs> For our first dish we have the Maltagliati Ragù Chianina. Maltagliati is a, a um, bread uh, broken wrong or whatever pasta with the ragu di chianina. Chianina is a special cow that is just close by Tos uh, south of Toscany and here. Or you can have a lasagna with oh. um, uh, con ra with ragu. Ragu? No. Anyway. <laughs> or, you should fire her. <laughs> yeah. Or you can, have, you can have a tagliata with a pistachio or without pistachio. Or guanciola. Guanciola is the jar of... Uh, uh, no, no. This, this case is vitello. Veal. Veal. Veal cheek. And of course, a potato uh, salad or greens. Mm. 
No, who wants a mantagliati? Mantagliati with the chianina. Okay, what well, the second one was the lasagna. Mm. So I'm getting the first one. Yeah. <laughs> oh, salad, uh, the greens for me. Greens? Yeah. You want this one? I, it's good. I'm good. Oh, grazie. What is that? Okay. I have no idea what this is. So, it's like really it's vocation. It's like it can motivate people. But it's so tasty. Lost their job to get. It's more like a pancake. It's on. What is this on? It's delicious. I guess it's fried bread. I think it's a dough. Delicious. Something from here. But they don't need uh, Yeah, you don't need the dishes because you gotta eat by, it's delicious. by your hand. Yeah, so it's, it's fried bread dough. Pure bread, they call it. Mm. Like a funnel cake. <laughs> No. Delicious. Amazing. The greens are so good, I almost ate all of them. Mm. But I'm so excited. My first lasagna of this trip. <laughs> and it has truffles. A white sauce. It's a white sauce. Mm. Really delicious. I love it. Yeah. Oh my goodness. <laughs> you can't wait. Oh, is yours prettier than mine? It appears to be. The strawberry is a little more exposed. Oh! So it is. It's hard shell. Is it an ice cream? I'm thinking Tim is like a cold mousse, like a frozen oh. mousse. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> mm. Do you guys want to try a bite? Mm. No? I'm sure she will. You want to? Mm -hmm. Sure. Mm. You know what it reminds me of? Dairy Queen. When you have the ice cream and you dip it in the chocolate, <laughs> and there's a chocolate shell. Thank you. But it's, of course, so much better. Is that chantilly cream? Damn it! I love it. <laughs> that was bank track. <laughs> I know. I have to get the biceps in there. <laughs> Give me a flex with the. <laughs> I'm a Captain America. <laughs> Tina time. <laughs> what is that? Oh, let me check. Mm. How cute is that? <laughs> so that's like the crazy. What's it called? Amaro Matto. Amaro Matto. It's for the crazy city. Oh, that's kind of tasty. Oh, exactly. Yes. Oh! <laughs> oh! Oh! Delicioso! Yes! We're kind of here for us already. So the cool kids are, are waiting for everyone here. Yeah. <laughs> what I got? More dessert. How <laughs> cute! This is the Nutella. This thing. So you didn't get your watch either. Uh, oh. Which is kind of a shame because he also had a second watch there that was um, a little more, I'll call it business professional. It was a solid silver face, it's still a leather band. It wasn't all, all steel, but um, it was pretty sharp. But I wanted to see what he has asked for because I was willing to make a deal for both watches. Oh, there you go. I, I have a feeling we're going to find some other watch stores yeah. along the way. But it was a much smaller watch, so it wasn't exactly what I was looking for. So that's uh. kind of my concern is this place, this guy just happened to be selling. 
couple of them watching that. That you really want. Yeah, that is amazing. Donne motori gioie dolori. That means fem uh, female women and motors and jeans. There are happiness on uh, the other side. We have a van now it's broken the air conditioning. Oh. That means they're going to change for tomorrow. Now we can take off our tops, right, Amol? <laughs> ah. <laughs> Everybody except my daughter. <laughs> anyway, now we are going back to the, back to Spello. We're going to have a free time today, a little bit, a few hours. Yeah. I hope you enjoy the Gupio. Yeah. And uh, I have a really good scoop uh -oh. because it's also a good scoop for me. Uh, today we have a, a dinner, pizza and beer around uh, 7.45, 8. And um, my wife, since it is uh, her anniversary, <laughs> she says she wants to pay a drink for us, me included. <laughs> That means she's happy with me. <laughs> and we can meet at the uh, 6th Rury down to the first bar, going down to the right, going down to the village in uh, Spello. There is a bar on the corner. It's the first bar. We can meet uh, there for a drink and then we go um, to, the to the pizzeria. Yeah, to the pizzeria and Amor, don't forget your wallet as usual, okay? <laughs> All right. Now we have a more or less one hour drive. Amor, when is your pension coming? Uh, never. <laughs> if I stop at Eats, I have to have a conversation with Amor. Amor, there's a water microphone. Look. <laughs> hello, hello, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Finally feels great here. <laughs> it's warm, beautiful. It smells so good with those lavender flowers. So tonight, because it is Christian Pino's anniversary, we're gonna go have drinks before dinner. And the dinner tonight is pizza and beer. <laughs> totally different, so I'm kind of looking forward to that. <laughs> Artuya. <laughs> some goodies over. I don't know what that is. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but I knew that you you join us with the router because it wasn't the hour anniversary. It's not only you, it's our part. And thank you very much. I don't love you anymore. You, because you already paid. Uh. The drink is supposed to be on us. But you can have another drink on us. <laughs> and Michele, yeah, we love it. We do love it. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's very good. Aperol Spritz. What I have today. Yummy. Oh. oh, it's just a gin and tonic in a black <laughs> glass. Just really hell, of a, hell of a gin and tonic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. Look at that. The finest gin tonic of discovery. <laughs> I missed everybody's chin chin. Chin chin with me. <laughs> chin chin with me. Chin chin. <laughs> <laughs> Next stop, pizza and beer for <laughs> for dinner. Wow, look at this beautiful view. <laughs> so green. <laughs> Hi, doggy. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I won't do any shopping for summer in Germany. Do we lose them? <laughs> no, we're not losing. Them. Get it, get it, get it. <laughs> yeah, we're coming. <laughs> 
Do it so fast, dog. You better go down the stairs. Um, oh, you know, you know, you know. Do it so fast. What? Oh, you know, so. Yeah, we have to go down this way. <laughs> well, that's pretty. It's like first one in the way. No. I love this time of night with the colors. Everything is so perfect. Look at that sunset. I think nice enough. I think it's really, really, really nice. Okay. Like tomorrow we will go back. So we we'll discover this one. We're outside the walls, so we're in the new part of Spello. So we are not gonna have any <laughs> This is a big kitty. Hi kitty. Hi. Hi. <laughs> so he likes to compare this one, my debutante day, to the street urchin. Take care of me. So there's yeah, some dark beer. Wow, look at that phone. Sorry. Here, try it. I'm right there. <laughs> I'll have the uh, Furioso. Orlando. Perfect. Thank you for telling us that. Salad. Sorry. Look at how big these pizzas are. Look at that one. Oh, look how beautiful that is. Oh my God. Yummy. And if you're eating it's easy, that's what I I don't think I can pick it up. Nah, it is burning. You're gonna have to wait. <laughs> well, I think I can do it, it's too hot. <laughs> I'm okay. I'm okay. So you want to take it to pizza? Yeah, in the States. Yeah, it's a good No, that's a good sauce. <laughs> Does anybody else want anchovies? You started really just like walking around. Just walking around. Yeah. So now you're walking like all over. That's really tasty. So he's probably going to be right. No, but we can accomplish that. Wow. That's a different point to dummy one. Oh. It's like. Avocado. What was the pear? Who is that? Do you know him? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you guys know one of the. Yeah, but there's no way those people were doing that. Oh, I don't have a. You need a. There's a four. Oh, okay. What? Ladies and gentlemen, we have a good news. Tomorrow we're going to see you on the bus at 9.30. 9.30. Ah, it's, it's a little bit. And we are going to uh, see you. And I hope I wish uh, with the love that we have uh, such a uh, quick lunch that we had today. And then we can have more time to spend or in a season or in We'll come to Spello tomorrow. Eh? We'll come to Spello tomorrow. We are going to. We sleep here in Spello. Yes. I call her a mom. I heard you call her a mom. We will come to Spello after. Okay. We will come to Spello after. That's it.
Don't stop in front of me. Good morning. It is another beautiful day in Spello. <laughs> Today we're going uh, off to Assisi, you know, St. Francis of Assisi, famous for. <laughs> Can't wait to show you. It is breakfast time again. Let's see. Mm, my favorite. <laughs> Today is a CZ. I am super excited. I've never seen a CZ. Um, of course, it's a famous church, so I'm going to have to cover. You don't want to show too much skin, cover your shoulders, cover your knees. Um, but it's a gorgeous day, so that's only inside the church. Buongiorno! <laughs> we go to uh, Assisi. There we're going to meet uh, Michaela and is going to show us the beauty of uh, Assisi. And then uh, we go for lunch. I hope like yesterday fast and we can have a walk in uh, Assisi and we go back to the hotel and relax or a walk in a spell. Alright? Enjoy the ride. Big parking lot. We are there. Oh. All right, it's like an escalator. <laughs> A second, there's another. <laughs> we just keep going up, up, up. At least we don't have to climb. <laughs> It's really touristy. Uh, today we will see many more people than the, the other places. So, mm. like all the touristy places, uh, many houses became bed and breakfast, uh, hotels. Uh, uh, it's normal, it happens everywhere. So, residents and locals are becoming less and less. Uh, no, the city is not very big, actually. Um, the city wall, uh, <coughs> now we enter the city wall here, is four kilometers. It goes from the bottom to the top, to the fortress on, on top. What we are going to do today is basically crossing the city from one side to the other. So we are going now to the Church of St. Clair. We'll start here. Then we are going to the main square. Here we are going to see a museum, the Roman Museum. We are going under the main square. Uh, later I'll tell you why. And then we are going to walk all the way to the Church of St. Francis. The Church of St. Francis is one of the most important churches in the world. So uh, we will stay there at 40, 45 minutes because it's a museum of art. It's very beautiful there. Yeah. The shoulders of the. Sure. <laughs> uh, I stopped here one second because, uh, okay, this is the Church of St. Clair. 
On this side of the church, uh, you can see uh, the cracks uh, of the earthquake of 1997. Eh? 26 of September 1997, there was an earthquake uh, and this church uh, was broken. And so it was open. From here you could see outside, inside. Uh -huh. uh, at the church of St. Francis was even worse uh, because three parts of the ceiling uh, collapsed. Uh, the seven was really a turning point for a season because it was a big tragedy for people died, many houses, buildings, churches were damaged, but at the same time it was a very good chance for the renovation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Beautiful. Francis left Assisi when he was 24 years old. Uh, at that time, um, Middle Ages, St. Francis lived across the 12th and the 13th century. The valley of Assisi was uh, a forest, forest, uh, fields, uh, and it was in the middle of the nature, the other important aspect of the Franciscan philosophy. So he decided to go there, to establish his first community there, to build wooden houses around the little church. So uh, they decided to build a big church, a huge church, that one is really big, over the small one. So the small church is now inside the big one, they are one church inside the other. And it's a very interesting place. Uh, because you can really see the contrast between the poverty of St. Francis in the small church and the opulence of the Church of Rome, the big one. Uh, in this church and in the Church of St. Francis, pictures and videos are forbidden. I know. Uh, I don't make the rules, but... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> So I want to describe what I saw inside because you weren't allowed to be there with me. Um, beautiful art, lots of gold, um, kind of more in ruins, I would say. The frescoes weren't really visible, but um, really pretty. And the crypt was, was impressive with some relics, but um, you have to visit it if you're here. <laughs> <laughs> Cars are allowed here. It's really, it's, it just is disconcerting to have cars on this little road. You don't think they belong here, but, <laughs> but they will hit you. <laughs> wow, there's a school in here. That's crazy. <laughs> Uh, we are here because uh, this is uh, maybe <laughs> the birthplace of St. Francis. Oh. I say maybe because, uh, well, like, uh, I'm sure, everybody's sure that he was born in this area because we know that the properties of his father were here. His father was very rich, he was a, he was a clothes maker. Uh, according to many of the biographies of St. Francis, he was born uh, in a stable. Uh, with the animals. That sounds a lot like Jesus, no? St. Francis was the first uh, stigmatized descent of the history, the stigmata, so, the marks of the crucifixion of Jesus, the wounds, uh, appeared on his body two years before he died. Uh, for the first time, uh, many saints had them, uh, but he was the first. So when he died, uh, 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 they saw his wounds and they started to compare him uh, with Jesus. Uh, and many points of the biography are have details in common with the, with the life of Jesus. The birthplace is the first. Jesus was born in a stable. St. Francis was born in a stable. I don't know if it's true or not. It can be true because Assisi is a cold city. In the winter it can get very cold. It doesn't matter if you were rich or poor. The heating system in the house. The next season, the last winter, the next season. So why not? Maybe it was the right place. 
and they built this little chapel on the stable, over the stable. It's called the uh, Cappella di San Francesco Piccolino, Chapel of Ladies and Francis. <laughs> The flags represent the lower part uh, and uh, the first week of May uh, there are they open the taverns, uh, they have uh, this competition challenge between the upper and the lower part, medieval sports, uh, theater and things like that and then they decide which part wins the Calendi Maggio 2023. St. Francis uh, uh, lived in this area for the first part of his life. Uh, for 19 years, uh, he was a rich man being a rich man. So he was, uh, well, basically enjoying his money. He was helping his father with his job. Uh, he was uh, partying, drinking, women, everything you can imagine from a rich man in the Middle Ages. Uh, he is here, but 400 years ago, they built uh, this church uh, over. So now you, we, uh, there's not so much left. The name of the church is Chiesa Nuova, new church. Where? That's where we are going. Uh, the father of. <laughs> so this is the main square. <laughs> You? Grazie. So the heart of the city that divides the upper and the lower part. Uh, here we go back in time uh, uh, because uh, I told you lots of things about the Middle Ages and Francis, uh, but Assisi was a Roman city. 2,200 years ago, the Romans built a big city here. We don't see very much of that period uh, because everything is underground. The same story of the other cities. Uh, the most important Roman monument uh, of Assis is this one, uh, the Temple of Minerva. Uh, the Temple of Minerva is dated 50 BC. It's uh, completely outside of the historical context of the square because the square is medieval. This temple is 2,050 years old. The facade is still standing. It survived because the Temple of Minerva became the Church of St. Mary over Minerva. Romans were pagan, then they became Christian and they turned many temples into churches, like the Pantheon in Rome. We are going underground now. We will see the old Roman Forum. The Forum for the Romans was kind of the main square, the center of the political, social, economical life. And it was exactly here, but five meters under our feet. There was nothing on this side of the, of the square, so it was like a big terrace overlooking the valley of Assisi. There is something left of the forum, uh, and it's uh, here, in the, in the museum. Uh, so there I can tell you better how, how it was. Uh, Here because the Subasio, the mountain of Assisi, is like a sponge of great water. 
you know how the Romans put a lot of attention on the water to give the miles and miles of water to give good water. Just to give you an idea of the importance of the Roman Assisi, the amphitheater, the ruins of the amphitheater that are in the upper part of the city, the archaeologists say that could hold up to 16, 18,000 people. So this is the base of the statue. You can kind of see the pink. Temple of Minerva. Mm. Okay, this is the, this was the way to reach the temple. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> when it was outside, it was better. It was on the square, so people could come here and take the water. Of the couple somewhere in the house 2,000 years ago. Uh, you know, there are some uh, statues, but I'll just give you an idea of where you know, we are outside of this door. Now we have a lot of people who have to go back. So, yeah, it's the same way we enter. But outside of this door, there is the different square with the, with the stack of the pines. That's where we are now. And I don't remember exactly the year when the that sounds okay. great. What? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> mm. <Not deaf. laughs> Hotel in here, Lieto Soggiorno. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Hotel Il Palazzo. Taxis in here. So if you're in a big bus tour, this is how they keep you together with the person with the little flag. Everybody's got their little earpieces on so they can hear. A very different experience than a small group tour like ours. Uh, <laughs> this hotel, Francisco, Francesca. Francesco? I don't know what the S is for. <laughs> oh, San Francesco. <laughs> I think.
think this is the place. Francis died in 1226 and this church was started uh, in 1228, so the same year of the canonization of St. Francis. We are going to start uh, to see the church from the lower part, uh, because this church is built on three levels. Upper church, that's the one you saw in the video falling down in the earthquake. Lower church, that's where we're going to start. Tomb of St. Francis, underneath, three levels. Uh, now we are going there because I have to take uh, the uh, radius. Uh, I will speak with the microphone in the church and you will hear my voice through the radius because they don't want people to speak loud. It's an art exhibition but I still don't know the meaning of this art exhibition. I know that they are going to be here for a few months. Oh, okay. They're not permanent. Mm -hmm. No, no, they're not permanent. No. <laughs> Another hotel, Subasio. Uh, so we, we have our little audio devices. <laughs> okay, so we're going to use audio devices inside. I don't believe I'm going to be able to take any videos again. Not very. So I covered up a little bit because they will want you to be covered, all your flesh. <laughs> um, so with Raro, you don't need to worry about tipping your guides. It is an all-inclusive experience and they take care of even your tips. Awesome. <laughs> No pictures, no video, no sorry. Yeah. You have to come here. Yeah. <laughs> Let me book you. Yeah. Oh, she's respect. This is the upper church. We were in the lower church. The upper church, uh, well, it's a miracle that it's still here. Because the next day they closed all the churches because, uh, well, because of the aftershock. Uh, in the church there were only uh, some Franciscans, some engineers, uh, and a journalist that was filming for the news right uh, above the entrance. The journalist was filming in that, in that moment for the news, and he survived, uh, he made the video, and he survived because he was in the right position in the church. He was very lucky. Yeah. So this is the second most visited um, site in Italy for Christianity, second most important site uh, next to Rome. Right. Oh my goodness. <laughs> We're not stopping here. We just had a restroom break, but this is a lovely little stuff. And if you want to know how, how tall uh, St. Francis was, it's just... So this is another steep walk. But you can't get a taxi up. <laughs> I'm still smiling. <laughs> Made it. <laughs> oh. Donations yeah. to rebuild the church. It was a huge, huge um, participation of people, and you could buy vision of every meal, still or sparkling. <laughs> yeah. oh, there's Pino. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> 
You have a pappardelle with the white board, stra stracozzi, sal uh, salsage, with salsage, and gnocchi with the asparagus and uh, pecorino cheese. Or uh, wall board, uh, um, cucato. Braised white wall board. <coughs> tagliata on the grill, tagliata is um, a steak or uh, um, uh, filetto di maiale, uh, filet as a pork, pork filet with the salsa, salsa with the red deer. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> hey, the other decision, white or red? <laughs> First world problems. Oh, the birding is always the challenge. <laughs> Thank you, Sina. Ooh, lovely. Thank you. <laughs> oh. I don't know what you ordered because oh, you wrote it down. Every time I don't get Oh, both of us. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, oh, I'm glad I got that. More steak. Tagliata, tagliata, tagliata. Who got pork? Pork. Raise your hand. Come on now, people. This is not our first rodeo. Chicoria. Chicoria, greens. I have a greens. I have a green pure io, grazie. Cinghiale ce l'ho io. Is that the sausage? Oh, what's that? That's the braised. Oh, that's the braised wild boar. Okay. Potato, potato, potato. Ooh, salad. Which one? Yeah. Ah, that was me. Strangozzi. Strangozzi. It's from North Umbria and south of uh, Toscany. They uh, make this kind of uh, pasta. Homemade. In Toscany, they say peach. No, they call it that. Peach. 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 Oh, is that the note? Who got gnocchi? Gnocchi. 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 You don't wait for everybody to get your food here, just eat. That is very Italian. Mm. Mm. How much time does it take? I'll turn it off, don't worry. I was asking how much time it took you to edit to down edit? all the footage and how much footage you... I mean, my onions. Look at these onions. Yummy. <laughs> Because it looks so good. It's kind of in a bra. Oh, yeah. Wow, these are so tasty. I love it. Can you use more water? I love it. That's a Drew making noise. Yeah, it's just all Drew. Yeah. Oh. Of course. Okay, I would like to say first. Now it's Wendy. That's Wendy. Now it's Wendy. Yeah, you gotta stand up. I would like to say first, the after lunch, we, I don't know if you want to go for a walk or shopping in the, in the village, mm -hmm. but all the stores are the same it's just a touristic place it's beautiful the cathedral it's beautiful the building and stuff a lot of history but about shopping is just i personally i suggest we go to the basilica to the, the, the sant'angelo the, the Santa angeli santa maria degli angeli we spend there 15 minutes then we go back to the hotel 
and everybody can rest or walk or do shopping in, in, the, in the village. About the dessert, I, I try to decide just for timing, timing purpose, just to decide the, the, the most uh, um, original from the place. Right? And there is the rochata, rochata di Assisi with walnut, almonds, raisins, apple with cream. And then we have a panna cotta, they do everywhere, but I love it. <laughs> and they do the tortino, the tortino is chocolate wal walnut cake with the ice cream and uh, woodland fruit sauce, sauce, sauce. And then from uh, this, uh, Toscany and Umbria, there are the biscottini alla, al vino, that means uh, biscuits with the sweet wine that you have oh, deep good. in there. And, uh, what else would you like? and uh, just uh, who wants the first one? The so rochata. What is rochata? Rochata is, rochata is from here, from Assisi, with walnut, almonds, raisins, apple, with cream. No, no, no. With our almonds, crumble, whipped cream, and chocolate. So, mm. yeah, so I just looking at it. That was beautiful. Oh, what's that one? Hey, Drew. Let's get it. Oh, grazie. Look at that. That's a coffee parfait. I think we accidentally. I don't know if it's your. I don't know. Oh, that's what she got. She, he told me it's the coffee parfait. Yeah, that's what yeah, she, she yeah, got. Yeah. 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 She got the right thing. Whoops. Here you go. Oh. Oh. This is yours. Oh. Tortino chocolate. Yeah. Look at that. Oh, it's like a molten lava. Raise your hand, big guy. Do it. Wait a second. I like that. No, I'm saying. You can have another one. I just like looking at it. It looks nice. Everything looks nice. Do you want another tortilla? I can't. Very good. Do you want another one? Why not? Oh my, this was too much. Everybody has another one. I'm not helping. Mine's crusty. Like it's not. I don't know where the coffee is. What oh, is with the ice cream? Really? In the inside? Really? Is it the inside? On the, no, it's on never the ice cream. made with ice. <laughs> it's made with no. coffee. No. It's like coffee. They just had okay. it, so they put it down. Okay. No. I got a more in the middle. I would like. <laughs> It's, it's really yes, good it's very to say that I don't care about the dessert. Oh, but now I, I care. Who wants a limoncello? Who wants a grappa? Grappa. Mm. Mm. No, no he, 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 he's drinking cappuccino with a limoncello. Oh, yeah, lemon mm. oh both? That's delicious. Oh, it's like a coffee uh, ice cream. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Yummy, with like crunchy. <laughs> Do you want some grappa? If it was molten? Yes, a little bit. Mm, yummy. Yeah, there's some in the middle. Espresso? Americano. No, no, no. Americano. The doppio is double? Oh, I just. Oh, oh, oh. No. I just get something. Oh, that's right. Don't worry. All is good. It's yeah. grappa time. Grappa <laughs> lei. Grazie. Grazie a lei. Mucha. Mucha. I had nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> 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 One of these moments in Sardinia, he's standing on a rock. <laughs> this is like storybook gorgeous. <laughs> you guys are all copying my. Tao. Keep down. Easy is beautiful. The Umbria region is the second most visited area of Rome. So you may not have heard of Umbria, but it beats Tuscany for visitors because it is just so gorgeous. Amazing, I love it here. <laughs>
gorgeous day today. Perfection. Yeah. Ah. Yep, <laughs> Coast. So, sir. Mm. Yeah. Two buses. <laughs> we have our cute little van. <laughs> Are you filming me? Yes. <laughs> of course. Our fabulous driver. <laughs> okay, so Assisi was amazing. Oh, Beautiful. Oh, you have to stop here. And now I'm not sure what we're doing. I think we're going to a basilica on the way back. I'm not sure. What is that? Guess you say. Santa Maria de Angeli. We're gonna turn around and he's gonna drop us on the side. But this is the church. Church can come with us. Um, yeah, I think we're gonna do 15 minutes or something like that as quick as possible because you want to enjoy also time in Spello. Um, who is not interested can stay here. here. There is toilets. I'm pretty sure there is also a snack bar to have a beer or whatever okay, you feel yeah. like. Or a cup. Bus, where, where are you going? Okay. <laughs> All right. So um, tonight we're going to have uh, wine tasting with food at the restaurant which is not a it's a it's a actually a winery they sell also a lot of wine in all italy they are quite um, famous and they will do uh, a pairing with the food and explain us the wines and we are starting at 7 30. Okay, dinner time again, of course. I slept this entire time. I think I slept four hours. And now we're gonna do like a pairing, a wine tasting with our dinner. Is that it now? That is it. Mm -hmm. And no, and no, proprio, proprio. Oh, sorry. Grazie. Most welcome. <laughs> it smells really good in here. Buonasera, hello, welcome. Buonasera. Oh. Uh, welcome. Uh, I just to do a small introduction about me and my family. So I'm Luca, first of all. You're gonna meet my dad, Roberto, soon, and my sister, Irene. And we are seven generation wine merchant. And uh, so we started this work with the wine many, many years ago. Me and my sister Erin, we are the number eight generation. The Noteca Professor, this story is considered right now in the first three, four wine store in all of Italy. We more than 3,000 labels, so different kind of wine. And uh, I'm a sommelier. My dad is a master sommelier, mm -hmm. so we got you step by step. We will drink and we will eat. Eh? And um, all the wine that we're gonna try today are mostly organic wine eh? and not available in the Are you from the United States? Yes. Or yes, and not available in the US. If you like, you can uh -huh. ship one and all the way home, but all product you cannot get. If you want a big name like a Sassicaia, this. You can find that we have much cheaper price than the US, but if you want it, we can ship it. And uh, uh, one more thing so here, the building is also really important because we are located in the 14th century. And uh, I don't know if you visit the church close to the store, there is a Pinturicchio painting inside. When did Pinturicchio work in that church, is left in this building. Mm -hmm. We bought 80 years ago, but before was a place of the church. 
and uh, that's all. Now we can start <laughs> eat and drink. And, uh, and uh, you, now you are start to drink and eat officially. <laughs> you are from Florida? No, or? I'm from Florida. Texas. Texas, where? The Austin. Austin. Wow. Very good that you knew that. Uh, I've been many times here. <laughs> <laughs> this is my sister Sorry, Okay. <laughs> Umbria is famous for one of the mildest extra virgin olive oil you find in our country, uh, together with the Tuscan and the Marche olive oil. Uh, you find two different kinds of olive oil. The one on the right, the state is coming also for the others. The piece of bread on the right, it carries the first olive oil, which is the organic olive oil from Spello, DOP. That's the one the New York Times and many other magazines came to visit us for. So we're very proud to share with you. 5,000 bottles made and the DOP organic certified for both the US and European community plus the kosher certification for Jewish. <laughs> it's, uh, it carries a 0.2 of acidity which is considered very low. So good for cooking and dressing. Mediterranean diet is based on low acidic extra virgin olive oil. So that's the one we consider flexible both for cooking and dressing. Olive oil made by in Tuscany, South of Tuscany, <coughs> uh, within uh, Sassicaio estate. So this is the same variety of olives, Moraiolo olives as the first one, but big difference be between the two because in this case big influence of the sea of the coast, so very close to the Mediterranean Sea. Uh, this is the one we prefer just to finish, not to cook with. The first bruschetta, fresh tomatoes and basil with the first olive oil from Spello. Uh, use your hands very informal, non for and knives, and make sure you have a sip of the white together because I made of the Now we try the white together too. Okay, the first white wine, the only white wine are our taste, all the wines uh, we deal with, maybe my brother already told you about, but uh, we represent all these brands officially and a um, good mm. part of them are now available in the US. So I know you are quite familiar with the style of this uh, uh, complex uh, type of wine. Grechetto? Grechetto, 100%. Grechetto grapes, indigenous white grape only belonging to Umbria, no other places in the world. Indigenous grape from Italy. In Italy, we have more than 250 indigenous grapes, and this is one of those. So now we try the white together. Maria. Maria. Senti il limone, cedro. Big acidity, lemon, citrus at first. E mela verde. Green apple. This is my dad. Yeah. Uh, oh, John. Yeah. Si sente il limone. I used to have it all the like, year around, especially with appetizers, white meat, seafood, because quite flexible, very dry. Yeah? Chin chin, eh? Cheers. Chin chin. Chin chin. Chin chin. So we're supposed to eat it with our um, bruschetta with the two different olive oils. Yes. 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 I like that one. Okay. Hmm? No they would have another choice if someone doesn't want truffles because we talked about that. Let's bring it. Through. 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 So this is supposed to be a mild, the right hand side is supposed to be a mild, it can be used to cook or to finish. Mm -hmm. The other side is supposed to be um, only a finisher, and it's supposed to be a little bit And then I think the tomatoes has to be the right. Oh, I think that they're going to try and accept the wine. I'm glad you're with, with me. I got it. Mmm. <laughs> this. Mm. <clears throat> It is tasty.
olive oil is the base of the Median diet, so it's very, very important. It is very hard to find the, the olive oil with the fire certification. It's so they they do 12 bottles shipped for 79 euros. Wait, that was the shipping cost for 79 yes. euros. How much is the bottle? Mm. I think it would be different. Oh. 12 million euros. <laughs> 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 it depends on what you got. Okay, so our main course, uh, you can choose between a homemade tagliatelle with a truffle and we share the truffle in front of you, or homemade lasagna. Oh. So raise your hand who wants the truffle yeah, pasta. I think you've already Ah, it's already done. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah, perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. perfect. Yeah. perfect. Yeah. perfect. Yeah. Well, just one. One lasagna. Yeah. Okay. You want also lasagna? Yeah. yeah. I want to try that homemade lasagna. Lasagna. Okay. So, <laughs> okay, so uh, maybe you should. No, I didn't hear that question. I didn't hear it either. How many lasagna was only one before? Now how many? Who wants it? When, when did they ask that? <laughs> I totally I missed it. Part. It wasn't that. It was who doesn't like truffles because the wine pairing goes with the truffles. So they're only offering the lasagna oh. if you don't like truffles. Oh. So, it wasn't meant I didn't understand. Yes. But if the lasagna was only because you don't like truffles? Well, I mean, truffle, like, you know. This is with me, the real truffle. Uh, it's a very complicated <laughs> wine pairing today. <laughs> So now we're gonna start with the first red in Tuscany. This is the classic super Tuscan wine, and um, we are located close to the Sassicaia. Probably are familiar with the Sassicaia, that is one of the king of the Italian wine. Probably later we're gonna try it. Mm. But this is again a, a classic super Tuscan, 50% Sangiovese and 50% Cabernet Franc. The name is a Tuscan Sol and is a 2800 bottle made. So, super, super okay. small production. And um, this is a special selection made for our family. So, this is this is a wine aged for four years three years in French barrique and one more year in the bottle. Fermentation is still for 13 14 days. Spectacular, spectacular, right? 2019 is amazing. Bit. And then we're gonna try it together with Roberto. Yeah. So always see the color on the palm of your hand. This is very, this is very clear and strong. Look, you guys. Attenzione, attenzione, lungo. This is a very, very important thing. When you buy wine, always look for the legs. We call it Roman arches. So you call legs. These are represent the quality of the wine. The legs, they should be tall, very close to each other, and they going down very slowly. If it does this, it's a great wine. It's a wine that you can age, because the volume of alcohol, the glycerin, so the sugar, and the polyphenol are really rich. So you also have... Oh. Oh, oh, from the bottom. So black pepper, the cherry, la ciliegia, red ciliegia, cherry, tam, la mora selvatica, wild berries, alcohol, alcohol, per catena aperta, strong alcohol because we just opened it. Now a small taste, a small sip. In bocca si sente di nuovo la prugna, la ciliegia e si sente la prugna. Chocolate, still a little bit heavy because it's young wine. This is a baby size. So this is top for 5 6 anni. We'll be the peak of this wine in 4 or 5 years. With the main course will be spectacular red wine. I think 2800 bottle is very very small production. 98 points by James up in this year. This artist is um, uh, 
plates available here. Ceramics. They're lovely. We carry them back, but it's kind of easier and better. We probably got lucky. While I'm here, it's coming with me. Perfect. I'm sure, but it doesn't have the truffles. I love it. I can give you a You're so sweet. You're so good to me. Oh, okay. Um, oh, with the milk. Oh, okay. Perfect. We started very well. Okay. Mmm, that's it. 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 I feel bad because I told them lasagna and they gave me this. Should I should I not eat this? No, actually. Well, if, they, if there's a third lasagna, they told me it doesn't matter. Oh, okay. It doesn't matter. It just tastes Yeah. Okay. And this is half a portion. That's half a portion. To let you know. Oh, that's really delicious. Mm, yummy. <laughs> One more bite. It's really good. Delicious. It's okay. Oh, no. <laughs> I <didn't try> <laughs> Simple, simple, simple. Uh, three ingredients: in pasta, truffle, and uh, olive oil. Nothing more. Eh? Perfect. <laughs> So this is uh, very important. Come sono? Sono più alti. Sono, sono fitti, sono fitti, un vino di corpo, carico. Taller and slower than the Tuscan salt. This means uh, higher glycerin, higher alcohol content uh, and bigger polyphenols. <laughs> andiamo, andiamo a sentire profumi. Okay, let's smell the bouquet now. Intorno alle narici forte. So Le narici sono di sensibilità diversa. Qui c'è grandi frutti rossi. Okay, ripe red fruits, such as no, cherry, la, mora, la mora selvatica. Blackberries. La ciliegia. Cherry, yes, I said. <laughs> e poi, <laughs> poi c'è alcol, alcol perché è appena aperto. Big alcohol because we just opened. This bottle will need to breathe at least 30 minutes before you start drinking. Andiamo a sentire in bocca. And now, see? <laughs> <laughs> we can have more of that second one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, open the other one now. Mom. <laughs> mm. She's already cut off anyway. <laughs> <laughs> in bocca, pepe, liquirizia. A bite of black pepper at the taste, the licorice. Poi si sente un po' di mineralità okay, minerality, due to the soil, again, molto, like molto soil. tannico perché è un bambino il sassicaglio 85 primo vino al mondo per Robert Parker questo è ora niente Stavo lavorando io. Fantastico. Questo domani è più buono di oggi. 
this one and this one tomorrow is better than today. She just took mine. That's why. Right. You gave up that wine? I, I know. You didn't hear me ask who wanted it. Uh-oh. Lindsay was very quick. <laughs> uh, yes, I was. <laughs> I would like you to know that I Did you share with me? I do not. I invited you. Yank it right out of your hands. Both of them. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh, gracias. No, it's delicious. Thank you. 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 Come si chiama? Curni, Curni, e il presidente di Nino, siete stati da Bea, che è vicepresidente, questo è il presidente oh, di Nino, che è Canina is our prestigious meat, red meat from around here, Toscany and Umbria only. It's a kind of fluffy protected. And then uh, Valeriana salad on the side with the uh, first soft boy from Spain, the one from Spain, balsamic vinegar, 25 years aged from Modena. That's the real one, Roberto is passing around once again. And this is a liquid gold, it's much more expensive than the wine in the whole world. <laughs> I'm definitely getting this one later. Okay. Yes. In Italy, we use it for salads, obviously, it's with cheese, vanilla ice cream, strawberries, it's to die for it. Mm. Yeah. To die for it. And it comes only from Modena. <laughs> Uh, the only one certified got DOP mm? certified, I'll show you the other bottles, but this is very sticky. But the DOP certified, and only in this shape bottle, otherwise it's not the original balsamic. What the others are glazed, not certified, yeah, from modern. Interesting. Oh my god. This is the VIP Nice. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Well, it's, it's, not it's a very meaty meatball. It's just because he's like so used to it. And you like it, but I'm like, he's never going to know. So, so what was, um, what was he saying? Or did he say, uh, oh, did you do the one yet? No. <laughs> Oops. Yeah. One of the biggest the next one we just passed around is the Turni. Mm. Uh, Oh. Oh, sound like amazing. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Un graffo la vite. Wow, 89 best wine. And then we are drinking this one right now. Wow, awesome. Both. Both. Who wants both? Okay. Wow. Oh, wow.
Okay, he's getting a big grab. <laughs> So I ordered I ordered six olive oils and six balsamic vinegars um, because you could put 12 bottles in any combination and I didn't really want the wine to but, um, but I love the olive oil and the balsamic was amazing so I know I would use chin No, I have my this is the sweet dessert wine, and I, I did just drip after after Pino said, "Don't drip." <laughs> so beware when you are in a hotel. You don't want to be close to this or wear earplugs. <laughs> I think it's right outside, <laughs> and it's still going. <laughs> it's nine o'clock. I have no problem with it. Yeah. Well, that's 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 Tomorrow, you uh, on the plan, we have the visit of the small medieval village of Bavania. It's a small village, it's a short tour. We plan to leave the hotel at 9.30, have lunch at 12, and be back at the hotel by 2 o'clock, the latest, so that you have a free afternoon. If anyone feels like you want to stay here in Spello and enjoy the village and you want more time here feel please just feel free to do so just let us know so tomorrow we don't wait on you and we can cancel the reservation for the lunch pino wants to go on the hike wait sorry uh, i'm not I... pino i'm your daddy <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Peter. Yeah. What height? The aqueduct. The aqueduct. Okay. Oh my gosh, that was so much fun and such good food and wine. It's awesome. And now back to the hotel. Let's do it. <laughs> home sweet home. <laughs> this is service, Raro service. <laughs> you know, they all have to do everything. The guest, the guest. No, yeah. the, the employee purchased and shares with the guest. Mm. Well, the host is there, right? Yeah. Perfection. Well, we already have that. Do you need anything else, somebody? Uh, <laughs> yeah. We had the, the vodka for the <coughs> yeah. It's just like What's a... Right? What's that, though, right? Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> Can I do it again? <laughs> Double social media hit. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. They took it from one. Oh. <laughs> That's too funny. How many, how many body cuts we have? Almost. Nine. Three. 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 Yes, sir. This one is yes, the, the toast of... Pino, shut up. This is the toast the, the day before the last day. Oh. <laughs> 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 
know, I know it's a kind of complicated, but cheers. 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 Okay. <laughs> Let me see what the weather is today. Beautiful morning in Spello. That's kind of chilly. <laughs> it's supposed to get to about um, 73 degrees today. So I think I'm just okay for the weather. Mm, I'm not sure. I think I just need a light jacket. <laughs> It's breakfast time again. <laughs> Same as always. A beautiful morning at our hotel, like always. Trying to give you your privacy. <laughs> so from our hotel, you can take a hike on the aqueducts or to the aqueducts. I don't know. You can't really see people walking here today, but we're gonna do that this afternoon. You know, is gonna show me everything. <laughs> a banana here. <laughs> a banana. <laughs> oh, look at this. He's got it all set. <laughs> anyway, here was Orvieto. Okay. Oops. <clears throat> Shadows. Okay. Montefalco, where the, we had the wine tasting. Ah. Rasilia, the village with the, a lot of uh, water. Spell. <clears throat> The spell is just in the center of mm. Assisi, Perugia, and Gubbio. Gubbio was the, ah, that's the furthest. The, the furthest. And um, Spello is here, and Bevagna is here. You see, Spello ah. and Bevagna. Ah. It's just. So show back. me where Rome is. Roma is it's not in the map. Oh, because it isn't. It, it's this is another, only Umbria. Only Umbria, yes. Okay. But. Roma is down here. Oh, okay. Yeah. So we're seeing all of the main sites of the Umbria region, correct? Yes. Is there anything that you think we're missing? Well, we're missing a lot. <laughs> <laughs> because there are so many beautiful things. And there yeah, are also Spoleto and Foligno. Mm. Trevi. They are oh. all beautiful city and villages. Yeah. And about how far is it to get to Tuscany from here? Oh, Tuscany is just here. That's already Tuscany. Ah. You see the different color, white ah. and gray? That's already Tuscany. Oh, I see. Cartona is in Tuscany. Montepulciano is in Tuscany. Okay, yeah, I just booked somebody into Montepulciano. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Beautiful. And what, so is that, what's on that side then? Is that Tuscany that's, also? No, no, that's Marche. Mm. Marche is not, another region. Here is the Adriatic uh, Ocean. Ah. And what's the coastal area? It's, yeah, it's all Marche, oh, Marche, this one. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Yep. Beautiful. Oh, and Todi. Todi's right there. Mm -hmm. Hmm? Well, yes, down here oh. on the coast, right? Mm, yes. Yeah. Here is Lazio. You see different Oh, colors. okay. And Roma. <clears throat> yeah, so my, all my clients who I'm sending to Puglia, I'm sending uh -huh. down that way. <laughs> yep. Yep. 
<laughs> All right, yes, this is Umbria. Mm. Andiamo. <laughs> oh. Morning, it's Luciano. <laughs> <laughs> and my beautiful seat waiting for me. Today we're heading out to Bavania. Pretty dirty. <laughs> I don't like that bottle there. Oh, look how pretty that is, though. Anything so now, show time. Together, the last tour. I know that tomorrow you go back to Rome, so well, enjoy, <laughs> enjoy your life. So it was a pleasure to meet you, and I hope you. I try. I tried to show you as much as I could uh, of the region. I hope I did. You were Thank fabulous. You very much. Thank you. Thank you. Stars. <laughs> oh, sorry. Okay, see. Uh, it's a little place. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> so I just want to show you the flush. You push this up in this kind of a toilet. Hi, Kitty. Tell you what they, they have very interesting local uh, place here. 
So um, you can choose whatever you want. For pasta dishes, they have strangazzi, which is also this homemade pasta from here with a big ragu of fasona cow and two different kinds of local pork meat. They have orecchiette, handmade little pasta with wild asparagus and crispy bacon. They have stringozzi, also homemade pasta with uh, porcini mushroom, fresh porcini mushroom. Or they have a local soup with lin uh, uh, lentils and barley, local mm. soup. So that would be like the choices for pasta. If you prefer to have meat, they have a whole pigeon. They have stuffed <laughs> a boneless rabbit or they have porchetta, like uh, mm. pork with herbs. Porchetta. Porchetta. Uh, That's a and uh, with side dish, they have mixed vegetables. Oh, yeah, so or you know, mixed oh, why? Mm. Yeah, we are yes, trying but, to but, have but a quick lunch. lunch. So, so um, who wants the. Sei pronto? Sì. Who wants the orecchiette with wild asparagus and guanciale? I'm getting it for you. Okay, good. Cheeky one. Five. So this means still, naturale, then frizzante. Frizzante? What do you say? Frizzante. Frizzante. Frizzante is the uh, bubbles. Blanca, what, 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 Bianca, Bianca. Bianco. Bianco. So does uh, anyone uh, prefer... Thank you. Grazie. Okay. <laughs> oh, that was water. <laughs> <laughs> that was really tasty. I like that one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yum. Mm. Lentils are local cuisine. Me. Oh, the laurel. <laughs> nice. Grazie. That's good. I do want to try it. Yeah. The, the Italian way. <laughs> I don't know if that's the Italian way. <laughs> that's the Pino way. way. <laughs> mm. It's not here. Uh, okay. okay. They took the bones out and they roll it. Porchetta, it's like porch, pork. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Tasty. It is. Mm. Oh, the mushrooms. Troppe mani che girano. Okay, I'm gonna try some of the, some of the lentils too. Mm. That's really delicious. Isn't that oh. good? Yeah. The vegetables. <laughs> this is Italian style. <laughs> uh, oh, look at that. Gorgeous. So this is with wild asparagus and ham. Mm. Mm. Interesting. The asparagus taste is really bon strong. Bon appetito. What, on the vegetables? Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh. The vegetables. I think, I think they're cooked. Cool. I think I'll come with the plate. No? Ala? Mm. I didn't try this one, yeah. Mm. Mm. No. Mm -mm. What did they want? Mm. Mm. Uh, no. <laughs> Gracias. That's the rabbit. That's the rabbit oh, that's the rabbit. So, we don't know what this uh, we know is called in, in America. America. Nespole. <laughs> but it's very interesting. It's not an apricot. No, it's not. It has a pit. They have many. Uh, oh. So it. Oh, it's not just one. No, it's more than no, one. If, if someone takes this, I'm gonna okay. show you. 
You have like one, oh. two, that's oh. like a capsule. Multiple pits. Oh, that's good. That's interesting. It's delicious. Okay, can I try? Mm. Of course. That's All why right. I bought it. <laughs> so that's the Give it. Let's see. Okay. 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 I can't tell what it tastes like. It's, it's very, it's sweet, delicious. It's not like a peach. It's not like an apricot. Yeah. And it's always so juicy. Always. It's not like an apple. <laughs> I, I really don't know what this is. Anyway, it's uh, delicious. Come to Italy and eat. What is it called? Nespole. Nespole. How much was it? <laughs> the, what? How much was it? The price? Yeah, a lot. <laughs> one euro for one. One euro for one. That's very expensive here yes. for produce. Really good. Mm. Kumquat is not a kumquat. Low kumquat. Oh. So it's like a kumquat. Yeah, but kumquat is like with skin. Like it's more like a little orange kumquat. You eat them with with the orange skin. Mm. Delicious. You guys want to dessert? They have ricotta, like it's a cheese, fresh cheese with a cherry, like wild cherries, ah. fishless, like kind of little bit like a sour cherries. And they have a crostata with fig marmalade and walnuts. And you will get some fruit, I'm cutting it for you. <laughs> I'll have the cherry one. I yeah, love cherries. Yeah, me too. I will share with you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you Cordial, thank you for it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Grappa time. No grappa. <laughs> yeah. No grappa. No. Grappa. No. Just put this in front of me. <laughs> that is really funny. <laughs> Our cappuccino, delicious. How was your lunch, everybody? This is ricotta with cherries. Did you guys want to explain it? <laughs> it was okay. cute. It was cute. cute. We, have time. we have a time. We have a time. Okay. When you get a chance to, Lady, after you try that, mm -hmm. try the piece of ricotta by itself. No, oh. So this is fresh ricotta with wild cherries. Mm -hmm. Oh. Mm. Oh my god. Mm. This is not like American ricotta. So don't think this is like ricotta that you have at home. This is amazing. Mm. Yes. Oh, um, what I was expecting. Wow. Do you want some more? Delicious. I didn't like it at all. <laughs> grappa and limoncello. With grappa, no too. No, too, no. <laughs> Hey, it's now it's time for the aqueduct. <laughs> We're gonna take a hike. <laughs> this is perfect weather today for April. It's it's like just crisp and perfect, sunny, no rain, blue skies. I wish it was like this the whole trip. It would have been amazing. Just want to show you, this is the way they charge here. <laughs> like this white tree. Motoguzzi. <laughs> I was told to take a video of this and I'm not sure why, but I'm sure you guys will know why. <laughs> Good idea. <laughs> <laughs> Too much grappa at lunch. <laughs> Back in the bus. <laughs> it's a pretty short drive, about 15 20 minutes, and then we'll be back at Spello and have a little hike. It's actually early enough that we can enjoy the afternoon. I hope everyone enjoyed lunch. Delicious. <laughs> and the village of Bavania and the paper making. Yes. The others have missed something oh, today. Totally. <laughs> and uh, so we're going to have a short drive, 15 minutes, more or less. Um, I'm going to get the bus um, off the bus in the lower part of Pello because I want to go to see the mosaics. 
and uh, for the one who want to, for the ones who want to hike Pino is gonna start from the hotel at 2 30 whoever wants otherwise you have all the options if you have any questions about anything in Spello just ask uh, next uh, appointment would be 8 p.m. in ah. the hotel. We're gonna have a transfer, so a minibus driving twice because uh, we don't have the big bus to go to a restaurant. It's just uh, one kilometer away, but there is no sidewalk, it's outside the city, so we prefer to take transportation to make it safer. <laughs> and uh, we will have our last dinner here in Hello. So, me. Actually, that's great with the flowers behind you. Spella. <laughs> oh, again. It's cute. <laughs> okay, it's time for our hike. We're all ready to go. Okay, the adventure begins. <laughs> so that way, the chinetti. <laughs> we don't go up, we go straight. Thank you. Thank you. I, I was wrong, we're going up this way. <laughs> oh. oh, that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, are we going to the aqueduct? Uh, actually, I don't know. I'm not from here. Oh. I come here for the, only for the water. Oh. That's funny. What is that? Chicken. Oh. Chicken. <laughs> Chickens and roosters. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> Four thirty. Th oh, he's curly. Look at his curly hair. Oh. Oh. I've never seen a chicken like that. That's funny. Oh my god, they're so loud. <laughs> they're like the chimes. Follow the runner. <laughs> yeah. We have to go follow the 52. <laughs> 52. <laughs> wow. This is gorgeous. <laughs> okay. Ah, uh, here. Ah, uh, okay, where are We're we? We're here. Okay. Do, 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 do. Wow. What is that? We're not going to go all Checking. the way. No, no, that's for the Pino. <laughs> oh. The villa. Oh. The aqueduct is, has to be just here. Maybe this one? Yeah, that makes Guarda. sense. Ponte. 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 Oh, yeah, Ponte. Where's the aqueduct one? Here, the red, or uh, blue. A Sorgente aqueducto. Mm. <laughs> but, but. I don't see it. Not bad. Oh, it's all the way here. It's under. It's here. Beautiful. No, <laughs> <Yeah, no. laughs> so if I disappear, don't worry, I'm just going back. Between the walls. Oh, man, I'm so <laughs> oh figs. Cool. It is beautiful up here. And that was not hard so far to get up to this. Oh, pussy willows, we call them. One that reminds me the Gladiator movie. <laughs> Did you remember the Gladiator? Do you like it, the movie? I don't remember it. No? It's been uh, a long time. But do you blow these? Let's see. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see if this one blows. <laughs> that was great. Okay, let me do this one. Well, I think we're walking on the aqueduct, don't you think? No, 
<laughs> you have to find a really big fluffy one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's all right. Yeah, it's all right. Yeah, already. This is this it. is it. That's what yeah, we yeah, thought. Yeah. Okay, gracias. Nothing. Oh my God, gorgeous. Amazingly beautiful up here. <laughs> I'm stopping to take movies and everybody's leaving me. <laughs> They're up on the road already. Okay. Follow the signs for 52. <laughs> so this week we're in Spello, staying five nights. I think you can see our hotel <laughs> if you work really hard. Ah, oh, beautiful. <laughs> he knows worried about me. I'm good though. <laughs> Yes, I was following the 52 signs. I saw you guys go over. Oh my God, it's like a storybook. Fairy tale. <laughs> yeah, pieces of the aqueduct on the side. have a picnic out here okay let's see where we go oh I think they're ahead of me <laughs> I love it <laughs> just some peace and quiet and walking slowly <laughs> I feel bad that I'm not keeping up with everybody but I really enjoy this alone so beautiful and then nobody gets mad at me when I stop to take my movies <laughs> hey. I'm hearing somebody but I don't know where <laughs> where I'm hearing it from that is Looks like we caught up with people. <laughs> Hello. Hello. <laughs> oh, okay. Awesome. <laughs> it's still pretty easy, an easy walk. I don't think you're supposed to lay in this this way, but I like it. Ah. Oh. Yeah, let's see this way. <laughs> mm. I could just stay here, <laughs> but we got to get to the aqueduct. So I did not bring good shoes. I'm just wearing my loafers. 
but it's fine. That's not bothering me. I do bring band-aids though, so I wrapped my injured toe in band-aids. I haven't seen that one yet. It's pretty. Yeah, I did see these already. Pretty. Interesting prickly pears, just like Tucson. It's just fire. It smells like fire up here. Gorgeous up here. <laughs> Look who's here! <laughs> there is no water up here. I did not bring a water bottle. Um, so you should probably remember to do that. <laughs> right. Oh, they do have water up here. Good. I didn't bring a water bottle. Silly. <laughs> okay, this way? Okay, now I have a better view. <laughs> you gotta get everybody in there. <laughs> hey, hikers! <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> Okay, I I'll move. Mess up this guy. <laughs> Go ahead, I'll, I'll be in the rear. <laughs> cool. So be careful. <laughs> this is how people die on vacation, is trying to take movies and videos on cliffs like this. You can see back to our hotel, back in the little city of Spello over there. Thank you for following along this week in the gorgeous Umbrian region of Italy. <laughs> The green center of Italy, as you can see, it is amazing. The cuisine, the people, oh, it's so gorgeous, the landscapes. So much to do here and it's so beautiful. You wanna go with Raro, who takes total care of you, all-inclusive, gorgeous, small group, so you never feel like you're on a bus tour, which is you know, really not what you want to do in this region. You can just listen to the birds and nature. And if you're with a bunch of people, it's just not peaceful. It's not the same experience. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Where did he go? Oh. He left me. I had a butterfly friend. <laughs> I asked them, where's the most picturesque place we're going to be so I can do my intro and exit video? <laughs> and there are too many to choose from, so I don't know what I'm going to choose. I have so many picturesque places. It's gorgeous. Okay, I think we're on top of the aqueduct. We're on a bridge. <sighs> All right, I'm heading back. It's just too beautiful. Okay, here's that aqueduct bridge. So it's amazing. I was able to go live on um, 
Facebook and Instagram. I don't know how I had service to do that, <laughs> but it's gorgeous. Thank you. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> Too much traffic. <laughs> it's busy. There's the cute little city of Stello. Okay, <laughs> <Right> back down. <laughs> Oh, thank goodness, the <laughs> water stopped. <sighs> oh. <sighs> Bring a water bottle. <laughs> Everybody wants to work from anywhere, right? Well, Marina does, because she is a digital nomad. Hi. <laughs> well, we're here with Raro, yeah. both of us with Raro, um, having a fabulous time. <laughs> and we're both working remotely. <laughs> so you can work from all over the world as long as there's Wi-Fi and cell service. Yeah. <laughs> Where have you been in the last six months? Uh, I've been in Southeast Asia, oh, and most of the time I spent really? in Thailand. I've been in Thailand for five months, and then I went to Indonesia for another month, and Vietnam, Singapore, and Maldives. The Maldives, working in the Maldives, so you don't just have fun, you actually work. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so how do you find a job that you can do a remote work from? Uh, I started more than five years ago, so I use some platforms also, but the way that I started, like uh, that I got my first project, it was like uh, because I did an internship and I built my portfolio, so then I got some projects to work on. So you contract with companies to do their social media and their internet work? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> all right. <laughs> and of course, while you travel all over the world, you need an awesome travel agent to send you everywhere. <laughs> so, of course, you need Lainey to book you all over the world. <laughs> to all your digital nomading. <laughs> yeah, of course. Book, use Lainey. <laughs> Okay, we're going off to dinner tonight in a taxi. <laughs> but I think this is the first time we've been in a car. Ever sunset, it's hard to see how pretty it is. <laughs> nice. Ah, uh, feels great. So small, so. See? Oh, nice. <laughs> I love the blue bottle. It's so pretty. So there's only one taxi in this town. <laughs> so the other taxi had to go back and get the rest of our party because that's the only one in the whole city. <laughs> We're lucky that the only taxi has seats. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> so cool. Thank you. <laughs> 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 I'm doing you. <laughs> I didn't even ask. Think it sounds good? Yeah. <laughs> Oh. 
The pricing here for the steaks, it's per, per 100 grams, is that it? So that price is not the total price. It is like 11 euro per 100 grams for that huge steak right there. So that's an expensive So he put the greens under the steak so it would have the drippings on it. It would be delicious. What is that that he just cut? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's the uh you want to stay? Well, I want. She's gonna. Yeah. Okay. Now yeah. it's. I don't need it. Yeah, it's it's one kilo. Yeah. And it's three pounds. Yeah. I'm just gonna have like. Yeah. Yeah. They're gonna eat some. Mark's gonna eat some. So I think one is fine. Yeah. Yeah. That's what we have. We don't need more than one. We're negotiating steak. <laughs> so they, they have to weigh it and know the weight because it's charged by the uh, ounce or however they weigh And it's written how much it is. Can I ask how, how many pounds it is? Or do they that one's 1.2 kilos. So ours that we're getting is a little, is it bigger or smaller? Oh, we're getting both. So we got two steaks for the table. <laughs> So to make real polenta, you have to stir it for 30 minutes, so this automatically stirs it for 30 minutes. <laughs> That takes talent.
So those are our two states. <laughs> Such skill. <laughs> That, that I partly because it, it was work related, partly because when I met her, she was halfway through, she was a year through a uh, Master's of Science, uh, and it focused on the leadership aspect, but at the same time, you're doing projects to do consulting work with outside companies. Uh, is it, I don't know that I'm doing it justice in its description. It's, and it was in this program. This, this is our steak now. <laughs> I'm gonna get this angle. I have competition. I want to know. 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 I want Michelin star for their restaurant. 
I don't know if they lost it, but um, I think they lost it over COVID. Amazing food. Delicious. Oh, look at my gnocchi. Okay. They're trying to kill me with my last meal here. So I guess we have one more in Rome tomorrow. Oh my gosh. This is gnocchi. It's like a big potato dumpling. Yeah, right? I know. Mm. I'm not sure what's on top. Is it truffle? Oh, it's truffle. I'm with all the, the smart people here. <laughs> yeah, she got a chicken. It's amazing. Oh my god, this is so good. Mm. It's veal chips. Veal chips. Yum. I'll <laughs> <laughs> watch you eat it. <laughs> Having a bite of the veal. That's this. Mm. I think the veal might actually be better than the steak. That that is really good. Well, that's good too. But did you have the veal? The veal tip is amazing. Oh my god, delicious. Mm. So I'm, I'm chasing the tortellini. What was the tortellini with ricotta? With cream and sausage. Okay, cream and sausage tortellini. Mmm. Mmm. I really love Yeah. What is the name of this restaurant? Does anybody know? No germs. <laughs> it's delicious. Whoa. And it's owned by the hotel that we're at. Somebody has to know the name of it. What's the name of the restaurant? Chiesa Tonda. Say it again. Chiesa Tonda. It's written on his... Oh! <laughs> on his apron. <laughs> it means round church. Chiesa, Chiesa Tonda. <laughs> Delicioso. Chicken. That. Oh. oh, I'm just gonna take a video. That's prosciutto and something. But yes, we finished it. <laughs> the lamb for me and tell me how good it is. <laughs> so we, we finished both of these steaks. <laughs> we almost finished all the wine. Alessia is making sure we finished it. <laughs> nice. Nice. And so us who like white don't get as much wine as those who like red. Grazia. I have to remember the uh at the end. Grazia. 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 I like that it's cold. It's exactly what we need next to this heat. It's very hot. That's what we got going. Yes. Pino's very proud of us for eating yeah. all the steak. <laughs> Yum. <laughs> and meat fire, we had that already. The pastry with chantilly cream, chocolate, and nuts. And we have the chocolate 
a white chocolate uh, cake, oh, okay. pistachios, and hazelnut ice cream. Cosmic cardinal We have a cranberry with mango and hazelnut. And where is We this? have a little crostata uh, with uh, salted apple I'll have to cream. eat there. I'm in, in we have spaghetti. Usually once a week. Okay. I'm usually there on I think I'm a Thursdays, Tuesdays or Thursdays. Do you want to split it? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is the most beautiful tournament to the whole trip. That's a big bite. Though. Yeah. Yeah. I have no idea what this is, but it looks really good. It's called Super Inglesia. Super Inglesia. English soup. Mm. It's really different. Super Inglesia. Inglesia? Inglesia. Like English? English. Inglesia. Inglesia. Chocolate. We thought it was too much. We've only been drinking a little bit. <laughs> I would like to remember tomorrow. Uh, uh, eight forty. Eight forty. Put the bags outside the room, and the guys they are going to take care of that. And um, check in your hotel bill, whatever, tonight because tomorrow morning maybe there's going to be a long line. Because we would like to live in an assault with Marina to some time. Okay? Uh, follow Marina, she knows where she's okay. going. Okay, awesome dinner tonight. Taxi is back. So it's night camp. And I got a tiramisu liqueur, Ooh. thanks to my beautiful new friend. I love it. Is it good? Oh my god. Good pick. You love it. Oh my god, it's so good. Oh. It's a tiramisu liqueur. How could you not like that? It's very good. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> they think we didn't eat enough tonight. What is that? I don't know. Apple cake, I would say. Oh, apple cake. <laughs> well, it is my last morning here in beautiful Spello. Gorgeous. We are heading back to Rome today. So uh, they wanted the bags outside by 8.40 a.m., which is great actually for a, a group tour. Usually they're like 6 a.m. bags out. <laughs> so that's actually kind of nice. Sorry, my room is a little bit of a mess. <laughs> but um, I'm gonna show you the hallway here. Easy. I just put my bags out. Everybody's putting their bags out. We're going to stay at the Hilton Hotel, which is in the Rome Airport tonight. So it's going to be a really easy trip home tomorrow. Oh, I can't believe it. It's ended already. So 
that's what everybody is saying is how it goes really slow at first and then before you know it it's over and you're going home and you're like what you're really gonna miss everybody here you've become such good friends and it's so much fun um, to be together so it's a transition to go back to real life <sighs> And you have this every day to wake up to. So don't forget to take your key and go check out. <laughs> Taking out of uh, two and two. So you charge for breakfast coffees? No, for breakfast, no. Um, oh, at night? Afternoon. Oh. In the afternoon and in the evening. Oh, okay. I didn't realize. All right. 15 euro? 15. Uh, how many? Oh, 30 euro. Uh, do you do Apple Pay? Do you know what that is? <laughs> it was 13 euro. Yes. Gracias. All right, we'll grab one last breakfast before we go. Good morning. Hey. Hmm, what is that today? I don't know what that. Oh, if those are those fruits that we had the other day. Mm, it's my favorite here those today. <laughs> I have to have it. <laughs> so this has been my go-to breakfast here. <laughs> Last morning. <laughs> Saying goodbye to our beautiful hotel. just want to sit here and listen to the birds <laughs> one last time. <laughs> Are they just carrying around wine? <laughs> yeah, <it's> my baby. <laughs> <laughs> okay, off to Rome. We have a, until about 11.30 when we're doing a wine tasting. That's supposed to be fabulous, so can't wait to show you. Oh, let's just stay. <laughs> There's our fabulous host and driver. Buongiorno. 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 I hope you enjoyed your stay in Spello and uh, we are gonna have uh, about one and a half hour drive to uh, Castiglione, Intivirina, Castiglione, Intivirina. Castiglione Intivirina where we are gonna have uh, a wine tasting at 11 and uh, so you have time to relax now whoever is tired I will try not to disturb. <laughs> Enjoy the ride. To see Civita di Pagnoreggio over there. That's where we started. Right. So we stopped for a wine tasting. Um, Castiglione. <laughs> So it's, uh, it's a complex made with uh, a sculpture garden where we, we start to visit now. 
you got the winery and th then you got the hospitality the kind of uh, small hotel where people can rent and uh, staying here over uh, weeks or days so it's kind of property that uh, mrs and mr damico build for the last 30 35 years and uh, there is no architect it's all the their own family taste especially from the mrs noemia damico uh, with the wife of dr paolo and uh, so it's a really cozy and personal uh, feeling that that they, they would like you you feel today <laughs> so we start with the different sculptures sculpture uh, the winery uh, Is, is Aww, the of The wife is coming from Naples, so uh, this kind of to remind her of her old limoncello. So this was their first thing here on this side. Uh, it is from 1985. It's an old Chardonnay grape. We will taste it later. <laughs> All right. I've been here before. <laughs> I figured. Oh. <laughs> it's a bar. It's a bar. Oh, the pool's up there. Smells good up here too. So here you got the best sculpture <laughs> from modern <laughs> Asia. We know you like it, and this is what we call the Kalanki Valley. So Kalanki, uh, that kind of the, uh, green canyon, was built over the years by the volcanic activity. So we are on the volcanic soil that was that will be really important for the wine we will taste uh, later. And so this is our landscape and from people, from local people, this is one of the best spots in this area. Mm. And on the horizon, you can see uh, right in front of you, you can see Civita di Bagnoreggio. So one of the mm. most famous places uh, around here. And it's uh, the, called the Dying Village because it's a small village on the top of the rock and it's keep let's say falling apart so uh, it will disappear one day and uh, get a lot yeah just be becoming more and more uh, famous over the years and this is the, the view from the back so the the real view is uh, on the other side there's little lizards Every time I have to put down my camera, they run. There they are. <laughs> Cuties. So there's the indoor pool in here. You can, um, I believe this is a hotel I can book for you, but I have to find that out. Oh, this is lovely. I wish I was here yesterday after my hike. <laughs>
So first, they planted the vineyard in 1985, the Chardonnay, we will taste uh, later. And then they start to build the, the winery with the, the two folk. Uh, it's the local rock, it's the volcanic rock. Uh, you will hear it a lot about uh, me talking about the volcanic soil, the two folk, that's our identity. It's about the Kalanki uh, Valley. And uh, this place was, so was built, uh, was ready in 93, and it's corresponding to the expansion of the vineyard and the real, the real start of the business. Before it was more the own family consumption, the wine, and then it turned into, uh, let's say, a, a bigger business. We're still a family winery, today we reach 31 hectares, so it's, it's not a huge vineyard, it's still family size. Uh, winery and we're doing uh, about uh, 200, a little bit more than 200,000 bottles uh, a year. So I'm the vineyard manager, the winemaker, and all the production is organic. <coughs> so uh, our goal is not only make wine, but it's only make wine with the identity <coughs> of the place where it's made and uh, being the, the more, most uh, healthy as we can and even on the other side having the responsibility to protect uh, the landscape you just saw, the, the Kalanki Valley. So basically the winery is divided in two parts. You get the aging part we'll see later and this is the wine making part on that side. Uh, different way of making wine. So you got the stainless steel on the right to, for the freshness, for the flavor to keep nice uh, the wine nice and fresh. So we're doing uh, two kinds of Chardonnay, one Chardonnay in stainless steel and another one in uh, oak barrel. So you can have different uh, flavors, different versions of two, two kinds of wine, the Chardonnay. And then you can see the, the Amphora, so that's kind, kind of new in the, in the history. So we're doing a 100% Grigetto with a local variety made in the Amphora. So basically it's, a, it's back in the, in the history, like the Romans, uh, because the, the Romans uh, used to travel the wine in the Amphora, while the French used to uh, move the wine in the barrel. Uh, so that's kind of still attached to the classic, to the, to the culture of the territory. Il est français. <laughs> <laughs> That's why Italy is so nice because you can have some uh, really unknown places and that's such beautiful and unique in the world. Yeah. Obviously, we doing harvest, we hand picked the, the grapes, so it's a uh, it's about 20 people coming over uh, for the harvest period. We got 31 hectares, we got the harvest period is about uh, more than one month, so quite long, uh, long time for that much of, of vineyard, but just uh, walking by the, in the morning to get fresh <coughs> grapes and not having the, let's say, too, too warm, too hot grapes, then to start vinification and, and the pressing. So here, basically the, the grapes are coming here in 25 keys boxes to, to keep the, the grapes uh, healthy and, and not squish, squish them. Then you got a soft table to avoid all the little uh, piece of uh, leaves, branch or cane or all the kind of insects as we are looking to be the most natural possible and in order to have only the best in the press or in the tank. So that's one of the most, um, my job is more 100% in the vineyard uh, putting all the effort to have the most healthy grapes and then being more hands off in the winery, having letting the wines is our own, building his own identity, the personality of the vintage. Uh, as we are a small winery, we need to have an identity. And the identity here, we, we find it in the soil, in the volcanic soil that is quite rare in the, in the wine world. All about nature. And this is mostly the red white, uh, the red making wine part. So here we're doing the Merlot, the Cabernet uh, and Pinot Noir. So, and on the bottom. The bottling machine. And this is the bar one just
So what is important in this place, it's uh, basically, we, we did our work earlier. So uh, my job was to bring in healthy grapes. We, we get the fermentation, we get the wine stable. I choose the right uh, toasting barrel, the right type of barrel for the maturity of the vintage. And then here, it's just the time was working on the wine. <laughs> we used to say that maybe the frequency of the, the of some music could have an impact, positive impact on the wine. Uh, I knew I know some uh, viticulture, uh, some winery who put music in the vineyard. Yeah, because I, that there the, is some yeah. scientific studies about plants uh, growing yeah. differently with music. So. Exactly, exactly. About about wines, there is nothing uh, yeah, specially, but say, say, uh, yeah. But uh, we like to think that way. Yeah. yeah. So here is about about our history, uh, the different vintage uh, we did over the years. And uh, yeah, tasting. Mom? Yeah. For you, so we we're doing in a, a total of nine wines uh, from the the easy one. We will taste five of them. Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> ah, uh, name Noe. Noe is the short name for this is Noelia. Of easy drinking wine, easy to understand the wine based on the flavors, on the freshness. And um, we already speak for us from where we are. So even on the first wine, the first taste we have from the territory, we will feel the minerality at the, end, at the end of the palate, kind of sapidity. And that's typical from the volcanic soil. So you can see on the nose, we got, we got a nice fragrance, uh, quite nice complexity about the flavors. So you've been to Oviedo, right? Yes. Yeah, so you see the, the Duomo and uh, all the vineyards. So that's the part, the, uh, the extension from the Oviedo vineyard until here, so the vineyard is five uh, 100 meters from the winery, so just the, the, the next to the road there, and it's one block vineyard. So that's all it was planted with the Greghetto, the Trebbiano, and the Pinot Grigio. So the Greghetto, let's, let's say it's the noble part of the blend, it's the, the most uh, well known uh, and famous uh, grape that we have here. We have here, and then the Trebbiano, Trebbiano is the the big grapes, big berries, making a lot of juice, so a bit less interesting uh, than the than the Greghetto on the flavors or on the on the whole wine, let's say. But it's giving the softness to the blend and give some uh, some structure to the wine, the body of the wine. And then, of course, you got the Pinot Grigio, the variety you you all know, used to know, and uh, only thirty percent, but it just gives the richness on the flavors and uh, give a, a little push on the acidity, on the freshness of the wine. So everyone gets his own role in the blend that makes uh, well-balanced wine at the end. <laughs> Cheers! So this wine, you can, um, so it's 
looking for the flavors, for the easy, easy to drink, easy to understand wine. So hit that kind of wine for the, the appetizer, happy hour, buy the glass, for, uh, or you can match some antipasti. But um, don't, then, it's not, then we got other wine to pair with food, more gastronomic wine. But this one is just, you know, enjoying wine of glass without meditation, you know, <laughs> no, no need to, to wait three hours. But um, yeah, just the, you know, the easy uh, pairing uh, with some, uh, some vegetable, green vegetable could, could be nice. Uh, you know, good product with a nice and fresh wine. Uh, that's gonna make and the, the flavors are not like the Sauvignon who is overpowered uh, by the variety that Sauvignon is still not not all the time easy to pair with food this one we 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 st staying on the fruit uh, stone fruit flavors on the white flowers flavors a little bit of, of uh, spices when it's really uh, getting a little bit warmer and then the minerality we just call the second glass then uh, so yeah more of a wine to enjoy and to to pair with some little uh, uh, finger food, let's say. <laughs> this one is a Calanchi di Vallano, 2021, 100% uh, Chardonnay, but only stainless steel, no oak and no malolactic. So that's after the fermentation. This one stayed, the first one uh, stayed on the lees for five months. This one stay for eight months. So uh, we're looking for uh, higher complexity. You say on the nose, the complexity means uh, more, more uh, different family. About so you got the fruit, you got uh, still here, you got more the yellow flowers and the white flowers before. And uh, then when it, it's a bit cold at the moment, but you got some white paper coming out, uh, some multi-channel and herbs. Uh, so all the richness from the Chardonnay, but all the volcanic soil, because it just matches with the um, uh, saffron, the mm -hmm. zafferano, saffron, mm -hmm. uh, get over, get over the, um, the red onions, you get over so many spices, and I mean, that, that kind of wine, you don't know what to bring to a friend when you're invited, you bring it, you will never make a bad, um, a, a bad gift, let's say. It will always fit. It, you can have it, you can enjoy it uh, on the, uh, on the app, uh, appetizer, you know, just having a glass of wine, enjoying the, the complexity, or then really pairing with food. And then by the time of the meal, so again, not about one hour, two hours in the decanter, but 20 minutes, half an hour of, uh, of time of the meal, the wine just evolving so much. Like now in five minutes, just think about uh, half an hour. And that kind of wine will tell you the story of the vintage. When you got nothing, because all the wines could be vegan too. I'm a vegan, but just to let you know, all the wines that we're putting nothing. There is no fining, no product added during the, the process, during the winemaking process. And so that kind of wine, while well, healthy in that way, is the one who tell you the story, the story of the vintage. So over the summer, did the plant suffer through the drought or was too much water? Did the crop ending well or was anticipated because of the road, because of the bad condition? Or we got the full uh, ripe uh, grapes because it was a uh, very nice weather? Or at the other side, at Noah today, it was too hot and the grapes get cooked in the, in the vineyard. So that kind of wine, because then it's not killed by some product or um, had some product to make it for the market. That's a wine we're doing for our, our soil, for where it's come from. So that kind of wine should t tell you the story. And that's about wine. That's why so wine is so different than the other beverage. When you get the new release about the new vintage, oh, what about the vintage? It's to keep, it's to drink right away, uh, two, two years, we have to, to wait five, eight years. That's really why people love, why we are a wine lover. Because it's so different. And even when you get a gift to, to make, uh, when you, you get the born year uh, from the wine, it's always a huge pleasure for everyone. So let's make wine so different and approachable. Going on the Falesia, with another version of 100% uh, Chardonnay. But this one is the oaky one. So this is the one 
avec plaisir. This one, the first one was only stainless steel, normal lactic, no oil, pure expression of the volcanic soil. This one here is fermented and aged in French oak barrel, the, the one you saw uh, in front of the, the tank. And here, so all the wines is 100% barrel, but only 20% new. The meaning is using the, the, the oak like a tool and not a weapon, not killing the wines, let's say. So if you want to see about Bordeaux wines, go to my YouTube channel and look at my Viking video when I was in Bordeaux. <laughs> <laughs> and winemaker. Mm. Okay, so it's it's a two uh, completely two different world. Um, winemaker, even if it, I don't really like that 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 uh, word because it's making wine. It's more in in French. You, we say we elaborate the wine because making is like making a recipe. Mm. It's not a recipe. It's what we we obtain the grapes you obtain after one year. Uh, of the in the vineyard, the maturity from the vintage once again, and never forget about wine. If you miss something, it's not like you can shell and retry. No, wait one more year, <laughs> another year, and then you yeah. never know if you get the same good grapes, same nice maturity the next year. So it's still quite challenging. And um, so the winemakers really, the the, the enologist is really the one who was made, made make the, the grapes fermenting, then doing putting in the barrel or in the amphore or staying in the tank. Uh, get the schedule the bottling up of the, the kind of wine you want, some structured wine, some uh, aromatic white wines, some you know more complex white wines, some rosé, some bubbles. But and the other end the sommelier is the one present in the restaurant with very nice to prepare food and wine, more them than, than me, than the, the winemaker, even if it's still interesting, obviously. Uh, and they got, let's say, they never touch a pump, they never touch a tank, they never, or for the most part of them, they never work in the winery, but they have a lot of knowledge, a fantastic knowledge about the wine world. I mean, you, normally when you get a very good one, you can speak about almost every region, every wine in the world. That's I'm not about you know knowing everything a little bit. I'm more like I used to work. I used to work in different chateaux in France, in Bordeaux. As you did, I graduated. Uh, I'm from Alsace, and I graduated mm -hmm. in Burgundy. Uh, then after the, I get graduated, I I worked in California, Truchard Vineyard, small family um, winery. I used to work in Australia, same small family winery, and in Hungary because they make the Tokai wine the best sweet wine in the world, the, the wine of king and the king of wine. Um, and that is more about going in a place, knowing the culture, knowing the winemaking, that's knowing a little bit of everything. So that's different, you know, it's different uh, job, different uh, passions. And uh, so that's just to tell you about the two differences between sommelier, with more than the contact with the people at the restaurant and uh, the winemaker who, you know, more between the vineyards. <laughs> And having a specific driving license. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the most, um, the, the free wines that means the most for, for us. The Orvieto is the local variety, obviously. Uh, still fresh. I, I always like to start the tasting with the Orvieto to get the, the palace ready, to get on the, not on the too big wine from the beginning, but some fresh and um, and a nice and already having a touch with the minority. When I started the wine business, people used to say, judge a winery on the first wine, because the most expensive wine will always be good. Because <laughs> all the attention, all the, you know, not paying attention on the cost or, uh, but the true is the mo less expensive one, the first wine of the winery, the entry level wine, that's to tell you the truth about the, about the winery. And I think you see the identity, the minority from from the beginning. And uh, then the Chardonnay, the Calanqui for me is the best expression there. Then the Falesia with another uh, face of the, of the Chardonnay. And I like to say that everyone got his own personality, but they're all linked to the minerality. And as we are a small family estate, it's, it's important to us to demonstrate uh, that, that, uh, that characteristic in the wine. Mm. Now we're going on the first red, which is called Villa Tirena. 
And this is a Merlot and Syrah blend from 2019. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, things about the volcanic soil. The Syrah here, the volcanic soil doesn't show up really like one is expecting with all that spiciness and all that complexity. So instead, I told you we have to be true to, 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 uh, to have an identity uh, um, to survive on the market. And instead of doing 100% Syrah wine, but we don't have really the, the characteristic of the quality not to be uh, alone, we just decided to blend it with the Merlot and let's say the character of the Merlot and you think you, you have the character of the Merlot and the generosity of the Syrah and uh, it's a it's a lovely blend. This one stay then uh, 12 months in the French oak barrel, same as the Falesia, only 20% of new oak to, to stay on the fruity part on the, on the, from the variety. And then 2019 was a nice and fully ripe vintage, so this one is um, but let's say this is the uh, ready to drink red. Let's say not too, you know, not too tannic, not too, uh, not too big. Mm -hmm. uh, we got some tannin. Uh, you, you know, you can appreciate like this, but it's better with paring with food. Okay, I was waiting for him to tell me to use. And so you see how it flavors. You, you, you smell, you smell the barrel, mm -hmm. some uh, oak flavors. So this is still young. And that kind of wine you can age for 10, 15 years easily, uh, or appreciate it now. Mm. And um, then we got some bigger, bigger wine. This is but really that's the, the red, you see, I like, even the, the very nice color that show you that it was mild. a fully ripe vintage. <laughs> and then uh, don't have any harsh tannin or, um, so it's really well balanced and well integrated, well integrated in the... <laughs> The last red? Yes, the last red. The Atlante with 100% Cap Franc. Cabernet Franc. Take the time. I, oh, that's a good idea. I couldn't give away this red wine. This was a hard one to give away. <laughs> yeah. So do you want to do it? So this is great. You don't you don't use the little the dump can. You have to give everybody else your wine, or you get in trouble. <laughs> Nap time. Maybe I have it on the suitcase. <laughs> My fellow Alsatian. <laughs> <laughs> So no, you know iPhone yeah. charger. It's like yeah. not USB. So Mine is. <laughs> Let's see to have a symbol that to make premium Cabernet in, uh, in Lazio here. And all the difference is by the volcanic soil. This one is the last grapes to pick. So we start about end of August with the Chardonnay and the Pinot Grigio uh, from the Noé. And then it's all, always ending up with the Cabernet uh, the first day of October. <laughs> Cheers, thanks for coming. Thanks for coming here. This is love. This is true love. Oh. Because I don't like to share my own. She owns you now. She owns you now. So, this is a beautiful winery experience, really different from all the wineries I've been to around the world. Um, as you know, if you follow me, I've been to Napa, Bordeaux, and um, wineries everywhere. Um, this is really beautiful wine, delicious. 
amazing. Um, and this is a great place to stay. I would love to book you in this hotel. So please let me let me help you book your next dream vacation. <laughs> So the thing about wine or wine tastings is you buy the wine. So it's not just about uh, drinking and eating, but there is a price list. I can't. My dad told me you're not supposed to drink wine. Merci beaucoup. Avec plaisir. C'est un plaisir de vous avoir. Ravi de votre visite et vive l'Alsace. Vive l'Alsace. <laughs> so this this winery, this wine tasting is extremely different from the usual wine tasting. It's like it reminds me a little bit of the Napa Valley tastings where you're in the cave, um, private, doing the tastings. But I mean, it's an amazing chateau. It's just just gorgeous and beautiful. <laughs> Luciano is here waiting. Yep. Oh. The boss says we got to keep it the best for the last. <laughs> and I hope, really hope that you like it. I love it. Mm -hmm. And uh, now we are going for lunch. I don't know how much food I'm going to have. But more wine. Yeah, more oh, wine. Oh, but uh, in, in any case, the, now the driving now is going to be only 10 minutes or so. Uh. And uh, after lunch, we go to the airport, and uh, Hilton Hotel is waiting for us. From the hotel, the, from uh, lunch to the hotel, I think one hour and a half. Good. Nap time. Uh, yeah, <laughs> nap time. Yes, correct. And uh, last thing, I'm already crying, but. Alessia, she's not going to be with us tonight. That means if you want to say ciao to her. No. If you want to hug me, three hugs. Three hugs. Uh, I guess we have a problem. Oh no. Maybe you drunk too much wine and uh, there is too much weight. <laughs> and, and the back of the van, the bus, touch uh, the floor. Now we gotta see. Oh no. Don't wear cookies for you. No, the, pro the no. problem is you, Corey, because you're in the back. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> Luciano solves the problems. Oh, oh, yeah, Luciano! You said the other day that was the best winery you ever seen uh, in the old Thompson wineries. What about today? Yeah. Today is like on steroids the best <laughs> winery in the world. It really is beautiful. Sorry, one sec, and uh, I don't want to remind you, uh, remind you about Raro or whatever. But <laughs> thanks to Raro, the friendship. I don't know if you notice the quantity ah. of the wine every time. Ah. It was, it yeah, was a they good, were healthy it doses. was a good taste. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think we're at the restaurant for lunch. Yeah. Yeah. Grazie. Grazie. <laughs> Grazie. Yeah. Grazie. Oh. 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 Oh.
They are friends of uh, mine. Uh -huh. They were. Uh, <laughs> Ciao, Lainey. Ciao, Lainey. Ciao. 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 Come andata? Benissimo. Ok. Bione, eh? E che non risponde a questo ragazzo? Sì, with Raro, you're a VIP because everybody knows everybody in this country. We get special treatment everywhere we go. It's all relationships. There's already. Oh. <laughs> See you again. Welcome back. Back, grazie. Ciao. Quanti siete? Così poi inizio a preparare io. Guarda, noi stiamo mangiando un po' di Vogliamo vedere. Prima di tutto vogliamo vedere. I'm not sure which is still. That's yeah. Oh, it looks beautiful. That's yeah. I like it. Oh, with the zucchini. Oh, they're amazing. What is that? It's like green. It's green. Let's not define it. It's like reusing the ingredients. Like green chip. Like rice. With mozzarella. Oh. There's more. <laughs> There's more. What? Oh, what is that? Oh, that looks good. Do you want some of these peppers? Oh. Uh, yes. Yeah. Oh, you do it with your finger. We call it after that, you know, I Just as you want. Just one up for this one. One up for this one. You told me last time on the one screen though. Why would you have to do that? One more. Are we safe for one more? I'm going to put my pulse on. This is what I'm going to miss most. And because this one I have a Never been. Tomorrow I'll be like, Yeah, for being just onions. Yeah, it's like yeah. Alessia, what's this called? Oh, and the alfredo with onions. That's all. Perfect. Sì, ma li vesti tutti da. Quando li conosco, 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 an example. Ascolta, ascolta.
called me if I need video because I was recording Facebook and some people like the um, mother experience to drive. Oh, you? Yeah, but I can do the same if you need something. Are you responsible for that? For what is the campaign? I don't feel like uh, I have to speak. So the uh, right also gave us like this bread with cheese that looks amazing. What is that? Okay. That is layered on there. Uh, as far as what is in it, uh, maybe there's some kind of uh, meat. Maybe there's a. <laughs> Corey, you are not being helpful. I am not. <laughs> uh, that looks like ham or bacon. Uh, I think that's a pepper. Pasticcio. It is pasticcio. This is guanciale. And this one is a porro. It's a porro is a white like really onion. Hungry. See. <laughs> all, of, all of the above. <laughs> I don't need more pasta or meat. Oh, okay. If anyone has a wish, it's Stella. Otherwise, I would ask for the dessert. What do they have for desserts? Yeah, I would ask. Oh, okay. Because <laughs> they were wanting to bring us all the food, and I think we're not going to eat all the food. Yeah. I would ask. <laughs> Okada. This is the house wine, and they sell it. They uh, serve it in pitchers. You could kill somebody and put them in the desert. You know, bad idea. <laughs> Wine, I guess. Uh, we are 16. Oh, baby, <laughs> I don't drink uh, limoncello. You take care of me. This is water. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Show me your water. <laughs> so everything else I'm saying. How do you feel? Really good. Yeah. Good. Besides, Drew is gonna oh, get Drew. green again. Oh. 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 So we're gonna have. Uh, <laughs> so we're gonna have um, one and a half to two hours drive. So just uh, relax, enjoy the ride. Uh, then we get to the Hilton Hotel at the airport. It's just in front of the airport. So tomorrow you don't just don't need to. You just need to walk five to ten minutes through the to the. Um, check-in area and um, dinner will be at eight o'clock if you want to join it if you don't just write in the group and that's fine or if you just want to come for a drink it's also okay I will um, help with check-in and then uh, say goodbye to everyone oh. and I know please hug me oh. I will be also sad I know and um, yeah, so that's all I wanted to say. It's nothing else. I hope you enjoyed the last day of our trip. It was fabulous.
from Chibitavecchia, but it is a full day trip. So you need to have a lot of time to be able to get to Orvieto or one of these cute little villages that we visited. And then you can only spend a little time there before having to go back. But all of those are wonderful options as well if you happen to be coming to Italy. walkway from the Hilton straight over to the terminal. Fabulous. So to check in you use your passport. If you are a Hilton Honors Diamond and Gold, you get priority. <laughs> Size bed, is that correct? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Finish with this. Thank you. I see you also have the breakfast included, so tomorrow morning you can go to the restaurant start, starting from 6 a.m. until 10 p.m. Middle of the corridor on the right side. If you wish, the same restaurant will be open tonight for the dinner from 6 a.m. sorry, until 11. <laughs> okay. Can I offer you some water? Uh, I'll have one water, yes. Regular? Yes. Right, and then the Hilton Honors number on there too. Uh, but it's all still in the city? Yes. Okay. Okay. This way on the right. Now it's all five. So as a uh, little member, you will be able to use the Wi-Fi with your last name and the number, okay? Okay, great. Thank, Thank you. you. Alright. So when you get off the elevator, you can go a few different ways. Depending on your room number, I am down this hallway. 2037. It's a huge hotel. <laughs> Let's see. Doesn't like me. Oh, there we go. Okay. All right. This thing, bathroom. Oh, I hope I have shampoo and conditioner today. There's both the bidet and the toilet. <laughs> and then there's a closet with a blow dryer and safe, iron and ironing board, a little drawer, put your um, suitcase on, coffee maker, and I got a king size bed. And a desk today, yay, I need the desk. And let's see what our beautiful view is here. <laughs> uh, part of the airport somewhere, not sure where. So next to the bed, there are some switches. I don't see a USB port. Let's see. Um, phone. Over here, you have the standard Italy plugs, 
And again, oh wait, there is an electric under here. Under this, we have a plug so I can plug in my CPAP. Alrighty. This dead here in Celsius. <laughs> this is the Hilton Hotel La Cumi <laughs> at FCO Airport. Most fabulous people here. <laughs> I get free Wi Fi because I'm Hilton Honors, um, and there is free Wi Fi in public areas. The business center. And fitness center. This is the bar and the restaurant which we're coming to tonight. There's some conference rooms. This way, let's look at the fitness center. They have a locker room in here. Showers. <laughs> they have a sauna. Ooh, that's nice. <laughs> and then they have a fitness area here. <laughs> and it looks like a pool. <laughs> oh, and a hot tub. Okay. There is a pool here, yay. I'm gonna go get my swimsuit on. register to go they give you a little cap <laughs> and um, <laughs> in the towel not a hot tub exactly it's a lukewarm tub <laughs> they have these little bikes too which is kind of cute They have tennis courts. I'm not sure what that is. We have dinner tonight at 8 o'clock for our last dinner. It's about 6.30 now, so I'm only going to swim for a little bit, and then I'm going to go get ready for dinner. Oh, it's been a fabulous trip. I can't tell you how much I love Raro. I really do. They do such a great job. I really hope all of you book with me, book Raro, because I really think they're fabulous, and I'd like to support them to make sure that they can do more trips. They have such a great concept. What was that? <laughs> oh, it's filling up my, it's filling up my bottles. <laughs> so this is the sauna. It's actually co-ed. 
So there is a door from the men's and a door from the women's locker rooms. I was a little confused because there was a man in here. <laughs> and I thought it was woman only. Okay, let's go. That was, so this is the way in from the women's and that's from the men's. Oh, they have blow dryers here, but they don't have um, combs or anything. Hours, they don't have shampoo and conditioner in here either. Room. Oh, that's a steam room. Uh, I'm not going in the steam. <laughs> it's time for our last dinner with Raro. It's so sad. I'm exhausted. I can't wait to sleep. <laughs> Thank goodness I have a long plane trip home. Oh, hopefully I can sleep the whole way. Um, it's better not to sleep on your way back to America, though, to catch up on your jet lag. Better to sleep on your way to Europe and not on the way home. Uh, so, of course, we're meeting at the bar. Where else? Okay, so these are the drinks. Thank you. I'm so excited to have some grapefruit. Finally. Mm. Perfect. Oh, I'm making this home. I'll be home tomorrow. Right, so dinner is here. Look at these. These people all got cheeseburgers. What? Look at this. They're in Italy last night and they're eating cheeseburgers. <laughs> so wrong. I'm having a lasagna. <laughs> oh, that was me. No, I had lasagna. <laughs> lasagna. <laughs> they, they had the burger. I think he did. Two burgers, yeah? All right, so this is, Hilton is, you know, an Americanized restaurant, but it's our last day in Italy. I'm not going to go back and have hamburgers like all of these people. <laughs> I'm going to have my last night of Italian food. So hopefully they, they did it well. So I don't know if I ever told you, but I used to manage the Hilton Hotel restaurants. That was what I did in 1990, no, wait a second, in 1986 in Charlottesville, Virginia. So I love Hilton, my old home. Mm. Mm. Okay. I mean, it's good, but it's certainly not the Italian food we've been getting at these amazing restaurants. But it's still good. It's delicious. Thank you, Hilton. <laughs> No. We are offering appreciation for Yes. Thank you, Pino. Yay. You knew this was coming. That was your choice to take a bite. It's been a wonderful trip from my perspective. Yes. We miss Alessia. But the odds are for you guys, you all. Except Maria, everybody was on time. <laughs> <laughs> uh... <laughs> I start today. I don't know the people. <laughs> I'm, I'm sad. Are we? Yeah. <laughs> Yay. Thank you, Rara. Thank you. Good job, Pina. I can goodbye. It's so sad. I need to like you on Facebook. Just wanted to say goodbye to Italy. Well, it's over. I am headed over to the airport for my trip back to Austin today. God, it's been such a fabulous trip. 
and this Hilton is in such a great location, so I, uh, I have a really easy walk over to the airport. At breakfast, uh, we get a free breakfast at the hotel. Oh, it's nice to have a good breakfast on our last day. Here. It's the good stuff. <laughs> Can I get a black coffee? Black coffee. Yeah, Americano. Americano. Um, it's made to order. <laughs> Grazie. It's a delicious American breakfast before I go off uh, on my long trip. It's about a uh, it's about a nine hour flight to JFK and then I'm catching another flight to Austin tonight to be home tonight. <laughs> It's a little chilly today. <laughs> um, it's been definitely jacket weather, uh, end of April here. Lots of rain, <laughs> cold weather. So don't think this is beach weather when you come in the springtime. It's an exit right from the buffet. I didn't even realize it. <laughs> I guess there's a line for the elevator to get over. Like pretty big elevators. <laughs> Tight. <laughs> okay, easy peasy. <laughs> All right, now we're in the walkway over to the airport. <laughs> so, if you need a luggage trolley, you can pick one up over here in the morning and then take it uh, over to the hotel and bring it back with you. This is where you can pick up some trolleys here. <laughs> it's a long way over to the terminal. <laughs> I think we've done three. <laughs> I think we've done three um, walkways so far. Okay. <laughs> so I'm in terminal three. So straight ahead. You could go to Terminal 1 to the right. They have some um, lounges right at the front here. <laughs> Not crowded so far. You can get a train here also. Um, I'm still going to three. <laughs> so they have <clears throat> showers, air rooms, meeting rooms. I think we made it to the airport now. <laughs> okay, so we are going to Terminal 3. Departures is down one level. So I don't check a bag, and so I just go straight through to security. I have my boarding pass because I did my online check-in 24 hours in advance, which you all should do. Um, you do check in here at these kinds of number gates, so find out what numbers you're supposed to go to. And I am off. 
to security. Okay, well, they told me I was at the wrong security gate, so I have to go to the right all the way down, she said, for New York. It's a little crowded here, but it's not too bad. All right, so still going down. Okay, okay. So this one is British Airways. If you want to exchange your euros, you can change it here. All right, so this one is for American Air Canada, Delta, Israel Air, Arkea, and United. All right, so <laughs> I have to go from door six from the outside to do this. Door six. Hmm, okay, so I'm at door four. So you can see the doors are numbered on the outside. I'm not sure why I couldn't walk on the inside, but that's fine. Okay, so door six. <laughs> All right, so now I need security here. Delta. All right, because I already have my boarding pass, I just go through to security this way. <laughs> so you would check in in these lines over here if you need to check your bag or show them your passport. Oh, flights to the USA downstairs. Yay, that is me. I'm going to New York. Okay, well that was Delta. They wanted me to go through the American security. So I have to go all the way to the end here. Let's see. <laughs> so now I'm at American. <laughs> I do have TSA pre. Wow, direct flights to the USA this way. All right, so it's a little different than I expected, but we are good. All, and so this is United right here checking in. We're going straight to New York. You can check and make sure they didn't change your gate. <laughs> We're leaving all their waters here. We're going through. Fast track. Okay, you scan through to get through there. And now security. TSA pre this way. Okay, that was super easy. Now on to the gates. Next is passport control. All right, so citizens to, of the EU to the left and third country nationals to the right, that's us. All passports. Orange line. My flight is boarding at about 9.40 and I left the hotel around 8 a.m. to make sure I had plenty of time and that was without checking a bag. <laughs> All right. So this is your last chance to buy some stuff. So you can check your gate here and there is a priority pass lounge um, upstairs, I believe, at A. thing that you can do is um, is get a VAT refund. So if you buy things and you have some VAT tax, uh, you can get that refunded while you're here. I'm gonna change my euros out while I'm here. E gates are right here, downstairs. <laughs> I am looking for the A gates because that's where the lounge is. Well, I don't think I can find <laughs> the lounge. So there's coffee, paninis, a 
just had breakfast at the hotel though, so I don't really need anything. So this is where you do your VAT refund if you have some receipts. So there is a train that we have to take to the gates and we have to go to the back of the line. <laughs> that was a super crowded train, oh my god. Alright. <laughs> lounge right there. I'm not sure if that's my lounge. Okay, this is the Prima Vista Lounge here. Yeah. All right, so the Prima Vista Lounge right by um, my gate is a Priority Pass Lounge. to the terminal. Um, the second floor is where the gates are. E33, this way. Oops. Go to E33. <laughs> hmm. Looks like we have to get a bag check again. already started boarding group one like five minutes before they said they're gonna start boarding so group five is lining up too okay so you go through you should show your passport and it looks like they're checking bags as well and then you go down the escalators Because I had TSA pre, they didn't have me stop and get my bag checked, <laughs> which is nice. I'm in an exit row. It cost me $110 to be in the exit. I like to be in the bulkhead, so I'm excited. So if you have first class and business class, you go that way. This is economy. <laughs> All right, so this is business class cubbies, which I wish I had, but I don't. <laughs> Then we are putting in economy. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Thanks. at 26. I'm going to airline flight to 235 with coverage to New York City at the airport. Then we do have quite a full flight today. We have 17. Putting your large bag in the overhead bin. You can fall back down. Oops. Thank you. Thank Excuse me. All right, and then I have this wonderful area right in front of the bathrooms. <laughs> right here, I've got so much space. My bag and my, um, my backpack up because when you're in the front like this, you don't have anything in front of you. But I love to have this to put my feet on later. I have no visitors to me. <laughs> but um, these are boys. 
so it's hard. I won't be able to lie down no matter what. The American only gives you a blanket and a pillow if you're in coach, no little goodie bag. There is power and um, the screens pop up from below. There is power. So one of my favorite purchases for travel is this little um, converter. It has four USBs, two AC adapters, and then you just get different uh, adapter types to put on the top. So um, type L is what we use here in Italy, but on the plane, I don't think we need the L. On the American flight, I can use the E and F. So it's perfect. It's really good for my computer because the block it really is hard to plug in directly. So I'd love to have that in the hotels and in the airplanes. Right, we're all boarded, ready to go. Right, so our flight is taking off 10.30 a.m. We're gonna get in tonight because um, we lose time. But it is a beautiful day, we're leaving here. That's why I love this seat. <laughs> First class going, economy coming back. I even did basic economy because, uh, and then I bought my seat, my Exigo seat, which gives me a reserved uh, bin above for my carry on. So for me, that was great. Work. How beautiful New York looks today. Getting out on a large flight like this takes a little time, so don't have quick connections. 
So the premium economy doesn't do a whole lot for you. Gives you a little extra room. Gives you a meal. But this is the way to go is these business class little cubbies. Kind of a mess now. Thank you. Bye bye. Connection to Washington. Nope. Connecting to Austin. Yay. So Washington must have a tight connection if they're out here to get them. <laughs> Customs this way. Global entry here. Global entry. Yay. I didn't need to use my passport. It's facial only. <laughs> All right. Uh, that is done, and now I just have to exit. I never check a bag. If you check a bag, grab your bag. Uh, I need to change terminals to go to the domestic terminal. So I'm in eight right now, and I think I have to go to four, I believe. So I'm gonna follow the signs to connecting flights. So you've got um, connecting passengers, all right if you happen to be staying here and you got a limo they are out here waiting for you i have to find where delta goes take the air train um, which is that way i think though all departures go up for connecting flights this way <laughs> So I need to go to Terminal 4, so, oh, I guess I go this way for the air train. Alrighty, air train this way. So I am going to Terminal 4 and I'm on time. Much better train than the last one I was at. <laughs> Okay, so we go to departures, not arrivals. Follow the flight attendants, they know what they're doing. <laughs> All right, so I need to find where the security checkpoints are. <laughs> All right, so it's all the way in the back. I don't have to do any of this because I don't check a bag. You really shouldn't check a bag. <laughs> I am going straight to security. All right, security checkpoint. I am a TSA pre and a clear, so I'm gonna go right. Clear and TSA pre. Okay, actually clear and TSA pre. They have it over here. <laughs> okay, you know you're in New York. <laughs> Things are really different here. <laughs> uh, all gates are down. My lounge is over in, at gates A. I am at gates B, which is like a 2 to 14 minute walk, they say. So I'm just going to go to a lounge for a little bit. <laughs> There's a McDonald's here for all of my Rome uh, fellow passengers who were dying for burgers. Right, here's my lounge. So it's right at the beginning of the A's and I have to go back to B later. But this is the Priority Pass Lounge here one of them all right so this is the prime class lounge um, you can also use the air india lounge there's some food some drinks but they don't have bathrooms in here uh, i'm gonna go over to the bathroom so that lounge didn't have bathrooms inside and it didn't look all that great to me so i am checking out the air india lounge which is um, back a little further this way so i'm supposed to be able to use both Air Indian Virgin. I need to use an elevator, I guess. Lounges are number four. 
the Air India Lounge. It's also a Priority Pass Lounge, and it's about a 30-minute walk to the gate from here. It's a little more comfortable, it looks like, and there's some hot food. Hmm. There are restaurants. <laughs> Thank goodness. So they have egg sandwiches. Some interesting food here, and they have alcohol. have hot food. Mm. <coughs> Yum. <laughs> Looks like they have good hot food. Interesting. Coffee. Uh, heading back to the B gates. It is about a half hour walk from those um, lounges. But I was with a very famous actor in my lounge and I couldn't place his name, but he's uh, got a great accent. Interesting. <laughs> All right, B42, we're still on time. Okay, I see home in the near future. Three basic economy, so I'm, I'm the last one allowed to bring the roller thing on. I totally forgot that they're not going to feed you on a normal domestic flight, so I didn't bring food on, which I should have because there were some fabulous restaurants in the airport. So I bought, um, they have food for sale, I bought a chicken salad on a croissant. Yay! <laughs> I'm in Austin, finally. It's about 8.30 tonight. I don't know what day it is. It's about 8.30 Monday night, I think. I have no idea really what time it is or day, but I'm so glad I'm home. Yay. Oh, and don't forget to vote for me for Best of Austin. <laughs> Back in Austin, greeted with roses. <sighs> Love it here. Can't wait to be in my big comfy cozy bed with my sweet hubby. <laughs> but thank you, Raro. You guys are amazing. It was a fabulous 10 days in Umbria. <sighs> now where's my wine? Where's my steak? <laughs> Thank you for following along. Please like and subscribe and be sure to watch all of my videos on my YouTube channel. Thank you very much.